Raider Nation, we are live. Day three NFL free agency coverage here on the Raiders Report. Mitchell Renz from Chat Sports. We're going to go into everything that happens around the NFL today. We're going to keep you guys up to date with all the signings that the Raiders do end up getting today. And I'm telling you right now, it is going to be a crazy day. If you're ready for a crazy day, I want to see some LVs down below. Jimmy Garoppolo, going to get cut today. Hunter Renfro, going to get cut today. Brian Hoyer, Jerry Tillery. It is expected that the Raiders are going to free up somewhere close to about $21 million in salary cap space today, which is going to put them somewhere around $40 million to go out there and spend. So here's the thing. They're going to have plenty, and I mean plenty of money to spend today, and I anticipate today being a lot like Monday. Yesterday was a little bit slow here in the chat. Shout out to Ryan Soup, a.k.a. Ryan Campbell for being the MVP on yesterday's show. But I'm telling you this right now. I went to bed bright and early. I got up bright and early this morning, made a video around the Raiders moving on from Hunter Renfro. And it sounds like it's going to be an outright cut. It's not going to be a post-June 1st. It's kind of very similar to what the Raiders did with Jimmy Garoppolo. or just looking to wipe their hands clean and let's move on. That way there's no dead cap hit in next season. Uh, I also see Brian Dar, your super chats that you sent in before said, going to try to listen at work, miss the live shows, and then can you tell my son Dylan, happy birthday, he is five. Can we get some HBDs down below for happy Brian Dar's son Dylan? To, to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dylan. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Dylan, Brian Dar's son here. We already got over 700 people in the building. My man, Rich Wolf, always just straight flexing on us. Let's get day three started. Let's just win, baby. To me, this is going to be a monumental type of day, and it's because the Raiders do and a lot of NFL teams are going to be Aggressive. Yeah. I, I can't wait to see what happens with the Chargers because they have a lot of tough decisions to make. As it stands right now, the Chargers are $25.2 million over the salary cap. That is according to per over the cap. And they're going to have decisions to make on guys like Khalil Mack. Do y'all want Khalil Mack? Give me a yes or no. If you want to bring Mack back, let me know. We're also going to be talking about, you know, Joey Bosa could potentially hit the open market. A guy like Mike Williams could hit the open market. A guy like Keenan Allen could hit the open market. I anticipate an insane day around the NFL, and I anticipate an insane day here for the Las Vegas Raiders. So you know what, Jeremy? You were singing it yesterday. Here's my question. Return Do you want the Raiders the to re-sign Khalil Mack if he's cut? Maybe it's not re-sign. Maybe it's just sign, but bring him back. Either I, way. I mean, he was once signed. He was once signed. Yes, <laughs> you're not wrong. He was once on the Raiders, so I, I would say it would be a re-sign. Dude, I can't Resign wait. Resign him back to the team. I can't wait, man. Give me a Y for yes. Give me an N for no. I well, am I seeing tried to tell you a so. lot of yeses. I, I do want to say, but though, if you're going to go out and no. get Mac, it's going to cost a lot of money. And the Raiders have already goes. invested a lot, a lot of money on play. that defensive line. If you get a guy like, like Khalil Mack, you might not be able to go out and get a number one corner. Baby, you might not be able to go out and get some other positions. But I'll tell you this. That I had to come again. Good luck blocking Max Crosby. Christian Wilkins, you lied to me. Tyree Wilson, all those times Malcolm that I Coons, said I love you, and then Khalil you lied Mack. Lied to me. That would yes, be a I dominant, tried. dominant yes, defensive line, man. I see you Gary Fake, Gus Ackle. What up? Even though you knew I'd die for you, Timmy you Jones, me. Jose Romero, yes, D Rock Music says yes, no. Cried. Jimmy Sanchez is in. Return, Return of, of the Mac. Mac. Also, Return Venom Sosa of the Mac once again. <laughs> Venom Sosa. What's up? What up, Venom? Already 900 people here in the building. Really, really excited to see what is in store for all of y'all. I do have to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Price Picks. And oh, Price Picks is back for today, which I'm excited about. Oh, who's who's back of today? Who's back for today? Price shout Picks. out to our sponsor, Price Picks. And if anybody wants to get started with the number one daily fantasy sports app out there. All you got to do is go to pricepicks.com slash CLNS. And the reason why you got to use code CLNS, that tells them that we sent you here. So believe it or and not, it does help that's us That's how you lot. get the deal for the $100 deposit match. Correct. And now I know that football season's over, but 
This is like for me personally, outside of football season, maybe my favorite time of the year because college basketball to me now is very entertaining. I love to see all of the different, uh, all the different games that end up happening, teams playing to try to get into the tourney. It is a lot, and I mean, it's a lot of fun for me. So if you're like, you know what, I'm going to put some uh, money down on some college basketball. You could also go in with the NBA on top of that. But to me, I like to be able to test my skills on prize picks. And this season, it's the most excited, I don't know, most fun I've probably had in a very long time playing with football mainly. But now I like to learn a little bit more about the NBA. I mean, I told you guys on Monday I was watching the Mavericks and Luka, I had that one go down. But a lot of times people are like, all right, Chugs, Mitch, why should I even get started with price picks, like what's the reason that you should do it? You guys say that it's easy, it is, it's fun, it is. You do have a way to win some money, and I'm so glad you're showing this because this was the deal that I was going to tell people today on Price Picks. You're essentially getting a freebie, like James Harden, three point one four points. You know why? Yes, that's the date. No, you, it's Pi Day. Today's Pi Day. Oh, no, that, that would be tomorrow. Tomorrow's Pi Day. 3.14. I was going to say, 3.14. But, so, but that game is for tomorrow. Yes, 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 yes. So, so, but this is a deal that they're doing. So, essentially, you're getting a freebie. So, like, all you got to do then is just get two correct. So, we're going to go with Jamal Murray. Give me the less on 21.5 points. And then Jalen Suggs. Give me the more on him with 7.5 points. So, really, when I get a deal like this, a lot of the times, I also like to get one of the – there's Demon and Goblin picks – the demons are the purple, the goblins are the green, which means that they're a little bit easier to hit. So you don't win as much money. But oh. to me, all I all I can all I consider here is I just gotta get Jamal Murray so, and, I'm, and I'm making money. I, I, I I'm on TikTok a lot. Uh, yep, yes, you are. The Orlando Magic Jalen Suggs. He's been really good this year. The Magic, they've been a good story this year. I cannot get the magic song out of my head. Oh, really? <laughs> Orlando Magic. Orlando Magic. I'll be honest, I've never heard Orlando that song. Magic. Oh. Do you guys, do you guys have a favorite NBA team? Let me know down below. Bottom line is, you're gonna have a lot of fun. Once playing. you hear it, you can't get it out of your head. You can't get it out. Oh, yikes. PrizePicks.com/clns. Make sure that you use code CLNS for a first time deposit match up to hundred dollars. And Venom says it's a terrible song. Jesse's a Laker fan. I got Ninja Gaming's a Warrior fan. Celtics in here from Robert Stewart. Light the beam from JR65. A lot of, well, Nuggets fan from Matthew I. I don't think he likes oh. my Jamal Murray prediction then. All right, let's get some super chats up here on screen. Remember, the way that you do it is hashtag Raiders or you can super chat. And um, I do want to get into a cut in about five minutes or will, so. Will you send Cullen the thumbnail? Yes. That's uh, literally what I was just about to do. Oh. Uh, we're going to get a cut around today, some updated Raiders free agent targets. And the segment that I want to do is with the Raiders moving on from Hunter Renfro, Jimmy Garoppolo, and then freeing up about, again, you're freeing up about $21.6 million. The Raiders are going to have around $40 million to spend in uh, free agency. I'm going to look at some updated free agent targets, but I'm also going to talk about some players that I've been getting asked about just continuously, like, should the Raiders sign Devin White? Should the Raiders look out at Tyrone Smith? A lot of different names out there. I'll give you some yeses, some nos. That's going to be coming up here. John Rodriguez, I'm here too, bitches. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm glad that people decided to pull up with us bright and early. Like When I woke up this morning, literally what happened was I woke up, I checked my phone, Saul Renfro was cut, made a video really quick. Chuck wasn't all that happy. If you guys go watch the video that I did at 6 a.m. this morning, Chuck's literally sitting on my lap the entire video. He was like, this is not how the mornings usually go. Like, why are we not out for a walk right now? There's no food in my bowl. This is not how it's supposed to be. John Rodriguez, thank you, though, man, for pulling up here and basically being a part of this whole thing for the entire week. Peyton, morning, guys. Excited to see who the Raiders get today. How about this? Peyton's excited. I'm excited. I think a lot of y'all are excited. That's why we already have over 1,000 people here in the chat. And... Give me a name. Give me one name today that you want to have signed by the Raiders. And the reason why I'm doing this is I'm trying to wish it into existence a little bit. I feel mm -hmm. like on Monday, when I asked this question, I said Christian Wilkins. Christian Wilkins was the number one player I wanted the Raiders to sign, and it happened. So let's try to do it again here. Who is one player that the Raiders should sign today in NFL free agency? Is it going to be a corner? Is Return it going to be a linebacker, an edge? Back. I know a lot of people are going to put Return Khalil Mack in that. However, until he is a free agent, we're not. I, I want to avoid that. Not avoid, but 
if he does become a free agent, I know that that's what we're going to talk about. Until Rooster, that actually Rooster, happens, Mac. the Khalil Mack situation is not really one to be had right now. I see Venom says Fuller, Mack from Jaywick, Fuller or Jackson, Devin White, Kendall Fuller from Jacob, uh, Justin Tuck from Matthew Y. I see Queen Sarah is going to go with Devin White. What's up, Kendall Fuller, Calvin Ridley from D Raider, baby mate. Dirty Mike in the boys says, Raiders! Raiders. I, I've been trying to think about it. what. What was the the thing from that movie that we were talking about with Dirty Mike and the Boys? What do they call it? A soup a, kitchen. Just a just a soup kitchen. It's called a soup kitchen. It's when a bunch of homeless people make a f shack in your car. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, thanks for the f shack, Dirty Mike and the Boys. <laughs> what up, Jose? Mitch and Chugs, can I get a happy thirteenth birthday to my son Logan? Oh. He's been a loyal watcher of the Raiders report. Hey. Four years. Happy 13th birthday, Logan. It's his bro mitzvah. Bro mitzvah. Yeah, 13. You're, you're officially a man in Raider Nation. I'll also say, Jose, it sounds like or looks like you got to get your kids some new Raiders jerseys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, th those are Aiden O'Connell's. Sure they are. Sure they are. I mean, maybe they are. But either way, uh, we got to get them a new Jacobs jersey, a new running back jersey at least, and then uh, some new ones out there. But happy birthday to Logan 13 years old. Do you remember your 13th birthday? It was my bar mitzvah. All right. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I'll be real. I don't really remember my 13th. I remember I, being I mean, excited about being a teenager. When, when you turn 13 in Raider Nation, that's your bro mitzvah. You're officially a man in the nation's eyes. Yeah? Yeah. Spin the dreidel. Yeah, it's, it, you go in front of all of Raider Nation and you scream Raiders at the top of your lungs and then you're initiated. That's it. You're, you're a man in Raider Nation. Yes. Cameron. <sighs> Mitch. What who are the best QBs coming out next year, and should we wait until then to get one? Well, lucky for you, Cameron, I actually have a ton. Oh, wait, no, that's the same for next year. Next year. Um, Shador I mean, Sanders. To me, the quarterback that's going to be the most intriguing to me is Cameron Ward. He was with Washington State. He transferred to the U. Here's the thing, though. Every single year, it's going to change up with quarterbacks. Certain guys are going to step up like Qu Quinn Ewers. Well, no, I'm not a big I, I don't think I'll ever be a big Quinn Ewers guy. Uh, however, though, like there's going to be quarterbacks that kind of pop up out of you know out of nowhere. Like Jaden Daniels is one of those QBs that a lot of people didn't really anticipate him to be that guy. Comes out of nowhere, wins the Heisman. Carson Look at a guy Beck. like 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 Joe Burrow, another name to keep in mind there. Uh, who's the quarterback that was at Duke and then transferred to I want to say Notre Dame? Riley, Duke Riley, Riley Leonard, Riley Leonard. Yeah, Duke Riley. Uh, <laughs> Riley Leonard. He's actually another quarterback prospect that I'm pretty intrigued to watch. But, like, at the end of the day, man, like, you can't just continue to sit around and say, oh, well, maybe we'll get a quarterback next year. Because the only way you're going to probably get a quarterback next year is if you suck this year. And I'm sorry, you don't, you don't sign Christian Wilkins to the deal that you did. You don't sign a backup quarterback like Gardner Minshew to the deal that you did if you are literally trying to tank and suck this season. And Antonio Pierce and Tom Telesco know that they don't have a long leash. Like, I'm saying right now, they got two years. If they can't get it done in two years, they're both going to be gone. Let's go to my man Ike. Predictions Ike. for the Raiders today. How about this? I'll say that the Raiders sign one cornerback, and it's going to be somebody that I'm going to bring up here on today's show. I'll also throw out there that I see the live poll right now, and I, I asked the question, how many players do the Raiders sign today? I'm going to go with two players at least sign. In terms of the positions that they're going to be playing... Give me seven. Seven signings today? Oh, my God. Uh, well, we'll be here, I guess, until tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go live for 24 hours again. Though, I'm going to say you're going to get a corner today, and I'm going to say you're going to sign an offensive guard, or at least yeah. an offensive lineman. Those o are going to be the two predictions. O I'll go on with. that, we are actually all caught up with Super Chats. And yep. I actually want to get into this cut before anybody else does sign today in free agency. Cause Correct. Then, uh, At any moment today, somebody could sign. That, that, that might mess up our cut. So, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get into a show around some players that are still out there, some people that I want the Raiders to target with the money that they're saving from Garoppolo and uh, Hunter Renfro. And then, as far as I'm concerned, I'm ready to get some shenanigans going today. We got some good deals for all of y'all. I'm ready to shenan again. Yeah, uh, yet again. Shenanigan, and, and again, and again, and, and again. then, and then, and then. If you guys haven't already, make sure you click that like button. I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen once we hit 500 likes, because today we're doing every 500 likes, because I'm anticipating a wild, wild day today. It's going to make a few Let's people go. very, very happy. So if we could get the 500 likes by the time 
If we can get to 500 likes by the time we get done with this next cut, I think y'all are going to be like, all right. all right, these guys are ready to get this party going. Once again, one more time, everybody spam LV if you want the Raiders to make a big move today. Who wants the Raiders to make a big move in free agency? Day three, day two, a little quiet. Day one came out with a splash. Cannonball, then I think yesterday you're swimming back to the to the, to you the know, dock. The, to the dock. You're swimming back to go off the diving board. Now yeah. you're back on the diving board. Time for another splash. Oh, yeah. High, we're going high dive today. Yeah. High dive, double maybe, back Maybe flip. afterwards a little pool basketball. Who knows? A little jackknife. I mean, at this point, maybe today's the day we do the jello wrestling. Who knows? Coming up, some free agent targets here on the Raiders Report. Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Rentz, your host of the Raiders Report. And before we get into some updated Raiders free agent targets, today's show is presented by Manscaped. If anybody out there is looking for maybe a new beard hedger, maybe you're looking for something that's going to clean up your shamrocks down there, I recommend getting started with Manscaped, the leaders in men's grooming. Go to manscaped.com, use code Raiders for 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. So coming up here on today's show, there was one name that was floating around Raiders, I'll call it social media, a lot yesterday. His name was Devin White. I'm going to give you my answer of whether or not the Raiders should go out and sign White. Today, I'll also break down some updated Raiders free agent players that they should and should not target because you're going to be freeing up a lot of money. Moving on from Jimmy Garoppolo, moving on from Hunter Renfro, the Raiders are going to be somewhere around $40 million in cap space because they're going to get an extra $21.6 million on the books today after they move on from those players there. Now, the Raiders had a slow day yesterday, but they did pick it up at least a little bit, which... I think they're going to pick it up today. First day of free agency was crazy. You ended up bringing back Amir Abdullah, Andre James. That was over the weekend. Christian Wilkins signed a massive, and I'm talking a massive type of deal. Then the Raiders signed Gardner Minshew, if you remember that, to a two-year, $25 million deal. And then the Raiders also re-signed Kanai Malga, the linebacker, yesterday, which didn't really make too many headlines, but it was still a deal. We don't have the contract details out on that yet. If I had to guess, though, it's going to be somewhere probably similar to Amir Abdullah. It's also important to mention, like, when you bring back a guy like Kanai Malga, it's not a lock that he's going to make the 53-man roster. They're just trying to fill up some spots as it stands right now. If you're trying to rock and join the party, we're going to be live all day today. I mean, today I'm telling y'all right now is going to be an insane day amongst Raider Nation. So hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, and when the Raiders sign a player today, we're already live. They're going to be moving on from Garoppolo and Hunter Renfro. I'm telling you, today is going to be absolutely insane. Subscribe, turn on those notifications. All right, let's talk about Devin White. Because yesterday, White was a very intriguing player overall in terms of should the Raiders sign him, should the Raiders not go out and target him. I saw a few people that have a few of their own radio shows, a few of their own talk shows say, hey, yes, the Raiders should go out and sign White. And I know that the Raiders right now have a need at the linebacker position. However, though, is this a smart move for the Silver and Black to consider because it is a linebacker? I don't know how much money he's going to end up making on the open market, but when you look at 83 tackles, two and a half sacks, five tackles for a loss, you know, when you look at his numbers straight up, everybody, I think, says, yes, the Raiders should sign Devin White. But my job here on this show is to give you my God-honest opinion. So I do have a take on whether or not the Raiders should sign White. If you want to hear my opinion, you are going to have to wait until after this YouTube ad break. But this is what the Raiders report's about. It is about a group of people coming together, having an adult conversation, and giving your opinion. If you say yes, cool. Say yes, tell me how much you're going to sign for them and why you're signing them. If you're going to say no... Well, then tell me why you're not going to do that. This is the pinned comment on today's show. Scroll on down and let me know. Should the Raiders sign Devin White? My answer is if Devin White is looking for anything more than $5 million per year, my answer is a no to that. When I see a player like Willie Gay getting a one-year $5 million contract with the New Orleans Saints, linebacker in today's day and age is the running back position. Teams do not pay a lot of money for a linebacker, and to me... When I look for an LB, especially in a Patrick Graham defense, I want a guy that can cover, okay? I want a guy that can go sideline to the sideline and do a lot of different things. The problem with this, though, when you look at just the numbers, okay? When you look at just the numbers on Devin White, this guy fills up a stat sheet. He's got 83 tackles this past season in 13 games. In 2022, he had 124, 128 tackles, 140 tackles. And I do think a lot of times people just look at the numbers and they think, oh my gosh, Devin White is a insane talent. Here's the thing, though. 
I'll be real with y'all. I think Devin White is one of the most, if not the most overrated linebacker in the entire National Football League. The reason why he gets a lot of tackles is how good that front four was for Tampa Bay, and he'd get a lot of opportunities to bring guys down. Also, on top of that, people target him a lot. People target him a lot because he is not good in coverage whatsoever, and I do think the PFF numbers support that. Like, you can have a lot of tackles. That doesn't make you a great linebacker. It means, if anything, that your teammates around you are doing the right things, and you're just kind of the, the guy there to clean it all up. But in the, in the receiving game, man, like, People go after him. I mean, look at these numbers from PFF. In 2023, 46 overall. 2022, 45.5. 2021, 36.2. 2020, 43.4. He has been continuously one of the lowest graded cover linebackers in the NFL. Now, I'm not sitting up here saying that it's a big old fat no. What I am saying, though, is I'm not going to go out there and break the bank and people that continuously say that, oh, Devin White is this amazing linebacker. I don't really think they've watched the film. I think they just look at the box score, and that's what they're doing. When you look at his coverage stats here from 2023, he gave up a 71.1% completion percentage, which I want to say he was targeted 49 times, gave up close to like 39 grabs in only that 14 games played. Gave up a touch. He did have a touchdown, I want to say. He had six PBUs. He did have two INTs. But realistically, out of all the years that he's had, from a coverage linebacker standpoint, I will give Devin White a little bit of credit here. He was a lot better this past season than what he's been in years past. But again, my big overall arching point is this. Why am I going to spend potentially $10 million on a linebacker when I would rather you allocate that money to go out and getting a top corner? I'd rather help. If we're going to sign a player like Devin White, I'd rather you save the money and go out and get a guy and allocate that money to figure out a way to bring Khalil Mack. Because to me, Devin White is not a need. Khalil Mack is not a need either, but if I got to pick between the two players, I'm going to go get my man Khalil Mack. Coming up next year, NFL free agent targets to avoid and to target for Tom Telesco and for Antonio Pierce, but today's show is presented by Manscaped, and I don't know about y'all, I'm excited for Sunday, St. Patrick's Day, trying to get the luck of the Irish here. We've had a few people here at Chat Sports talking about, hey, you guys want to go out this weekend? I know this. If I end up going out this weekend, I'm going to make sure that my shamrock is shaved. And if you're like me, go to manscaped.com, use code Raiders. That way you're going to get 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. This year, don't just chase rainbows. Make your own pot of gold and groom your leprechaun with the leaders and below the kilt care. Say goodbye to your clover forest with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and let your confidence shine bright. Embrace the luck of the Irish and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, head over to manscaped.com. Use code Raiders for 20% off and free shipping. Again, that's get 20% off and free shipping with code Raiders at manscaped.com. 20% off free shipping with code Raiders at manscaped.com. This St. Patrick's Day, make sure your little hairy leprechaun or girthy leprechaun is luckier than ever with Manscaped. So to me, I like a lot of the products out there. I think the Lawnmower 5.0 is one of the better products that they have. I use the beard trimmer as well. It, it does a really solid job there. And then probably my favorite thing about the Lawnmower 5.0 is the fact that I can use it in the shower. Because if there's one thing that Alex just can't stand, it's one, when I leave the toilet seat up, and two, if I decide to shave my little leprechaun and I'm hanging over the, the toilet and I get all the hairs on the seat, that is uh, not, a, not a very happy camper. I don't care how much I shave. If I do that, I know for a fact I'm not getting lucky. So the fact that I can use this in the shower, it's helping me out in more ways than one. Manscaped.com, code Raiders, 20% off and free shipping. So the Raiders are going to have some money to spend today. They're going to be cutting Jimmy Garoppolo. They have to make that move. They're not going to do it post-June 1st. They're going to cut him right away. So because of that, they're going to save money. Yes, you're going to eat $17 million in dead cap hit, but if the Raiders would have done a post-June 1st cut, yes, they would have saved more money, but then he would have been on the books next year for $12.8 million. This is more of a, I'm going to wipe my hands clean. The more I can get rid of Josh McDaniels and everything about McDaniels, I'm going to try to move on from that. Another move that broke this morning, which we knew it was going to happen, Ian Rappaport essentially just confirmed it. Hunter Renfro, he is going to be cut. I originally thought that they were going to do a post-June 1st cut, but same exact situation here. The Raiders don't want to have any dead money on the books next season. I think that's when you're going to see a lot more like contract restructures with some of the big name guys, maybe like a Colton Miller, maybe like a Max Crosby, maybe also allocating some of that money to, to some extensions. We're talking Malcolm Koontz, Roberts Blaine, Nate Hobbs, Trevon Merrig, Marcus Epps. But you're moving on from these guys right now, which means you have some extra money. So as it stands right now, 
The Raiders are sitting pretty at salary cap, but after all of these moves undergo today, you're going to be somewhere around $40 million, which means plenty of money to spend. So what I want to do here is talk about some of the Raiders' needs out there, and there are certain positions that I'm going to target. There's also going to be certain positions that flat out you're not going to see, and one of the positions on here that you're not going to see is running back, because as far as I'm concerned, if I'm in the booth right now with Telesco and Antonio Pierce, I'm going to go get my other running back in the NFL draft. I'm not going to spend the extra money in free agency. So let's first talk about some of the offensive tackles here, and remember, we're going to be bringing up players whether the Raiders should or should not sign them, and it's based off of what I've been hearing, what I've been seeing, and I wanted to be able to give my two cents on some of these names. First name coming up here is Tyron Smith. He is the top offensive tackle still available in free agency. And I've seen and I've had a bunch of people ask me, should the Raiders sign Tyron Smith? I'm going to say this. No, the Raiders should not. And the reason why I'm going to say that they shouldn't is because I anticipate that the Raiders are looking for a right tackle. Tyron Smith, when he's played left tackle, has been phenomenal. The one year, which was back in 2021, where the Cowboys put him at right tackle, he drastically, drastically struggled. And for what you're going to have to pay him, there's other people that you could potentially go out there and look at. So Tyron Smith, I'm actually good on him. If you do want to go sign a tackle that's got some upside, I will say Makai Becton. I loved him coming out of Louisville. You put him at there, Munford, in a battle, motivate Makai. Because if you can get a motivated Makai Becton, that's a good version. What you don't want to do is sign Mekhi Becton and say, hey, it's your job. Because that's what the Jets did. He got fat. He got lazy. He kind of went Trent Brown on him and was not good. If you get a motivated Mekhi Becton, look out. This guy's got tools to be a legit tackle. Another guy that I'll at least bring up here to potentially look at in signing and free agency is Cornelius Lucas. And Lucas was a name that I brought up probably about a year and a half ago. And I just said, cheap. Like, if you're looking for more depth, I would look at him as like a, a Brandon Parker replacement. He can play right tackle. He can play left tackle. He's done both of that. He's never really had over 600 snaps in a season, but due to that versatility and the fact that it would only cost you about $2.5 million, $3 million on a per-year basis, and he's a mountain of a human being, I think it would be an interesting tackle to look at. Let's go to the edge rusher position now, and edge is still not a big-time major need. I'll still say I'm, I'm kind of holding out for Khalil Mac, if they do end up releasing him, if they end up releasing him, I promise you this, I'm making a video on it. Chase Young is the top name out there. Young does have that versatility to play inside and outside, but for how much money it's going to cost, I'll pass on him. If you do want to try to find a John Jenkins replacement, if you're not going to just bring back John Jenkins, who had an incredible year, I'll say Calais Campbell. Yes, he is 37, 38 years old. Bro, still playing at a very, very high level. And if you can find another big body man that you can throw into the interior, him next to Christian Wilkins would be a problem for a lot of offensive coordinators. Another edge that I'll throw out there is Kyle Van Noy. And when I say Kyle Van Noy, he's going to offer you a lot of versatility. Like I know we were talking about Devin White earlier. I'd rather you sign Kyle Van Noy then Devin White, even if you offer them the exact same contract. However, you're going to get Van Noy for half the price. He can get after the quarterback. He can drop back into coverage to me with his connections with Telesco, with his connections with uh, Rob Leonard, Patrick Graham. I just think it makes a lot more sense for this defense. Let's go to corner, and this is where my concentration is at today. If you're Las Vegas and you really want to just say, you know what? Let's try to get that cherry on top of this free agency. We got ourselves a Christian Wilkins. Let's now go address a cornerback spot, which Antonio Pierce called a priority. And the number one name I'm looking at is Kendall Fuller. Kendall Fuller is the top guy on the market right now. He has a lot of that versatility that you're looking for. If you go out and sign Fuller, to me, the Raiders still could potentially target a corner then in the draft, maybe on day three or something like that. Fuller is going to be the most expensive, probably around $14 million. A sneaky name to consider is Xavier Howard. Howard has some ties with the Raiders safety coach, Gerald Alexander, from their times working together. Also remember, Patrick Graham was at one point the defensive coordinator for the Miami Dolphins, and... I mean, he's got a lot of exposure there. Yes, the injuries, but can still play at a high level. Another name that I'll throw out there, Adoree Jackson. Jackson's best season in the NFL was back in 2021 when PG was the defensive coordinator for the New York Giants. He's battled some injuries the past two seasons, but he has the upside. He does offer you versatility, and I think best bang for your buck out of the names that I just mentioned probably is Adoree Jackson. Let's now go to offensive guard coming up here on the show, and... 
When I think about some of these positions that the Raiders could potentially look at, offensive guard is one. And when I say this particularly, you got to find that right guard. If you want to spend big at right guard, it's Kevin Zeitler. Kevin Zeitler, at 34 years old, is still getting up there, but still able to be a high-level pass-blocking right guard. And that's kind of what I want the Raiders to have. Don't get me wrong. I know they're going to want to run the football. They're going to want to have a concentration on that. If we do have a plan, though, of bringing in a quarterback, he needs to be able to be protected. Kevin Zeitler is the guy I'd spend big on. If you want to go a little bit of the cheaper route, I would just say bring back Greg Van Roten. Van Roten could be that sixth man on your offensive line. He could play right guard. He could play left guard. Just be that backup. And this would be the move that I would make. Think of Greg Van Roten as almost like a, uh, I don't want to say Gardner Minshew type of move because I don't anticipate Gardner Minshew is going to be the starter. It was more of just a security blanket. And then for the draft, Think of Greg Van Roten as that security blanket as well. You sign him now to a cheap deal. He was a good for the Raiders last season. Seventh best guard, according to PFF, out of 79 guards. You bring him in on a cheap deal, and if you don't sign anybody better, worst case scenario, you just roll with Greg Van Roten again at right guard. So what I want to know right now is name a player that the Raiders should sign in NFL free agency. We still got some more positions to get into today. I imagine I'm going to get some Khalil Max in this, and as the time that I'm making this video, he has not been released yet. It still hasn't been said that he will or not. To me, I'm looking at Kendall Fuller, and I'm looking at the Raiders to still upgrade their offensive line. I want to continue to build this defense, though. I want the Raiders to have the best defense in the National Football League, and to me, that's going out and getting an Adore Jackson, an Xavier Howard, or a Kendall Fuller. Let's now look at the linebacker position. I started this show today with Devin White. A lot, a lot of conversations around this position, and I'm not really 100% sure where the team decides to go. I know that they like a lot of the linebackers in this year's draft, considering how many they met with at the NFL Combine. I'll throw out this name, Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner is still playing at an extremely high level. He can do everything that a linebacker does. I know he's up there in age, but you know what? If we ended up getting Bobby Wagner, I'd take Bobby Wagner over Devin White every single day and twice again on Sunday. Another name to at least keep in mind, Jerome Baker. He has a visit with the Tennessee Titans, I want to say tomorrow. But Baker has always been a good coverage linebacker. And with his ties in previous years with Patrick Graham. And honestly, if I'm Christian Wilkins, I go, hey, Jerome. Let's go build something pretty damn special here in Las Vegas. But because of his coverage ability is why I mentioned him on this video. Let's now look at the tight end position. And the tight end position is an intriguing one. Austin Hooper, he ended up signing yesterday. And this is one that I'm not going to get sexy with. To me, the number one tight end that the Raiders should sign is Mercedes Lewis. You sign him on a very, very cheap type of deal. He has followed Luke Getze everywhere he has gone. He's a blocker. You make him the blocking tight end, which can be your number three tight end, and let Mayer, and then you still go out and draft a tight end. Another name to throw out there is Adam Trotman. Trotman, who has some experience in the AFC West, just a blocker. The only tight end that I want the Raiders to sign is to be a blocker. You let Michael Mayer be the athlete that he is. If you're going to target a tight end this year, it's going to be Michael Mayer. You need to find another blocking tight end, which I do think is what this defense or what this offense still needs. And then you go draft a tight end on day three. Let's look at the safety position here. This is one of the positions that I am very confident in for the Raiders because Marcus Epps, Travon Merrick, one of the best safety duos in the National Football League as far as I'm concerned. I would like for them to figure out a way to be able to bring back Isaiah Polomeo. However, that has not happened. If the Raiders do want to sign a safety. I want somebody that's got some versatility. I want somebody that can play in the slot, that can drop back, that's not afraid to stand up near the line and bring some of that swagger. Jordan Whitehead is one of those players. He also has some experience with the Raiders cornerback coach, Ricky Manning. He also has some experience with uh, Gerald Alexander on top of that as well. Another name to throw out there is Deshaun Elliott at safety. Offers you this versatility as well. Not going to be a big time groundbreaking move by any stretch of the imagination, but because of a lot of the ties that he has and the safety market is always a market where you don't have to spend too much money. If you're looking for just an extra backup player, if you're not sold on Chris Smith, since this organization did not draft him, those are two safeties that I would target. And then let's look at the wide receiver room here. I know a lot of people are going to be wanting to go out and sign the big name wide receivers. Here's the thing. I don't think signing Calvin Ridley is going to happen. It sounds like he wants to stay in Jacksonville. And yes, he brings a lot of excitement to an offense. But also, 
I don't know if I want to bring in Calvin Ridley to Las Vegas. So another name that I've been asked about a bunch is Marquise Hollywood Brown. Yes, the Raiders want to be able to add some more speed, especially when you're moving on from Renfro. I don't really look at this as being the Renfro replacement. I don't really look at the Raiders looking to find a Renfro replacement. They love what they have in Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers. They want to add some more speed. Obviously, they have Trey Tucker. If you want to add speed and you want to do it cheap, Quez Watkins is the name that I would go out and try to get. Watkins, this past season... For the Philadelphia Eagles was definitely a, a name that I threw out a bunch just because he does have legit 4-3 speed. If you just need a vertical burner down the field that's going to give some teams some headaches, especially in the pre-snap motion, definitely a name to keep in mind. And then yesterday I mentioned Matt Collins. Matt Collins signed with the Buffalo Bills, so just in case anybody was wondering about him. If you want to give me a follow on social media, it's at MitchellRens365, literally everywhere. Um, you can hit me up there. I, I got a really, really cool video today from a viewer that was watching our show all day yesterday at work. And I said this yesterday because I meant it. I love when people send me messages like, hey man, watching the show. I got one today from Mark Anthony Soltero. He was like, hey, been listening to you and Chugs for the past two days at work. Believe it or not, those are the type of messages that can get you through long, long work days. I love what I do. But uh, you guys already know, yeah, we don't take any days off here. So again, today's going to be an insane day for the Raiders. There's going to be a lot of news, a lot of stuff around the NFL, around the Las Vegas Raiders, a lot of different stuff coming up. I do want to give a shout out to yesterday's MVP, Ryan Campbell. I'm rocking his jersey today. And if you guys want to party, if you're at work, whatever you're doing, all I ask is this. Even if you're like, Mitch, I'm not doing a lot of the shenanigans with you. It's all good. At least pull up, listen to us. And I want you to stay up to date because today is going to be a crazy, crazy day in the National Football League. All right, what up, Guillermo? Is Jimmy G lifetime strip club revoked once he's cut? Probably not. I mean, I, I would say no. If it's, one, I'm, it's one of those when you're in, you're in. It's also like Jimmy G's not a bad-looking guy, let's be real, and he's got millions of dollars. So I would imagine if – this is just me speaking – I this might surprise you – one, I've never worked at the Bunny Ranch. Two, I've never, I can't say I've never sold my body. I've, I've done weird, I've eaten a chip before. I guess that's selling my body. Um, you sold your soul. Yeah. I, I've sold my butthole. That's, that's what I sold. Um, and I, maybe some of them do that the exact same I, thing. I, I don't know if you want to yeah, no, say that sentence. <laughs> Bottom line is he's going to be just fine. What up, Raider man? I know it's probably impossible, but Fuller, Dylan, and White, and I'm good until the draft just win, baby. See, I mean, I'll tell you I, this. I, I like A.J. Dillon, but I think he is the same type of running back that you want Zamir White to be. So it's like if you get A.J. Dillon, where does that leave Zamir White? Yeah. I, uh, to, be, to be real with you, I just want the Raiders to go out and find a running back in the draft. That, that's kind of where I would focus. A.J. Dillon, I said it yesterday, was one of the worst running backs in the NFL last season in goal-to-go situations inside the 10-yard line. I actually believe he was the most inefficient running back in the league last season. And I didn't know that. Yeah, he was really, really bad inside why, the 10. That's why you watch the Raiders report. That's why you do. You find uh, out these. I think you mean Devin White. I don't want the Raiders to sign Devin White. I, I, I kind of just got into it. To me, he's one of the most overrated linebackers in the NFL. Obviously, it comes down to pay. Now, if they get him at a 4 or $5 million contract, cool. Oh. If you spend more than that, I, I don't think it's going to be the Before best Before we go fit. to the next question. Fuller, yes. What? We are seven likes away from 500. And oh, we promised boy. you once we got to 500, we would show you what we're going to do every 500 likes. Yeah, this, is, uh, this, is, this one I might regret at 1040 in the morning, but, you know, it, it is what it is, right? Sometimes you're going to regret it. Who's going to be that 500th like? Oh, boy, I don't know. Who's going to be like 500? I don't know who that's going to be. I am very nervous about it, though. Who do you think it's going to be? Who do you, who's going to be like 500? If you've hit that like button, spam me down below. We got 2,200 people here in the building. Adrian. Adrian says he tickled the like button. Oh, wow. Uh, Santiago, Jesse, Captain, David, Angel, Chris, Ron, Curly. Ron Raspberry said he blew a little little bit of air into the like button's ear. Just wow. A little... <laughs> Zalesbo, Tommy, what up, Oscar? What up, Sean? Alan, I'm punchy. I see a lot, D a lot of people. Dylan said he dest I destroyed. destroyed the like button. <laughs> oh, man, that poor like button. Oh, wow. I absolutely mutilated that like that button. That poor like button. All right, that what about... like button 
will never be the same again. That like button is sitting in the corner right now. Cold sweats. Dude. Dark lights. All right, I, I like I like these uh, watching from work today. The like button didn't press itself. There you go, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like these. These are good. I've, I've been mowed the like button. Adrian, I plowed the like button. Captain Hook, that like button is pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, lit that thing on fire from Daniel. Brian says, I hit the like button without my hands. I hope it was your nose. <laughs> That's all I know. Big Easter says, I took that like button to pound town. Wow. Um, I took the like button out and in not calling her back. From and the I'm most. not calling her back. <laughs> oh my Lord. The like button bit its lips back at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this might, be a new says, bit. this might be a new bit. We, I love it. We just ran train on the like button. When the like button meets my helmet. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. My, my mushroom <laughs> on that like button. <laughs> Holy shit. I, I spiced the like button. Oh, my Lord. Um, what do we got here? The, the like button robbed me and took all my shit. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, how about this? Um... The like button went for a mustache ride. Yikes. All right, I think this. Here's the thing. We uh, helicoptered all over that like button. My goodness. We the, did get to 500 likes. The like button wants child support. Wow. Um, wow. How about this? This is what our deals are today. Every 500 likes, we're going to play a little bit of Tuna Clock. So if you want to get this party started, every single $10 super chat that comes in right now is going to be Tuna Clock. Here's the thing, though. And a wheel spin. It's also a wheel spin. Every 20 that we get, we got some bean boozled here, some spicy and some gross ones. I want to try to be in better shape today. So every 50 that we get, I will drop down and give you 50 push-ups. Every hundo, every hundo, we will do a beer bong and a bang on today's show. I'm ready to get a little bit wet and wild today. I'm I, ready to get wild and wet. I'm ready to get a little bit wet and wild here on today's show. I also want to give a shout-out again to Ryan Campbell. He was the MVP of yesterday's show. And you already know the rules. If Ryan sends one in, I got to do a boot, which that is the number one way to get wet and wild. Drew said, I grabbed the like button by the thumb. By the thumb. The whole thumb. Wow, Rich Wolf. The like button sending me to jail. I, I think this is going to be one of the new bits that we do when I ask you all to hit that like button. I want the most creative ways of you saying this. But you know what? One guy's ready to bang. His name is Ryan Campbell. Bang! You're going to do 50 push-ups for every $50 we get? Not every 50 if you, somebody sends in a 50. I'm saying like every time somebody sends in a 50, that's 50. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do 50. I'm going to work out today. It's not going to be easy. I know that. Dude, if, if five people send it in, that means you're going to do 250 push-ups today. This, this guy can do math. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm not saying I'm doing them all right away. I'm going to space them out a little bit. I'm getting – this might be hard for you guys to believe, but when you drink all day, every day, you get a little bit fluffy. So I, uh, I didn't get the best workout in this morning because of the Hunter Renfro news. So I said, you know what, I'm going to at least try to be a little bit healthier today. I also knew this. I also knew Ryan was going to do this. I had this boot poured up first thing I did this morning. So, Ryan, shout out to you. If somebody, somebody out there wants a shout out, what I want to know is how, how many times are you willing to spam RC? Because yesterday, Ryan was the MVP. And you know what, Jeremy? Whoever spams RC the most while I'm doing this boot, we are going to give them a free entry and for a chance to win our Raiders signed helmet. Okay. Whoever spams RC the most, you're going to get a free entry in getting a chance to win our Raiders signed helmet. JG says the like button attended the soup kitchen. <laughs> it's, kind of a, it's kind of perfect. Dirty Mike and the boys, the Ryan soup, I'm in. Somebody just said the like button's like a door handle. Everyone's had their turn. All right, keep them coming. Keep them coming. I see Celtic Raiders, Short Dog, Ron Raspberry, Dylan, Omar, Alex, Ty, Manuel, Menta, Kia. I see Celtic. I see Raider Blair. I see Richard. 
I see Javier, I see Andre, I see Richard, I see Java Joe, I see K-Rock, I see you, Zalesbo, I see you, Lord Only Dan, Steven, Gilbert, Sienna, Anthony, Juan, DeBerg, Isaac, Andre, Gabe, Raider Rog, Nicholas, Big Easter, Juan, Raider Blair, Mark Davis, I, oh, Mark Davis is in the chat, what's up, man, make some more moves today, please. Uh, Ross Ports, I see Joel, I see Levon, I see Abby, I see Raider, I see Jovitsu, I see Big Easter, I see all of you, I see Vivid, P-Ring, I see Jermall, Uncle Drew, all in the chat, and somebody who's been spamming RC a ton. Who did it? Who got it? Who got it? Somebody who I've seen consistently, Okay. Celtic Raider. Celtic Raider. I saw his name ton up, come up a ton. Celtic Raider. You in Celtic Raider? It's probably a big week for him, no? Oh yeah. St. Patty's Day right around the corner. Celtic Raider, feeling good, feeling real good. All right, y'all. Hashtag Raiders or Super Chat. Get those the, questions, comments the, on the show. Also, now I want to know this from you folks at home: confidence level in AP and Telesco going into day three. Ooh. I mean, you were hot. You were like a nine or ten after Wilkins. After Minshew, maybe like a... Seven. Seven. Where are you at today? Today I'm a 10. I'm excited for today. <laughs> I'm excited for today. I, I really believe that the Raiders, because they are not designating Garoppolo and Hunter Renfro as post-June 1st, like they could have saved more money, but they said, you know what? We're going to take less money because we want to spend it now. Like, I mean, they want to spend the money right now. So it's to me, free agency, and you only I need do that. money now. Call a Antonio Pierce, eight seven seven Raider now. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the reason why that you do that is because you're going to be aggressive. Like you want to be able to use that money right now. Go out, get your guys in free agency. Like that's why I'm so confident about the Raiders doing what they're about to do today. Because you don't move on from those guys right away unless yeah. you want to use that money right away. So that's why I'm like, today's going to be insane. I know today's going to be an insane day. Ryan Campbell, so far today's MVP. Um, quick question. I'm listening. We talked about doing a mock draft Ooh. here on live. Do we want to do it now or do we want to do it later? Yeah, I'd rather do it a little bit later just because I would like to be able to answer some of the questions that come in. And we'll see like what happens throughout the day, but we will have to do a mock draft today. We, we said we would do it yesterday, and then the Jimmy Garoppolo news came out, so we kind of got steered away from it. And then last night I was sitting there with Chugs, and I was like, honestly, dude, um, we got to do this. So we got to do this. Also, we didn't really do 2 o'clock, so if you could, can you put two minutes up on the board here? Two minutes on the board, 2 o'clock. Every 10 that we get is going to be a shot. And then also a wheel spin. So this was named Tuna Clock by the great Brandon Jasper. His dad's nickname was Tuna, so therefore we called it Tuna Clock. Shout out to Mount Raider Moore. Cameron, is there a trade we could make to fill a need? I mean, I'll still say T. the... T. Higgins. T. Higgins ain't happening. I'll say um, one, of the, one of the moves that I will just be curious Marshall if they Lattimore. make... Marshawn Lattimore is an intriguing name, though. It's just you have to pay him so much money. So that's why I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. It's not going to be a sexy move for a lot of people out there, but it's James Bradbury. The Raiders would only owe Bradbury $1 million because you'd only have to pay his base. you probably give up a sixth, seventh round pick in order to get him. And he best the best he's ever been was probably with Patrick Graham back with the Giants. And again, it's more of just a depth move. That's not your cornerback one. It's like insurance of making sure maybe in case Ja'Cory and Bennett isn't ready to roll. So that's that's the name that I'm going to just continue to throw out there, which I've thrown out there before. Let's go to the next one coming in here on the show, which is from... Um, let's see. Raider... Is it after... Raider Invader. After Cameron was Raider Invader. Yeah, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 Super Chats. Raider in... Okay, let me... Our our yeah. system wasn't pulling it for a second, so let me... Oh, I got you. So Raider Invader says, if we do end up with Jaden Daniels, 
Who would you start, him right away or give him a headset and a clipboard? Uh, I mean, realistically, this is also a name, actually, I think you guys should keep in mind. The Baltimore Ravens, they are releasing Tyus Bowser. So Tyus Bowser was a player that I talked about two weeks ago that could potentially be released or cut. And uh, that was a name that I would at least throw out there that the Raiders could target. Tyus Bowser is another name that I'd throw out there in terms of being a, a good target for the Raiders in free agency. But in terms of the question here from Raider and Vader, if we do end up with Jaden, to me, if you trade up all those picks for Jaden Daniels, you're probably better off starting him. Now, I'll admit the only way that, that you don't do it is if you watch him at camp and you go, he's not ready. Like, if you're yeah. like, Jaden's clearly not ready to go right away, then you put Gardner Minshew out there as the starter, you let Jaden learn for an entire year, and then you hand the keys to the car to Jaden in year two. Like, yeah. that might be, I know it might not be what people want right away, but that might be the, the way that the Raiders do end up trying to do this. Like, that would make a lot more sense to me then of why they went out and signed Gardner Minshew if their plan all along is to have a rookie quarterback sit for one season. And the, the next one I have on here, because it kind of messed up on me, is Steven Rockwell. So the next one is from Alfredo Robles. He says, when does the new league year officially start? Today. Today, 3, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to say 3, but yeah, 4 Today, Eastern. Today, 4 p.m. Eastern time is when the official new league year begins. So Raider Muerte sending in the good vibes, yeah. as always. Raider Muerte. Appreciate real that. Real one. Brian L. says, restructure Max, sign Kendall Fuller, Lakin Tomlinson, or Connor Williams. Uh, Isaiah Simmons for linebacker and draft. Joe Alt in round one. That's a lot. I don't think Alt's going to be available to the Raiders at 13. To me, he's going to be the first offensive tackle off the board. If he is on the board, though, at 13, I'm telling you right now, that's who the Raiders are going to pick, and then they're going to have a good problem to have of who's going to play left tackle, him or Colt Miller. Thoughts? Um, I mean, you, you signed Andre James, so unless you want to sign Connor Williams for a guard. Sure, which, I mean, he's played guard before. Um, he's played every position on the line. Which, again, like that, that could be some good versus. I mean, there's some people that think that he is a better guard than center, but that's still probably out there. Like, to me... I would just rather you roll with like a Kevin Zeitler than a Connor Williams, but again, could be persuade. Isaiah Simmons has always been an intriguing player to me. I think he's a great athlete. However, he hasn't really been able to find his footing on multiple different NFL teams, and one of those teams was the New York Giants. I don't know if Patrick Graham was there. I think they, they got him in 2022, the year after Graham left, but still... Simmons has a lot, a lot of athletic ability. Could be somebody to yeah, look there, at. There's no, there's no overlap with, with Yeah, I don't think PG. so. Uh, Dalton Reisler says, are the Raiders signing Dalton Risler? I don't know if you mean Dalton. He means Dalton Ra Reisner. Dalton Reisler. Could be at least a target to throw out there. I mean, you still need to be able to find an offensive guard. However, are you confident that he's going to be able to play right guard would be my question. And then Stephen Rockwell. Cool. We signed Fuller or... D is going to make Mahomes eat corn the long way. That's the hope, right? I mean, to me, the Raiders already have, they're trending in the right direction of potentially having the best defense in the NFL. I, I would put a, if you were to ask 32 GMs right now, are the Raiders a top five defensive line? I think all 32 say yes. The linebacker group is a little bit of an unknown commodity as it stands right now. And then I do think that secondary, you're a cornerback away because if you have a Kendall Fuller, next to a Nate Hobbs, next to a Jack Jones with Marcus Epps and Trevon Merrick in that secondary. I'm telling you what, man, this defense, I can't wait to watch this D. Giggity. Merte, all I want is for us to sign a corner, and can I get a Raiders? Love the show and appreciate everything you two do for the nation. If we get a corner today, and when I say a corner, I'm talking one of the top three names that I said out there or just another like... Just somebody that you have a, enough confidence in where you don't have... Same deal as day one? What? If you send in a $50 Super Chat with the name of somebody that the Raiders sign... The only problem with that is I got to do push-ups then on top of that. But F it, we'll run it. We'll, we'll run it. All right, so how many shots... So that was a so that, shot. That, that's one shot and one wheel spin. Okay.
All right. I mean, I can already tell you what song they're going to want you to sing. I can already tell There's you. There's only one song that should be played. <laughs> uh, drink Up from Real Cowboy. What up, Mr. Cowboy? And that is another wheel spin. I'll tell you what. It's not as bad as what I thought it would be today. And I hate to admit that. That's a, it's a lame thing to say at 11 o'clock in the morning. That fireball doesn't taste bad. But that's just the God honest truth. I'm ready for today, man. I'm, I'm, ex- I'm super stoked. Oh, Christ. This might change my opinion. Yikes. Woo! Yikes. Oh, Christ. Um, Welp. Jelly bean time. I'm not even going to ask you guys if you want a gross or spicy one. So here's what we're going to do today. We are going to, like, if I do a gross one first, that means then the next one that I do is spicy. Because I don't have, we don't have enough gross to get us through the entire day. Yeah. So we're going to alternate. So first one, do we want gross or spicy? First one, do you want gross or spicy? Type G for gross, type S for spicy. Gross or spicy. Which also means then your first one is either gross or spicy. So whatever they... Well, no, it goes back and forth. Well, no. Because then if I get a gross one, then you'd always get the spicy one. And I'd always No, that you said we were interchanged. Gross, spicy, gross, spicy. No. If I do gross, then you're going to do gross. And then the next one is I do spicy. No, and then then I do do spicy. spicy. That's not how it's going to go. That's not how it's going to go. I'm seeing... It's actually kind of a mixed bag right now. I think it's actually spice. I think it's spice. Which I think it's spice. I'm, I'm surprised. I right. mean, that means my first one is spicy, and then you go gross. Correct. Yep. <laughs> All right. I have. I got a few in my hands here. Okay. Giggity. One, two, three, or four. It's for you, right? Yeah, but you got to pick the number. I can't just three. Pick. The jalapeno, which we're starting to run out of them. If we don't know what they are, what spicy do? I don't care what anyone says. That's like a jalapeno with the seeds. <laughs> no one says, number three, my lord. Number three. Pick number three, my lord. Raider man. Number two. Well, that's the joke. That's what happens. In Shrek. Oh, really? You never knew that? Maybe I just didn't remember. In, in the movie Shrek. Am I tripping when they go, pick number three, my lord? The guy holds up two fingers. No? Right? Maybe. Has anybody seen I'm pretty sure that's what happens. If Mac becomes free, do you think we'll have more interest than most teams? Love it. It would be just like when Woodson came back. I mean, I'll say this. Yeah, they're, they're saying I'm right. Um, also, I, I have karaoke, so the first person to super chat a song within reason, I will sing. All right. Um, I don't know if you saw Silver and Facts. You gotta, if he said he'd send in a 50 if you do 10. <laughs> I'll, do the, I, I'll do only for the first one. I'm not doing every time a 50. I'll do 10. Yeah, I mean, this is, is going to be one of those where I'm either going to really regret it or at the end of the day, I'm going to be like, you know what? I did 100 push-ups. Like, not the worst thing that I probably could do. Um, Raider I, Man. I actually don't know. I, what's curious is there's obviously interest because of Tom Telesco. Like, Telesco obviously brought Khalil Mack to the Los Angeles Chargers, so he obviously likes him as a player. If I'm Mark Davis, though, and there's certain moves that I do think football teams should make, and the only reason why I say it is this, Mark, if you're listening right now, If you brought back Khalil Mack to this team, your ticket sales go through the roof. Your jersey sales go through the roof. And, you know, I always say, like, you shouldn't do things based on a business. But I'm telling you right now, if I was the owner of the Las Vegas Raiders and I wanted to make more money, like, they they hired AP, they did the right thing, right? They, They have Antonio Pierce. You signed Christian Wilkins, all good in the hood. If you figured out a way to bring Khalil Mack, I'm telling you right now, Allegiant Stadium is going to be packed with Raider fans. Oh, great song. Great song choice. He might be too expensive, but honest to God, if the Raiders signed Khalil Mack, 
How many people in here, even if it costs a lot of money, even if it might be a overpay, I'm telling you right now, people are going to love the fact that they did that because yeah. nobody wanted the Raiders to trade away Mac in the first place. I think it would be a, I think it would be another really good move for the nation. Like, you know what? I'm going to pay some extra money. Let's make it happen. And if if Mark really wanted to be a good guy, you give him just a bunch of cash, low salary cap, give him some guaranteed. Prove that you're not poor, Mark. Prove that you're not poor. Prove that you're not poor. Let's, let's make it happen. What's up, Vivid? Have a... All right, get Fields. Have a three-way quarterback battle. Use the 13th overall on a defensive stud. The rookie route is an expensive risk. It is an expensive risk. Let's say Justin Fields is a third or a fourth round pick, right? And you have that quarterback battle, and whoever comes out victorious, you go with. To me, though, if you go that route, I'm not going to take a defensive stud at pick 13. If that's the route that you're going to go. Oh, look who oh, just popped up. Gardner Minshew. Mr. Minshew up there on top. If that's the route that you're going to go, to me, I'm taking a right tackle because I want to really ensure myself that my offensive line is a stud, whether that's a J.C. Lantham, a Talisi Fuaga, Olu Fashanu, that's where I would go. The corner that I would say would be the most likely if they went defensive player at 13, I'm going to say Terry and Arnold based on people that I talk to. The Raiders love Terry and Arnold. I think he's going to be a great fit or would be a great fit. Let's go to the real Cowboy. One more. Spin that wheel. One more time. Dun, uh, dun, dun. Uh, uh. Have you seen that video of the guy who's like, one more time. Dun. I don't know. He was on, like, Brit I'm not on, he was on like Britain's Got Talent. I'm not on TikTok. I feel like a lot of the stuff you bring up, you're like, I saw this on TikTok once. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Dang it. Oh, I wanted that tweet so bad. I wanted to tweet so bad. Uh, All right, for those of you that well, do not know what this deal is, the deal is this. Well, funny, funny enough. I'm listening. We have another spin. Another one. This show always puts me in a good mood watching while running my errands today. What errands do you have to do? Because I'll tell you this. if Dave, if you're out grocery shopping. How many errands are you running? I want to I wanna video, Dave, of you running an errand, and it's... We get a hundred dollar or a bang, and I want you to just take a beer out of like the grocery store, slam it, and then you pay for it later. Like that would be legendary. What is this? A nice little henny shot from my man Chugs. A nice little henny shot from my man Chugs. Let's go. Josh says I'm watching this at the gym right now. Well, if you could, Josh, get a few extra reps in for me because I could use it. Yeah. I'm going to put on 10 pounds this week. There's no doubt about well, it. Well, There is no doubt about the fact that I'm putting on 10 pounds this week. <laughs> honestly, I, I feel like at the end of the week, I go to give Chuck a hug, and he's like, he just starts like pressing on my belly, like making a bed. He's just getting himself all nice and comfortable. Alfredo, what time does the league year officially start? 4 p.m. Eastern time today. If you're on the West Coast, 1 p.m. I think, uh, I think that's pretty good. Next one is from Rebel. I pressed the like button, but Marsh took it home. <laughs> Rebel Martin. Rebel Martin. I, I, I heard Marshall has a pocket like button. Really? Uh, I heard it's like a flesh like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I heard. That was a good one. I appreciate that. That was really good. I'm glad I can at least bring something to the table. <laughs> a flesh like. A flesh like. What up, Jeff? <laughs> Love the show. The shocked look on Chug's face. I can like face. even when Mitch is not live. The, lo the shocked look on Chug's face when Mitchell said he sold his butthole was priceless. I mean, if, here's the thing on this show. If you come in last place in a duck race, you're getting a butthole pick. And doing this world's spiciest chip and the world's spiciest gummy bear, yeah, it's... It was, you said that was worse than the actual taste in your mouth. The gummy bear. Yeah, yeah it's the gummy bear. I, I wouldn't do the gummy bear again. How bad did it hurt your stomach? I mean, I, I literally threw up. <laughs> I was like, this has to get out of my stomach. Actually, I was researching because the other day somebody was like, would you um, do the chip again? And I saw that I was like a 14-year-old kid did the chip in high school, and he, like, died. It destroyed his insides, like, that bad. Like, again, I, I know that certain people can handle spicy food. Like, certain things go a certain way. 
Uh, it was, dude, it was craziness. Craziness. This J.K. Dobbins, him jogging at five and a half months. I don't know what, what's going to happen for J.K. That guy can't uh, stay yeah. healthy. Bobby. What? Relax. I don't want to have to put you in timeout, but. I don't quit, know, quit I don't know what's happening. Well, no, he's just spamming Why Minshew. He's no good. Oh. But, yeah, re re relax, man. We, we saw your comment. Use hashtag Raiders if you want it on screen really bad. but Yeah, uh, it's all right, man. We're just all going to calm down here. <laughs> Put the comment down and we won't have a problem. <laughs> Is Tyree going to have a sophomore slump or a second-year bounce? I, I mean, if he has a slump, then we're in a – that just means you made the wrong pick. Uh, that, that's just a fact. Like, I do anticipate that he's going to be better this season – and he even got better, you know, as the season went on, right? Like, the season went on, he did get better, he got healthier. And what the Raiders did, and I'm so happy, and one of the biggest reasons why I wanted them to go out and get a Christian Wilkins is, Wilkins is going to be over the nose of the football. That's going to be the guy taking on the double teams. And then, if you're an offensive coordinator, if you're an offensive line, where are you going to shift your alignment? Are you going to put it on Max Crosby, Tyree Wilson, or Malcolm Coons? Realistically... The guy that's going to get probably the most one-on-ones is Tyree Wilson. Tyree's good enough and strong enough to win one-on-ones. Like, I do think he's going to have a good year. If they put him at defensive tackle, I don't know if he puts up, like, the biggest statistics out there, but he is going to make a major impact on this team. Like, Tyree Wilson's going to have a good year. I'm, I'm very confident in that. I'm also confident that you guys would love our sponsor, Prize Picks. And if you haven't already gotten started, go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. For a first time deposit match up to $100. Prize picks is the most fun that I've had all year. And one of the reasons why that I love it, not only is it simple, easy to use, so easy that a caveman could do it, also my dad. Go to pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Use code CLNS for a first time deposit match up to $100. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into some serious cash. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for the playoff on home court, there is no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of the year. Testing my skills on prize picks this season is a lot of fun. You can actually turn $10 into potentially 1000 with just a few taps. Prize picks, simple to play. You can make your picks, submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. Also, they are doing a really cool deal right now with James Harden, so it's essentially like a free, I guess, pick that you're going to be able to get. So if you haven't already, that link's going to be available to you all down in the comments and in the description of today's show. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS, and make sure that you use code CLNS for that first time deposit match up to $100. When I said you can make a pick today and essentially Harden's for free, he is. 3.14 points for, for Pi Day. Their game's tomorrow. He's going to score more than 3.14 points. I, I don't watch a lot of basketball, but I can guarantee that. So what I like to do when I get a deal like this is I like to go with the one that I think is a lock to hit. And usually when you see the green goblin, that means it's going to end up hitting. And that means mm -hmm. all I got to worry about then is Jamal Murray, and I think he's going to have less than 21 and a half points. If this hits, I'm going to be putting some money in my pocket. If you want a chance to win some money, go to pricepicks.com oh, yeah. slash CL. Get started today. Yep. Don't be a loser like the Wardlow fam. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, man. Here we go. <clears throat> Here we go. What up, Josh? Raiders, let's effing go. That's a, is that another one? Or I think this is just wheel spins at this point. Yeah. All right. We got some wheel spins. Um, Have you sang that, your that, that song was yet? The, that was the last one for a shot as well during the 2 o'clock. What? That was the last 2 o'clock shot. This one or the last one? This one. This is the last one. Yeah. All right. What up, Jason McHugh? Effing go. Man, I'm excited to see what they do today, Jason. I'm excited to see what they do today. Really, really am. I mean, it's one of those things where I just, I'm anticipating such a wild and crazy day. So that's why I'm kind of like amped up to see what the, what the silver and black do today. Spin that wheel. Every 10, we're spinning the wheel. We got 2,300 people here in the building. Oh, this is brutal. That's this is not good. Do can we have the real question is do can, we have tortillas? Can you get me a tortilla? Only if Rebel goes home. 
<laughs> <laughs> Only if Rebel... He's like, joke's on you. I am home. Or are you on the road today, Rebel? Are you on the road today? I don't know. I'll send a 50 if Chugs agrees to do 10 of the push-ups. You're welcome, Mitch. By the way, at being a Raider fan in Colorado right now is rad. Why? Because the Broncos are just getting rid of everyone? They're now softer. Are they? Dude, I don't, how long have they been in there? There's only a little bit of mold. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. Tom ripped the mold part off. It's good, It's only that part. Only if uh, if you know if you take now mold you off it, it should be fine. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do this. I feel like uh, the wheel spins. They're gonna be. There's gonna be a lot of shit going down today. I'm a little bit nervous about them. Nico, what do you mean? What do you mean, Nico? Oh, a they want you to put on Raiders gear, but that's up to you. A polo. That's oh, that's true. All, all, my, all my Raiders stuff are shirts or jerseys. Which way are you going to go? Actually, yeah, this way. That way you don't hit my mic. I mean, I think either way. Either way you're going to hit my mic? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. I can backhand it, so. <sighs> I'm worried about that. All right, let's go. Let's get this over with. Oh my god. Oh god, does that hurt? Dude. My ear legit popped. All right, I'm going to be honest. I don't know if I want any more tortilla slaps today. Holy shit. My ear literally popped when he did that. Yep. Um I feel like I'm underwater. How do you get? How do you stop doing that? Um, uh, I I can't imagine. I just I'm I'm deaf from here on out. How'd you lose your hearing? I got slapped in the head by a tortilla. <laughs> Hannah <laughs> says, "Man up, Mitch." Hey, uh, I'm man. I'm thirty. W Wardlow, I, what? I'm just gonna put you in timeout. It's just it's too yeah. much. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair okay. enough. Wardlow, I, it, it's okay. I'm going to treat you like I used to treat my students whenever I was a pre-K teacher. I'll put you in timeout for five minutes, and you can come and rejoin the class and just see if you've learned anything. <laughs> Maybe have, have five minutes to self-reflect. Be like, why am I in timeout? Use your happy hands. Happy hands. Your happy hands. Yikes. Mean hands aren't nice. Use your happy hands. Let's go to Luis. I'm still standing. I'm with you, man. I'm still standing, too. Barely, but we're still here, dude. I, I mean, today, the, the, the fact that of what has happened over the past few days is kind of wild to me. Yesterday was slow, but still a really fun day here, I thought. And uh, today is going to oh, be... Trent Sieg to the Cowboys. Just... Trent Sieg to the Cowboys is a little bit heartbreaking. I'm not going to lie. All right. You can never know what it's like. Your blood like when it freezes just like ice, and this. there's coldly lonely light that shines from you. You wind up like the wreck you hide behind the mask you use. And don't you know this good fool could never win? Well, look at me, I'm coming back again. I got a taste of love in a simple way. And if you need to know why, I, why, uh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that was the karaoke. I was, I was really expecting Return of the Mac. I just figure that's just going to be the song every time. Anthony G. Man, we're getting a lot, a lot of wheel spins. All I ask is this. If you want us to spin the wheel, at least give me a Raiders question as well. Or give me somebody that you want the Raiders to sign, and I'll give you my two cents on it. This is devastating. I also realize I don't think we ever did yours either. So we'll rotate. All right, I'm down. How about this? Put two minutes on the clock. Every 50 that we get. Is a beer bong. It's not going to be push-ups. I'm telling you that right now. I ain't doing both. So every 50 that we get, beer bong here, two minutes. You do the first. I do the second. You do the third. Well, how, I do how, the fourth. Si since I forgot, I feel bad. I'm going to go ahead and put, I'll put four minutes. Four minutes on the clock. All right. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. 
This is a uh, beer bong tuna clock, which I'm a little bit worried how this could go. This one, this one might get out of hand, which sometimes it is what it is, but it is what it is. Um, Adam, what's up, Adam? Your Shrek reference is right. If we don't trade for Fields or draft a quarterback, I say we go and get Uncle Rico. You already got Uncle Rico. You assigned him to a two-year, $25 million deal. The thing is, his name's also Gardner Minshew. Um, I will say that if we don't trade for Fields or draft a quarterback, I don't see that happening. I, I, I do not see both of those scenarios not happening. Like, if you trade for Justin Fields, you give up your third-round pick, cool, you have that battle. If you don't trade for Justin Fields, the Raiders will draft a QB in the first three rounds. And they 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 have to. Like, you, you cannot sell a organization just on, we're just going to roll with Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew. Two QBs that can be good backup quarterbacks if you need to put them in a pinch, can be a starter here and there. But like, but like overall, though, you have to get a QB. And if your plan is then to have Gardner Minshew start for first year, you want to take Spencer Rattler in round three? Cool. Let him sit for a year. Let him learn. You, you, you could not afford, though, to have only your two quarterbacks on your roster as Gardner Minshew. When I say only two, only legit two quarterbacks on your roster as Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell. But back in the day, the Raiders made a video, Silver and Black Attack. You guys have to sing that song together, Just Win Baby. I don't know that one. I have to, I'll have to listen to it. I might know it. I know a lot of like random Raider songs that I listen to. Uh, not listen to, but that I'll play on my phone. Like if I'm going to post like an Instagram story I only or listen something to graph. like that. I listen to Graph. I also have a song on my phone <laughs> that a Raider fan sent me back in like 2018 before, 2019 before my first trip out to Oakland. It's like my favorite Raider song that I have, and I don't, I've don't. i never seen it out there anywhere. It's a great song. Jacob, stop with the JF1 talk. Not going to happen. Unfortunate. Sad. I mean, I'll say this. I, I, I will admit that the connection with Justin Fields is strange to me just because the moment that you hired Luke Getze and based off of everything that the Raiders beat reporters have put out there, like, I don't see how or why the Raiders would get Justin Fields. But at the same time, if if he becomes available for a fourth or a fifth round pick, I mean, if you're the Raiders there, I mean, if you're a lot of NFL teams, that's fourth or a fifth round pick for Justin Fields. I think you at least got to entertain the idea. I think right now Chicago's looking for a second. That ain't happening. I, I, don't, I don't see a team out there giving up a second-round pick for him. So we'll, we'll see because the closer you get to the draft, the lower Justin Fields' trade value is going to go. And if I'm Chicago and I don't get a pick that I, or I don't get a deal that I like, I'm pretty confident that somebody is going to end up trading for Fields during the draft then. And then so on. Like You just got to try to you gotta try to hang on to him, man. You got to get some value. Dylan! Have we cut Brandon Bolden? And what's the deal you'd offer Khalil Mack if cut? Well, Brandon Bolden's a free agent, so he's not on the roster. And if the Raiders, I'll tell you this right now, if the Raiders re-sign Brandon Bolden, I would have a mental breakdown. I, I don't even know what I would do. I mean, I have absolutely no idea. No idea what the hell I would do. Cruzan also said, I remember that Raiders song. Uh, it's a good. We were listening to that song in the car. with. That was the song we listened to with uh, Killip. But... And then the offer to Cleo Mack, I mean, what's he, 10 mil a year? I mean, that might not be a lot of money, but that's probably, let me see. I don't have his contract details in front of me. Right now, Khalil Mack is cap hit, it's, holy shit, 38 million. However, his base salary is 17.5. So if I'm the Raiders and realistically you want Khalil Mack, yeah, you're probably going to have to give him somewhere in that 15 15 million at least number. I mean, he had how many sacks last season? Like 16, 17? He had a hell of a season. Uh, did he have that many? I thought he had a good amount, but he also had five against. Yeah, 17 sacks last season. Five came in one game, but if you're an edge rusher. You still 12 sacks in the season this I mean, good. I'll say this, though. If you're Khalil Mack, you just saw the deal the, the Neil Hunter got. You're probably looking for two years. 50 mil. Probably. I mean, coming off a 17-sack season, so it's a hefty price tag. Again, though, if I'm Mark Davis, I, I would at least try to do it. Like, I would try to do it. He's going to make money if they bring in Cleo Mack. I know Rufio, that. Rufio! Rufio! What Rufio. up, David? Rufio. Listening at work on my AirPods. I mean, imagine if, David, how about this? 
I want you to take your AirPods out and just just play it. Let everyone listen. Nah, don't do that. Nah, just kidding. Don't do that. Th- th- those are worst type of people in public spaces who listen to their phone on loud or are, you know, on a call on speakerphone. Worst people ever. Yeah, them. And then on my flight back from my vacation with that, Alex. Huge, huge red flag if you're, if you're talking on speakerphone in public. I agree with that. It's also if you're like watching a movie on an iPad on a flight with no headphones. I, I don't even think you're allowed to do that. You're not. Yeah. So like, somebody was trying though on my flight uh, when I was coming back from my vacation. And they were like, it's for my kid. They, like that's what, like what they kept telling like the flight stewardess, and I was sitting there like, I, get headphones. Like I don't know what to tell you. Like I also understand that kids, it's tough probably telling them to keep you know the headset on or whatever. But they were just blaring something with there was something with a cow. I, that's all I remember. It was loud and it was right in my ear, man. My coworkers must think I'm crazy because I keep chuckling. Love the show. Keep it up, guys. Sent the link to my family. That's awesome, David. Greatly, greatly appreciate that, Jonah. Just want to say, all right, I read this was like after the Raiders. Uh, let's go Raiders. Let's get Mac attack back. I'll tell you, that would be, honest to God, that, that would be, I think if the Raiders signed Khalil Mack, I think that would be a bigger story than the Raiders signing Christian Wilkins. It wouldn't be as good of a move. I still think Wilkins would be the better move. But the way that the nation would react, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh man, that would be that would be just the most insane thing that you could possibly have happen. Jason, Jason, back here for another wheel spin. Also, y'all, if you haven't yet, we got two thousand five hundred people here in the building. I want you to hit that subscribe button. We're going to be pumping out a lot, a lot of content today. Already put out a video bright and early this morning. Actually, put out two videos at this point, and I know today is going to be an eventful day. For the Las Vegas Raiders, man. I, I know today is going to be an eventful day. I don't know what's going to happen exactly. I'm not even going to sit up here and act like I do know what's exactly going to happen. But what I know is it's going to be a fun day. There's going to be a lot of, lot, a lot of sparks flying today. Jason, I watch every stream but only get to participate when I'm not driving. Thank you, Mitch. All the truckers and God bless America. Really? Hang on, I gotta tweet this out. My answer. It's from the video from before. All right, we'll put that out there. All right, we got what's your confidence level on AP Telesco? Let's get a let's get a question up here, something rolling. How about this? Duck race. You guys in? Twenty dollar Venmo for a little duck race action here. I'm down on the Raiders report. Twenty dollar Venmo at Mitchell Renz 365. I'll say this. Whoever is the first person to send it in, I'll give you a free entry, an extra entry. $20 yeah. Venmo uh, at Mitchell Renz 365. Our, our common thing is messing up as well. So what do you mean? Apple, Applebee and Alfredo, it's just like missing a couple of the comments. Like they're, like they're in it on YouTube. It's just not pulling it. Gotcha. Or it's like freezing, and then it, whenever I unfreeze it, it misses a couple. Uh, Applebee, give me that wheel spin, but also how cool is it to make a living off talking – about our football team. I'm jealous. Navy life is rough. Appleby, thank you for your service. Appreciate everything that you do. I mean, what you do makes it possible for what we can do. So thank you so much. And yeah, we we owe two wheel spins and now a third one from Alfredo. And he says, I just want it to land on prank call. Yeah, I think it's one of those things. And really, seriously, appreciate the super chat. And kind of Jeremy said it like, we appreciate people that do serve, and there's a lot of people that watch the show that serve. Like even like being able to sit down and talk to guys like, you know, Killer Cruz and uh, you know Nico, and you know you kind of hear their stories, and it does make me really really appreciate that we get to do what we do. And I believe Isaac uh, Isaac Hernandez as well. Isaac Hernandez, Hellcat Q, right? Like we we got a lot of these guys here, um, but I also think it's, I think what you guys see now is really cool. Like I, I appreciate the fact that we've been able to build a show like this. But I think a lot of times what people don't get is like that first two years, right? Like the first two years of nobody watching the show, the first two years of you not knowing if it's going to work out. And it's just like anything, it, you know, sometimes you got to get lucky. And I think we got lucky, but we also put in a lot of time, a lot of effort. And uh, I know that not everyone's going to agree with a lot of the stuff that we say, but 
at the end of the day, like I'm the type of person where I might not agree with everything you say, but I respect like work ethic and hard work. And when I, when I see, when I talk to Justin Abgen, he's out there hustling all the time, making his own money, running his own business. I respect that hustle. And I think people are going to watch this show and I don't want you to always agree with me. That's no fun. But at the end of the day, if you're like, you know what, that guy hustles. And I think Jeremy and I hustle better than anybody out there in the biz right now. So, uh, Appreciate it, though. So uh, those three, messages mean a lot. Three wheel spins, and then I do have Armando and the next Super Chats lined up. So we'll get to those in just a moment. All right. So I don't know who I would even prank call. Wow, this might hit it. It is. Let's go. <laughs> All right, the question is, do I get to pick somebody in your contact list, or do we just, like, how does that work? I think you get to choose somebody in my contact list. I'll let and I, then I, I what is it? Star sixty seven? I don't know, dude. I don't know how to prank call. I haven't pranked call in so long. Wait. I have no idea. I feel like crank yankers right now. This is gonna yeah, be epic. Star six seven. I'll star six seven and I'll prank call him. All right. I I know what I'm gonna do, so just give me your phone. Don't don't click call that yet though, so I can do I'm not star sixty seven. I'm not gonna look at your contacts. Um what do I want here? Alright, I don't know who this person is. I have no idea. The problem is if, if, if it's somebody that I've recently called, I think they'll recognize my voice. Maybe. You, got, you might have to just you might have to like change it up a little bit then. Alright, let's go with uh this guy. Which one? That one or I'll that let one? You, I'll let you pick. I think because I was between those two. <laughs> I was between those two. So I'm basically gonna take a name that I just found in his recent calls. Cause like the contacts it's I'll tell you this. I wouldn't want you to call like some random person that I talked to two years ago. And you're like, why the frick is this? Guy oh, that's even better. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't want to be in that. I don't know if I'd want to All be right. in that conversation. Yeah, we got the Jerky Boys 2.0 here from Daniel Caps Keenan. Yep. Mitch should prank Chug's contact. <laughs> Maybe next time. I, I don't mind that idea. If I, was right. the, if I was the one on the phone. All right, here we go. Here we go. If you haven't already, hit that like button. It's ringing. It is a uh, ringing. I don't, would you answer the phone though? I wouldn't. I wouldn't answer the phone. I would just see that it's somebody that I have no idea who it is. This is. <sighs> Do I answer. try one more time? Try it again. Go to go again. Go for go for green. All right. Let's let's see it. No, I'm not doing that. Eight oh five. No, if I had his number, I'd just put it out on Twitter. No, I wouldn't even do that. That's lame. All right, we're trying it again. I think you guys say he's got a package. I think he's just you're, you're gonna get blocked. <laughs> It's, this one might not work the way that we originally yeah. planned. I'll try one more time. Yeah, I don't know. It's like he's on an important business call. I'm just like, he's like Jesus. Or he's watching porn. He's just trying to get by for the day. Let's see. Mrs. Connor with CDOW. Yeah, he just sent me straight to voicemail. You wanna, <laughs> do you want to try again with somebody else in my contacts? or? How about this? Do you remember the... Dun, 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 dun. Do we try that bit? Ah, oh. <laughs> and his name is John Cena. Uh -huh. All right, I think we tried. If we call somebody three times, we got to keep it moving. Oh, okay. We, okay. I mean, we tried three times. It is what it is. Somebody said call his girlfriend. Nah, huh. I ain't gonna do that. I don't have one. Uh, that is true. Very true. <sighs> uh, dude, the tortilla slaps hurt, bro. They do. I don't even. I don't even want to hit you. Well, 
You kind of have to now. Yeah, now I do. You can you can stand right there. This is brutal. All right, ten push-ups, and then one one more. We got one more. All right, we got one more. We got one more. To the two thousand two hundred people here, rocking with us until the Raiders make a move. Oh, my Lord. oh, I love this. All right, I got a plank. Plank clock. One minute. Every five dollar super chat is a second you have to plank. Sounds good. We have. Wait, say that again. Every five dollars. Okay. Is a second that you have to plank. I will do my best. We do have a trade, though, here in the NFL. The Baltimore Ravens are trading offensive tackle Morgan Moses to the New York Jets. That is according to wow. Mike Garofolo. We don't have the contract details yet out on it. But if you remember, Moses was a member of the New York Jets back in 2021. So that's the deal that just went down here. Again, per Mike Garofolo, the Ravens are trading offensive tackle Morgan Moses to the Jets. I don't know what the contract details are yet, or uh, I don't know what the compensation is yet. This makes sense now. What? The, the Wardlow fam is a is a troll account. So gotcha. I gave you an opportunity. I only put you in timeout, but I'm just going to go ahead and hide you from the channel, Wardlow. We tried. Everybody pour one out for Wardlow. <laughs> we tried. I think I think at the end of the day, man. You he, was gotta... a good, he was a good troll. Um, the Wardlow fam. Bro, pour, I just got a call. I just got a call, no caller ID. <laughs> That's weird. It's your buddy calling us. <laughs> Armando. What's up, which Armando? This is a jelly bean. Oh, shit. If the Raiders sit back and wait to draft a quarterback in the second or third, if still on the board, who do you prefer, Spencer or Jordan Travis? If Travis didn't get hurt, he would be a top three pick if we we're going to be honest. Um, I'll be honest with you. I don't think Jordan Travis is a very good quarterback. I, uh... I don't think he's a very talented guy. It's not somebody that I would take, and I think even if he didn't get hurt, he would not have been drafted in round one. So uh, I'll go with Spencer Rattler over Jordan Travis, even if he was healthy. Now, some people might not like that take. To me, he just doesn't do anything special to me. He's a good college quarterback. Like That's what he was. He was a game manager for Florida State. They won because of their defense, not really because of him. Like I, 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 I know you said he'd be a top three pick. I actually don't think he would have been drafted in round one. I don't even know if he would have been drafted in the top two rounds of the NFL draft. So if I got to pick between Jordan Travis or Spencer Rattler, I'm going to go with the upside, and I just see a lot more upside in Spencer Rattler. Like, he's to me, he's just clearly the better quarterback from top to bottom. So uh, no disrespect to Travis. It's, it's easily for me, Spencer. Yeah. All right, here's the trade. We have the details in here. The Ravens are trading Morgan Moses and pick 134 to the Jets. For pick 112 and 218. So those are the picks that happen. Wow. Yep. Okay. Um, also, jelly bean. Who eats the first jelly bean for the 20? Uh, you're up because I ate the other one. Well, that was for the wheel spin. How do we determine for the... I just think we trade jelly. Like if I, I, do, I did one. Now it's your turn. But then what if it lands on me next on the wheel? Does that mean you do the... Well, no. If it lands on you on the wheel, then you do the wheel. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. The only one we've done is for the wheel. We haven't done the $20 yet. So how do we determine who goes first on the 20 I think that, The 20 is the one that we're going to be interchanging. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, well, rock, paper, scissors? I mean, I, I guess if it's the first 20, I can do the first 20. I don't really care. I'll I, do, I, I, I want to do it, I, I do it in, a, in a fair way. They can't see you, though. Yeah, they can. All right. I, here, I, I'll, I'll change it. I'll change it. All right, so it's rock, paper, scissor, shoot. Okay. Anybody Ready? that doesn't do that, it's a cop. Ready? Ready? Rock, rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. Two. All right. Fair. Uh, it's fair to square. Yep. Square and fair. And honestly, the, the last time that I played rock, paper, scissors was when Alex and I were watching the Squid Game show. Yeah. That's honestly, because then after that, Alex and I played rock, paper, scissors. Also, Alex always beats me. In rock, paper, scissors, but we always play uh, to pick up Chuck's poop. Oh, uh, nice. I haven't played rock, paper, scissors in a while, but I have played prize picks recently. The you number one say. daily fantasy sports app out there. Wow. I'm telling you, prize picks, life changing. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. It's, it's, choosing, it's as easy as choosing two or more players from any sport. Any sport. Pick more or less on their projected stat types, and then all you got to do is place your entry. 
That's all you got to do. That's all you have to do, Mitch. I think it's easy. It is fun. It's exciting. They also have a bunch of different sports on there. Like right now, I'm surfing on the Prize Picks app, and I'm actually sometimes blown away by how many different things that they have. So they have NBA, college basketball, NHL. They even have one right now that says for the NFL season. So if like if you wanted to put some money down for like the future and just like see how much like uh, Patrick Mahomes, 4,350 yards. You can go more or less on that one. Uh, Kirk Cousins with Atlanta, they have him at 4,099 yards. I'm really curious, actually, to see if they have somebody like Devontae Adams on here. They probably don't because of the quarterback situation. Yeah, they don't yet. Justin Jefferson is at 1,375 yards. I think that one's pretty good. Dude, actually, I just got a text message from a Raider fan. Uh... Killer Cruzen said he's got Daniel Gafford at nine and a half points, went more. Mikel Bridges, more than three and a half assists. And then Nicholas Claxton, more they, than ten and a half they points. They honestly, they need to add Killer Cruzen to their list of guys, their celebrities, that you can kind of there you go. piggyback off their picks. There's multiple celebrities on the app where whenever you search in there, yeah. It shows you their picks that they're actually making. Correct. Like they, Meek, Meek, Meek Mill's always on there. Meek Mill, Sugar Sean O'Malley, who yep. had a great fight the other day against Cheeto Vera. One of the nastiest knees I've ever seen to the face. Did you see that? Yeah. It was. Dude, it... People were talking about the way it sounded. It was like it echoed. Oh. The, the fact that he didn't fall, Cheeto Vera, one of the toughest dudes I've ever seen in my life. If I took that knee to the face, I might be dead. Most... <laughs> Honestly, most people would not be able to just recover from that. Um, Certain dudes, though, are built different. And Killa said he's got three picks down. He would end up winning all right. $70. So, again, go get started. Pricepicks.com. Slash. Line up the spicy jelly beans for me for Armando. Uh, we got a Texans trade here. The Texans are trading defensive tackle Malik Collins to the 49ers, according to Adam Schefter. Malik Collins going to the Niners. Remember, they had to figure out a way. So Eric Armstead is expected to be released today. Maybe that's their replacement for him? I think the Texans are going to sign Eric Armstead. Could be. He worked with D'Amico Ryans. D'Amico had nothing but great things to, to say about Armstead. They want to improve the defensive line. I mean, could be, man. That's, that's pretty big time. All right, so this jelly bean is for you. Since spicy. I, since I got spicy last time, that means you have an opportunity to get spicy this time. All right, let me put these in here in my hand. All right, what do we got? I don't want to do that. That's a disaster of a one. All right. I got them lined up here. You guys can see in my hand, I'm not going to move them. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, counting down. I need a number one through four there, Mr. Chugs. One Give through four. Give me one. There you go. Uh, dude, I, I only eat the mango habaneros, I feel like. I mean, that's what I did. So that was mango was one, jalapeno was two, uh, cayenne was three, reaper was four in that case. Which we have, what I'm starting to get worried about is we're, we have a lot of Reapers in here, which is not good. That's definitely not going to be good. All we'll right, see, here we go. Though. Good luck to you. Armando, you're a real one. Let's go to the next one rolling in here, Chuggy Bowl. Again, Ooh. we got two. Yeah, dude, they're spicy. <coughs> next one. Jordan, what if we trade for Justin for a fourth round pick, then move up to the fourth of the first round and take Marvin Harrison Jr. That's spicy. I don't like that idea. Because if you're gonna move up to the number four pick, if you move up to the number four pick, you gotta give oh, up God. multiple first round picks in order to do that. So like I'm not gonna give up multiple first round picks to go up and get Marvin Harrison Jr. I uh I think he's a spectacular receiver. I think he's a phenomenal player, but it's also not the biggest need that we have now. Like if to me, if the Raiders were like, we really want Marvin Harrison Jr., I would say then you probably trade Devontae Adams to go get Marvin Harrison, and that way you don't have to give up so much draft capital in the future. But no, I uh, are you going to give up three first-round picks for Marvin Harrison Jr.? Because I, I legitimately think for the Raiders to go from 13 to 4, 
it's going to be around three first round picks. And depending on what other players are still on the board, I uh, fourth round fields, yes. To get to the fourth overall pick for Marvin Harrison Jr., I am uh, not going to do that. That that's a hard pass for me. That's a hard pass. Onhel says we ain't getting nobody today. That's a that's false. I'm they're going to get somebody today. I promise you that. Today's going to be an eventful eventful day here for the Las Vegas Raiders. I I don't know what they're going to do, but because they are allocating their money the way that they did in terms of they're cutting Renfro right away, they're cutting Jimmy Garoppolo right away. You don't make those moves unless you want that money to spend right away, and then that way you have that money to go out and spend right away. So they're they're going to be aggressive today. That I can promise you. All right, man, we got 2,200 people here in the building. If you haven't already, make sure you guys click that like button. Right now it does help us out. The more people we get here, the crazier that this show can end up getting to. Let's go to Hannah next up here. Mitch, seriously, what would a... Front four of Mac Wilson, Wilkins, Crosby due to opposing quarterback sleep patterns on Saturday nights. It would be one of the probably greatest front fours ever like put together. I, and that's a big thing to say out loud, but I do think that there's a lot of value to that. I mean, you have Khalil, again, who had 17 sacks last season. You got Max Crosby. We know what Max Crosby is. Then you add one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL and Christian Wilkins. You have the number seven overall pick in Tyree Wilson. And then the name that you're forgetting about, I'm not saying you're forgetting, but, you know, Malcolm Kuntz. Like, Malcolm Kuntz had eight sacks in the final nine games last year with Antonio Pierce. So this would be a defensive front that you would be able to continue to rotate in, continuously keep fresh. The offensive linemen for teams would be in shambles because I don't know how you stop that front on a regular basis. Like, you're going to win some reps. You're not going to win man many reps, though. I'll tell you that. Let's go to Eric. Spin it. What about signing Deonta Foreman? Uh, wanted him on draft day in 2017. Dude had 2,000 yards last year uh, that he was with Texas Beast. Watching you guys at dialysis. Oh, man, hopefully you're okay. Keep up the outstanding work. First off, Deonta Foreman was a name that I mentioned during my Josh Jacobs replacements video, and that was because of the fact that he played with Luke Getze last season. If they did want to find a thumper running back for a cheap price, maybe at around $3 million per year, could be a name to keep in mind if they do want to add a back. Like, I could see them trying to do that. However, I just want the Raiders to go out and get a draft. But if they're like, hey, we don't have a lot of confidence in Sincere McCormick, we need to go out no matter what and get another running back. I do think Foreman would be the more likely name compared to somebody like an A.J. Dillon, just throwing that out there. But uh, appreciate the fact that you're watching the show. So Chugs had to go make that video real quick for the Texans. We have a wheel. Can you spin that wheel for me? Do you know how to do it? If the answer to that is no, then we'll just have to rack up some of the wheels. You can do it. So there is a wheel. Maybe you know, say if you want to show them how to do it. So we got uh, my man Colin stepping in here for Chugs real quick. As Jeremy's going to go fill out a video. So essentially, every single $10 Super Chat that we get, Colin, we're going to spin the wheel for. And that's how it's done. Wheel has been spun. We got, oh man, a Chugs plank. Chugs owes a plank. That's going to be something to monitor. Uh, I apparently had to do a plank as well, but we didn't get any fives, at least not that I saw while the clock was on. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't see any of those, but is what it is. Chug's plank. What I think what we're going to have to do is we might have to put up that wheel spin a little bit higher just because I feel like we have so many things that we got to already catch up on, and I feel bad people sending them in, and we'll, uh, we'll have to get to them. Let's go to Kel. Did you see the Raider? Um... I don't know where you're at. No, there we go. Yeah, Kel, I did. And he's, I appreciate that people can use my name and use my takes and, you know, make, make a video off it. Like, I'm, I'm happy that I have that ability now to help other people make content. I don't got any beef with him. I think at the end of the day, he likes Aiden O'Connell more than me. I respect his passion about the team. I think he makes some good points in his video. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't got any beef with him. So he just, he just got beef with me, but I think if we were to sit down, have a beer, he'd realize I'm a pretty laid-back guy. I think a lot of the times, though, people 
know, when you make as many videos as that I do, if, if, if I was a Raiders podcaster, if I was a Raiders YouTuber, just the way that the internet works, I would make videos based on what I do say because people are going to be able to see what he's talking about more. And the fact that his most watched video is him talking about me and my aid and take, I'm happy that he was able to get that. And I hope that one day, a lot of these Raiders content creators, man, I can sit down and talk to them because I think it, people, people judge you what they see on screen, but the way that you are off screen is totally, totally different. But uh, honestly, I wish them nothing but the best. I got no beef with them. Let's go to Raider Tone. Everyone, I sent a super chat. My fat thumbs messed it up. Get Kendra Fuller. Dude, I want Kendra Fuller so bad on this team. Like, Really, I do. I, I really, really want Kendall Fuller. I think it would be a phenomenal, phenomenal pick here for this team to really be able to bolster that defense and really secure that cornerback one priority that Antonio Pierce talks about. Ryan Rodriguez, what is up? Did we try to restructure Renfro's contract? Uh, I have a bad feeling he ends up on the Chiefs, and that pairing scares me. Here's the thing, and I'm just going to be – this is not going to be a popular opinion out there – Hunter Renfro going wherever he does, it does not scare me because Renfro has not been a good, reliable receiver the past two seasons. Like, I get it. He was not good in 2022, right? He was not good in 2022 with uh, what they had. And McDaniels was not good for Renfro, no doubt about it. But, like, Renfro also deserves, you know, some, some blame on that regard as well. The dude's making $13 million and... Put the ball on the ground way too much. I know that concussions, you can't really say that's on him, and I'm not going to put that on him. But when you consider the fact that the amount of head injuries that he has sustained, when you think about how he was not a reliable receiver, had a lot of drops the past two seasons, like, I'm not worried about him. And even if you would have tried to restructure his contract, I'm not paying Renfro more than $3 million per year. So to me, I know what Renfro once was. And the Renfro conversation reminds me, honestly, very, very close to the Derek Carr conversation where it's like Derek Carr in 2015, 2016 was that guy. He was an MVP caliber quarterback. Then he got injured. After that was never the same. Hunter Renfro, his first three years in the NFL was a reliable slot receiver that you could depend on even in special teams. Had two or three really bad concussions. And then his final two years in the NFL was a totally, totally different player. Like, the Hunter Renfro that we knew the first three years compared to the Hunter Renfro that's out there now, it's not the same. So to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not upset that the Raiders lost him. I wish him the best. I love me some Hunter Renfro, third and Renfro. I'll miss screaming it. But from an actual like football standpoint, taking your emotions out of it, Renfro was not a good fit with this team. And I don't think he's, he's not that good of a receiver anymore. Uh, we do have some contract, not contract details, but trade details. The Niners are trading a seventh round pick for Malik Collins. So it only took seventh rounder for Malik, which he's, had, he's done a pretty good job in uh, Houston. Was not good for the Raiders. I know that a few years back, but it is what it is, right? Let's go to Bill from Jersey. Hondo has been saying that there is was no problem with Getze and Fields. He says that head coach told Getze how he wanted offensive run when Fields was getting frustrated last year. It was with, I can't quite read this one. Um, Cullen, what I want to do here. Frustrated last year was with head coach and the organization. I'm going to make a new deal, which I don't always do, but I feel like I have to do it just because we do have to catch up on so many of these wheel spins. So, uh, Cullen, if you get a chance, the super chat menu that we have, or I can even like wait for Chugs to be able to fix it. Uh, it says ten for a wheel spin. Let's just we're going to scrap. We're going to we're going to do wheel spins for twenty. So here's what we're going to do. I know that it's what the deal was. But I feel like we already owe so many, and not that it's taking away from the show, but I do want to be able to talk about some of the NFL stuff a little bit more than just spinning a wheel over and over again. So to make the deal a little bit sweeter, I'll just say every 20 that we get, we will spin the wheel. And then on top of it, I'll just eat one of these jelly beans here just because I do feel bad about making that deal. But uh, we owe like six, seven wheel spins, and I just don't want to sit up here and just continuously spin the wheel, which I hope you guys understand. But um. For this one, though, I will count it for Bill since he watches the show all the time. And I know what Hondo has been saying about Getsy and Fields, and I'll just say this. like, I don't know what to believe out there. And the reason why that I say that is because Hondo reports one thing, and you got all the other B Raiders beat reporters like Vincent Bonsignor, Vic Tafer, um, you know, Tashawn Reed, and they're saying the complete opposite thing. So it's, it's hard to believe 
what's true, what's not true. I think Hondo is a great, solid dude, but the way that I look at a lot of the things that those guys say, it's an opinion. Like, what Hondo says is the exact same thing as, like, what I say, what Graf says. Like, they are opinions based off of information that we receive, but I'm not going to sit up here and say everything that they say is, like, locked and loaded. If, if Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport came up here and said that, hey, the Raiders are okay with Getsy and Fields, they've never had a problem with it, then I would believe the problem is just there's been way too many swings and misses from beat reporters over the past two years for me to just sit up here and say, oh, because Hondo said it, it's 100% true. It's an opinion based off of information that he received, and that's how I think people should look at it going forward. But, Bill, shout out to you, man. Again, that's not shade. It's just I think that's the truth. And I don't know it, I don't know what's why the Raiders beat reporters have missed as much as they have. I also know how difficult it is to be in this spot here with the Raiders as a beat reporter because – I'm not, I'm not a beat guy, and I don't want to be a beat reporter. That's not who I am, and I, I will never try to be that, to be honest. I think I have a lot more fun doing what I'm doing. But when you have new regimes that continuously flow in here, it is really hard to be able to figure out what guys you can talk to, what guys you can trust, and, and kind of move on there. I know Hondo's tied in, but just because he says it doesn't mean that it's like the truth. is It's an opinion to me. Bill, though, shout out to you, man. Let's go to the next one rolling in here. On the Raiders report, remember, if you want to get those questions, comments up here on screen, hashtag Raiders or Super Chat, that way we can get you to here to skip the line. Let's go to Eric Castro. I personally think our best option would be to trade for Fields for a fourth, find a way to get Khalil Mack, draft a corner in the first, and if we still have a second, add to the defense. I mean, if they were to do your plan here, your best option would be trade for Fields for a fourth-round pick. All right, cool. So pick 112, 113. I think it's right there. Out the board, out the window. Get Mac. Let's say it's $20 million a year. So right now the Raiders have $40 million of cap space. You still have an extra $20 million to go out and spend. Draft a corner in the first. To me, that's Terry and Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, maybe a Nate Wiggins, somewhere in there. And then you will still have a second-round pick. Add to the defense. To me, if you're going to add to the defense then, even in the second round... I would go with just best player available, best athlete available, which for the Raiders might actually be at the linebacker position. I know that they like a lot of the linebackers. I also know that they like a lot of the linebackers, though, that are going to be available to you in round three. Let's go with Silver and Fax. What's up, Silver and Fax? I owe 50 push-ups for this one. Let's pump them up, boys. Giggity, want your opinion on which mock you like better, assuming we get Fuller on the first. One. All right. So Fuller on the first one. This is a. This is. I. I think I got it. Um. This is a lengthy, lengthy super chat. So let me just make sure I get this. So, you're saying we get Fuller in round one. That would be Penix in round one. Peyton Wilson pick two. Uh. Charles Hayes offensive guard for um UConn in round three. Zach Zinter offensive lineman from Michigan. Ray Davis in round five or. You're going to say Terry and Arnold, uh, BB, can't Spencer Rattler, Lloyd, and then McCaffrey. Honestly, out of those drafts, I would probably rather the Raiders end up getting, I mean, both are pretty solid. I'm probably actually, though, going to go with the first draft that you had, even though I'm not, I don't love the idea of taking Penix in round one. Like I've, I've said before, I like the idea of taking Spencer Rattler in round three compared to taking a QB in round one. However, I think Peyton Wilson is a perfect fit in Patrick Graham's system. I think Charles Hayes is one of the best offensive linemen. He's an offensive guard coming out from UConn. Zach Zinter is intriguing to me. He's not going to be ready to play this season, but I do think Zinter is one of the best offensive linemen if he was 100% healthy, and he'll be healthy next year. And then you get a solid running back in Ray Davis. So if I had to go between those, I'm probably going to go that route there. I do owe 50 push-ups. Um, I will also say I got to pee really, really bad. So do you have the, would you be able to hang? You think you could hold it down for like a minute while I go take a quick pee? All right, y'all. I want to see some Cullens down below. So for those that don't know, the only person that's really ever been able to challenge Chugs in a boot race is my guy Cullen right here. So what we're going to end up doing here is I'm going to take a quick leak because I already got a pee. I did a boot earlier from Ryan Campbell. And then what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to get back. I'm going to bust out 50 push-ups. Um, and we're going we're gonna to keep this thing going. There's a video right now going viral of Kenny Pickett just housing pizza. He is, and I mean housing pizza. 
Good for Kenny Pickett, man. Good for Kenny Pickett. Um, yeah, so if you want to change the name, you can. If you want to answer questions or if you just want to put up a comment driver, and then I'll just go back and I can answer some of the Super Chats. So how about one free agent that they could sign? If you want to put that one up there. Uh, some news rolling in here. Lil Jordan Humphrey returning to the Broncos on a one-year deal. All right, I'll be back 60 seconds. My man Cohen's going to be here. Do you got a mic? I just want to make sure that you're tapped in. And who do you want the Raiders to sign? Cullen's going to be here hanging out with you all for about 60 seconds. I'll be right back. Cullen, on you. What up, Raider Nation? How are y'all doing? Give me one Raider who you want to sign. We've got some good options left in free agency. Happy to be here for the Raiders report. Let's see what we got in the chat. Dory Jackson. I wouldn't mind that. It's a good corner. T. Higgins, be a good receiver pairing up with Devontae Adams. I don't know if the Raiders would prioritize T. Higgins, but it's a heck of a name. Fuller we talked about earlier. That's a good one. Calvin Ridley, I think he wants to stay in Jacksonville, but not a bad name there. Yeah, seeing a lot of Fullers. What up, Sienna? A lot of Fullers. Mac could be a name. Any of, Really, any of the Chargers. I, I think could be a name, potentially, if they get bought out or whatever. Seen some Bosa, Jonah Williams, Fields Trash. Let's see what we got. Xavier Howard, Eric Armstead, Trey White. It shows, too. Yeah, yeah, basically what you're getting right now. Devin White. Keenan Allen. Welcome, welcome. I appreciate all the welcomes, guys. Appreciate y'all rocking with me. Kayla Witherspoon, Justin Simmons, what up, what up, Fuller, Mack, Howard, Bab Lab, I do want to shout you out, shout out Bab Lab, let's see, Mack is washed, I mean, he had a really great sack game last year, I forget who it was against, but I still think he's got a lot left in the tank. Great hop back up there. And we are back. Shout out to Cullen. If you want to go with like the the mini, like there's like a there's like that little guy up there. If you want to go with that, you're more than welcome. Shout out to Cullen uh, for pulling up here. Alex wants to know who's your team. Cullen is a Seahawks guy, so uh, he's he's down to rock out with his hawk out. That's all I know. Cullen, big uh, big hawk guy. Let's go to Big Word rolling in here. Uh, next guy up. What do you think of Bo Nix after his pro day? Again, I'm, I'm just not going to be a Bo Nix guy. I, get, I, I don't think he's very good. He's a quarterback that, based off conversations that we've had with people from the Combine, is a QB that you should not draft in round one. Any, any NFL team out there shouldn't draft him. Like I'm actually starting to get to a point where I almost I might rank rank Spencer Rattler ahead of Bo Nix. Like I'm just not a Bo guy. I, I don't understand how he's good. I get the fact that he had a good year this past year at Oregon, but to me, I am not confident in his arm strength. I'm not confident in his ability to be able to make NFL reads on a regular basis. And based off of his performance at the combine, based off his performance at pro uh, senior day. I will have to watch a little bit more, I guess, from his, uh, I guess, pro day this past, or yesterday or whatever, but, like, I, I'm just not going to be a Bo Nix guy, guys. Like, there's, I've watched the tape at this point in the offseason. People that are, like, oh, all of a sudden flipping their opinion, I don't see how you could possibly flip your opinion. I have been out on Bo, and I'm not going to get into it anytime soon. I, I don't get it. He's, he's, to me, he is a, you're hoping and I've said this before, you're hoping Bo Nix turns into a low-level starting quarterback in the NFL. I, I, he's a good leader. Not, not going to be him, though. Not going to be him. So let's go. Do we have any more supers we got to go through? I think we rolled through them all, right? Kobe said, bring back Rocky Sin. Did you put that one up on screen? I don't know. I don't know if I answered that one. Somebody said, bring back Rocky Sin from Kobe Bob 24. 
Brock is a good cornerback, okay? But you're looking at another dude, though, that has really, really struggled to stay healthy. Like, he struggled yet again last season to stay healthy. Like, at the end of the day, you do need to be able to have somebody that you can rely on a little bit. And Rock is probably going to get somewhere in like five, six million dollars per year. Maybe he gets a little bit less because of the injury history. But time and time again, like, why am I going to invest in a corner that, unfortunately, Unless he's willing to take a cheap deal. So last season he played in 14 games. So it's actually more than what I thought he played in. 14 games played last season. I just don't think he was on the field all that much. He started one game. Right? So played in 14. Started in only one game. That was on Baltimore. The best defense in the NFL last year. Played for the Raiders 11 games. 13 for the Colts. I mean, he's never played more than 15 games in a season. So the fact that he started only one game last year I think tells you a lot. It would be a very cheap contract for Rock. Now, again, if you're going to bring him in for depth, potentially, but I, I actually don't know if the fit makes sense. Like, the reason why the Raiders did it was because of fit. Now it doesn't really – he didn't fit all that well in Patrick Graham's defense to begin with. Let's go to Miguel. Why can't we try to sign Bosa revenge at the Chokers? Because to me, you can try to sign Bosa, but I'll ask the nation out there, would you rather sign Joey Bosa – or would you rather sign Khalil Mack? Because they're probably going to be somewhere around the exact same. Honestly, I think Bosa might get more. Because, eh, I don't know if that's true. They're, pro they're both probably going to make over $20 million a year, though. Like, if you're the Raiders, why would you sign a guy that you know Max Crosby does not like? Like, I mean, it's been very well put out there that Crosby does not like Joey Bosa. He's even said it on social media before. And if you were going to allocate that much money to just the defensive end position, to the edge rusher position... I'm going to go get Cleo Mack. Like, I'm not going to go get Joey Bosa, who has struggled with injuries probably even more than Mack. It's Mack. It's, uh, it's Mack to me. That's why you don't try to go out there and sign Bosa. Let Bosa go to the 49ers. Let him join his brother. Kind of sounds like that's what they want to even happen anyway. So we got 93 Navman next up here on the Raiders Report. What up, Navman? And then we got a few more rolling in here. I think the D is good with... I think you're saying Christian Wilkins. Do we need to add another offensive weapon? The Raiders will add some more talent. I mean, I, I still think that they're going to add a wide receiver. I don't know if that's going to be in free agency or in the draft. Definitely a position to look at. Tight end's going to be a spot to look at. But then when you say offensive weapon, I think of skill position players. You need to add a right guard. You need to add an offensive tackle. I expect the Raiders add an offensive lineman today in free agency. Dylan Erickson, what's up, man? Josh McDaniel started playing Madden and just got a huge play. 15 yard against on a screen pass to Abdullah on third and 20. He's 0 and 16 currently. Yeah, I mean, if there was one thing you could guarantee on third and long was a screen to Amir Abdullah from McDaniels. I mean, McDaniels was so predictable at times. And if I can sit up here and call out what he's going to do, if you guys can sit there and call out what he's going to do, just imagine what a teams that just scheme for him all week were able to do. We got Brandon Johns. Bring back Josh McDaniels. Oh, you're really trolling here. I, I would rather you bring back McDaniels. I'm not even going to mention Ruggs. I mean, he's he's got to get his life together. He might get another shot in the NFL when he gets out at 27. I mean, if it was up to me, though, I wouldn't allow him back in the NFL. Uh, when you do what he did, sorry, man. It's, it's, it's simply not going to happen. All right, Colin, I got to do 50 push-ups here. So the way that we're going to do this is you can turn that camera that's on you and you can flip it so it's pointing down here. And then that way we're going to just rep them out. And uh, we got some push-ups to do. We got some push-ups to do, which we'll see how this one ends up going down. But appreciate the 50 that came in earlier today on the stream from Silver and Fax. Remember the deals that we got going on today. The deals that we have are every 20 now is going to be a wheel spin and I'll do a jelly bean. Every 500 likes, which we're about 125 likes away right now from playing 2 o'clock. Every 50, since I'm trying to be in a little bit better shape here. Every 50, I got to drop down and give you 50 push-ups. Every hundo, beer bong, and we're banging and you get added to our March race. As it stands right now, Ryan Campbell, the only bang today and he is currently the MVP. After I do these 50 push-ups, I'm going to tell everyone who is in our duck race here, 50-50 raffle because we got a few people that are in the mix here. All right, Cullen. Let's do this. Here we go. All right, I got to do 50. If you guys want to count at home, I don't think I'm going to be able to do all these in one 
go, so I might have to break them up a little bit. Let's do it. Let's count it Just out. Just keep that in mind. Though, again, if we're drinking on the show together, you guys also should have to do some push-ups here with me. <laughs> All right, here we go, Cullen. Let's get it. One, two, three. I'm not going to make four, it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. It's a good pause. <laughs> I'll tell you this, though. I tried to work out a little bit this morning. That might have been a bad choice. <laughs> I tried to at least get a sweat in. It's tough on free agency days, Cole. No, you beat me to work today, which doesn't happen often. <laughs> 31, 32, 33, 34. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Oh, man, I'm in trouble. <laughs> you got some more, man. <laughs> oh, man, this, this might have been a bad choice. I might have bit off more than I could chew. We'll see. All right. I out. might start pulling some worms like chugs. Everybody start spamming Mitch in the chat. Come on now. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, oh, God. 48. Uh, 49. 50. Uh, oh, Christ. That's a, that's a nightmare. <laughs> that's an absolute nightmare. At least, my, at least my leg looks good. <laughs> oh, Christ. That was, I'll tell you what. I don't know. I'm sweating. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't know how many more I'm going to be able to do with that. That's one of those deals that, that might be bad. That, that might be a bad one. <laughs> it's, Hey, it is what it is, though, right? All right, what's up? Um, we got a prize picture read, actually. We got one coming up? Yes. So if you All right, just sounds good. So I'm going to tell everybody who is in our 50-50 raffle here in just a minute. However, um, I do want to tell you about our sponsor here. I'm out of breath <laughs> a little bit, so shout out to Prize Picks. And one of the reasons why I love Prize Picks is it is a lot of fun. Uh, you can win some money on top of that. I think it's super simple to be able to do. All you got to do is choose more or less. Pick two plus players. And if you want to go get started, that link's going to be available to you all in the comments and in the description of today's show. So if you want, go to pricepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first time deposit match up to $100. To me, I like to be able to test my skills. I also like to be able to figure out ways to just entertain myself, right? Like, believe it or not, I don't drink boots when I go home. I don't do push-ups when I go home. And I like prize picks because I can watch a game, right? So it's like I love fantasy sports. People that watch the show know that I've done fantasy football for a long time. It is the largest DFS app in North America. You get daily specials. Like right now, they have a special call in for James Harden. 3.14 points. Harden's going to score more than 3.14 points. That's an easy one. That's an easy one, right? Easy. You get up to a $100 deposit match. They have NFL, NBA, NHL, MLB, UFC. Like, like I'm not a big I – mean, I love UFC. Don't get me wrong. I don't like it as much Chugs does. Like, I don't keep up to, like, the date on, like, stats, all that kind of stuff. But if there's a UFC fight on, I'm going to watch, right? Like, and being able to even do that with prize picks, I think is a lot, a lot of fun. So bottom line is if you're looking to just occupy some time, if you put down five, ten, twenty dollars and you have a chance to win over a hundred bucks, or I'm looking right now at Killer Cruisins, he's got ten down to win seventy. And if you're sitting there watching a game for three hours, you're gonna be locked into that game for three hours. So there's not too many times in today's day and age where you could put down ten bucks, be entertained for thirty or three hours, and you have a chance to win some money. So go give it a shot. That link to you guys again is available down in the comments, and it's gonna be in the description of the video, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Just make sure that you use code CLNS. First time deposit match up to $100. Let's go to Aggressive Master Raider. Not fully extending the arms. <laughs> you know what's funny? Zero per army standard. When I was a kid, my dad, again, is very like old school type of dude. Um, but he used to always put his fist on the ground and my chin you used to have to touch like his fist for it, for it to count. Um, I mean, here's the thing though. I'm not a. I'm not even going to sit up here and act like I could do the military stuff. Though, 
I used to do some Spartan races, like back in, like this is like three, four years ago. We actually, I used to host the show for Spartan, like the, the, the obstacle course. If you guys want to see some crazy videos, look up probably Mitchell Wren's Under the Wire was a show that we used to do here at Chat Sports, again, like four years ago. And uh, they invited me to be able to go try like the, the obstacles and all that. It's unbelievable like some of the shit that they had was insane and i can't even imagine what you guys have to do or a lot of these vets out there army military you guys are laughing at 50 push-ups you guys do that while you're eating a bowl of cereal all right um i do want to give some shout outs here to some people that are in our 50 50 raffle colin if you could put the 20 dollar venmo thing up for me and if you guys want a chance to get in it is a 20 dollar venmo Oh, wait a minute. We got some breaking news here. The Las Vegas Raiders are signing tight end Harrison Bryant on a one-year $3.25 million deal. This has a chance to get up to $4 million. This one's rolling in here from Adam Schefter. I'll talk to you guys about all of the uh, people getting in that duck race here in just a second. But the Raiders do have a deal. It is done right now. And the reason why I think that you're going to go out and you're going to get a guy like Harrison Bryant, it's because I said it earlier. You needed one, a Austin Hooper replacement, and two, you need somebody that is a cheap overall player that also has some of that ability to be able to go out there and to be able to block. So the Raiders, it is officially official. They have signed Harrison Bryant, who last season started nine games for the Cleveland Browns, and he's been in the NFL since 2020. Had 13 catches last year, only 81 yards, and uh, that's he's a blocker. Like that, That's what he's going to be able to bring to the table here for the Raiders, and that is something that they were looking for, which, again, was the route that I thought that they were going to go. I thought that maybe this, this position could have been somebody like a Mercedes Lewis, but the fact that you're willing to offer $3.25 million, I don't think that that's all that much money for your second string tight end that is going to get some playing time experience. But again, this is more just for being able to add a veteran tight end that can block. He's been in the NFL for four seasons at this point. He's got 30 games that he has started in his NFL career. He's played 65 games in total. Career has, what is it, 89 grabs, 791 yards, 10 touchdowns. He did have three touchdowns last season on 13 catches. He also had four first downs. So somebody probably like just extend the chains here a little bit. But from top to bottom, what you guys are going to get here on today's show is now we're going to be breaking down the move of the Raiders signing Harrison Bryant. I'm going to tell you why they ended up doing it, but this is why you subscribe. Like every time that a breaking story happens, that's good. That's fine. That's good enough. Anytime breaking news happens, we got you covered here. So hit that subscribe button. Make sure those notifications are turned on because Bryant signing this one-year deal worth up to it. He can make up to $4 million. 3.25 is just insurance. The Raiders, before today started, they had Michael Mayer and Zach Gentry. That's it. Those were the only tight ends on their roster. So now the fact that you add Bryant, that gives you that tight end too, which the plan all along, if I'm Las Vegas and based on some of the players that they met with at the Combine is, now you're targeting a tight end on day three. Like, do you target a guy like Theo Johnson, who they met with at the Combine? And then that's your tight end number three there. You can decide maybe what you want to do with Gentry, or you could just outright cut Zach Gentry. And that's going to save you one point, I want to say $2 million if you do that. Harrison Bryant is really just a blocker. I've, I've said before, if the Raiders want to go out and they want to add a, let's say, if you have 10 targets, right? 10 tight end targets. I want all 10 of those to go to Michael Mayer, maybe nine go to Mayer, and then you throw in one here with Harrison Bryant. What I want to know, though, down below is one year, $3.25 million. I want you to grade it, A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know down below what you guys are thinking. The Raiders have signed tight end Harrison Bryant, which if you're going to run a Luke Getze offense, you're going to run a lot of two tight end sets. You're going to run a lot of two tight end sets. So uh, I do want to try to get this cut here. So we're going to end up getting this cut here around Harrison Bryant. So what's going to be coming up here on today's show is I'm going to be breaking down everything that there is to know about the Raiders, about Harrison Bryant. I'll give you my grade after I see some of y'all's grades starting to roll in here. But I'm telling you, today's going to be an eventful day. Like, I promise you today is going to be a very, very eventful day here for the Silver and Black. Cloud's going to say B. Queen Sarah Auto, B. Bean is going to roll with a B as well. Daniel Jimenez also saying a B grade. So I'm going to make a quick video here that I can put out on my IG. 
just so you guys know. Got some breaking news here. The Las Vegas Raiders are signing tight end Harrison Bryant. It is a one-year deal at $3.25 million. He can make up to $4 million. This is a very smart move here by Antonio Pierce, by Tom Telesco, because you're able to go out and get a blocking tight end. In his career, he's played in over 60 games, has started about 30. He's not much of a receiving threat, but you already have Michael Mayer. When you enter today, the only tight ends that were on your roster were... Michael Mayer and Zach Gentry. So now you go out, you add an extra tight end to this roster, and if I'm Las Vegas, I'm still trying to target a tight end on day three. One of the tight ends that I want you to keep in mind is Theo Johnson. They met with him at the NFL Combine. So overall, this is a smart move. It's not a blockbuster type of deal, but I promise you this, today is going to be an eventful day here around the Raiders. We're live all day. We've been partying up here on the show, so hit that subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed to the Raiders Report, give me a follow on IG at Mitchell Renz. 365, keeping you up to date on all things going on around Las Vegas. But Harrison Bryant, welcome to the nation. So Harrison Bryant is the newest member here of the Las Vegas Raiders. And I want to know what the grade of that signing is. Are you confident to do a cut? Because I want to get a cut going. So maybe if you want to just hop out there, figure out what the plan is, and then that way we can get this cut going here. Harrison Bryant, though, signed to the Raiders. If you haven't already, y'all, this is why you subscribe. Raiders signed tight end. I got to put this out on social media. Tight end, Harrison Bryant. That is the deal. Here we go. Harrison Bryant, A, B, C, D, or F. I will say I am seeing a lot of Bs, seeing a lot of Cs down there below. It'll be, uh, again, it's not a sexy pick, but not every sexy pick that you do, like, it's not going to get major headlines. This is a smart move by the Raiders. You add a reliable tight end that does not break the bank for you that can block. Block, and he's a big target. Like, he's a really, really big target. I want to say, yeah, he's 6'5", 230 pounds. So somebody that does have some end zone ability, somebody that's going to be able to help you extend some first downs. And when you have... a uh, offensive coordinator like Luke Getze, you're going to have to use two tight end sets. Like He's going to want to go out there. You're going to need tight ends that need to be able to block, and that's what Brian's going to be able to do, which frees up the scene for some other players here all around. This is the first move of many today. Raiders sign a tight end. Man, oh man, I'm telling you what, today is going to be an eventful day. I'm excited. I am very excited to see what ends up going down today. Though, how many moves do you guys think the Raiders end up making today? If you had to guess, how many moves do you think the Raiders end up making today? Raiders sign Harrison Bryant. Let's go. Let's freaking go, man. First move of the day. How are we feeling, nation? How are we feeling? They signed a tight end, the first move of the day. First move of the day. Today's going to be eventful. Today's going to be eventful day. What's up, Coop? What's up, Coop? All right, y'all, so coming up here, let's get into this breaking news of the Raiders signing Harrison Bryant. Uh, it's Manscaped. Manscaped is the sponsor. If you guys want to party and celebrate, click that like button. Not all moves are the sexy moves. That doesn't make this not a strong move. I will give you my grade. Obviously, if you're listening to this live, you can probably tell that I am okay with it. But this is depth. This is depth. This is them planning in the proper way. This is them doing the smart thing of just getting a solid backup tight end for the main guy in Michael Mayer. Uh, I mean, I'll take anything I can get, but... It if you want to give me a list four, Cat, that'll probably be good. I mean, i kind of been reading off some of his stats anyway. I see Irvin says Kendall Fuller should be on the next of our radar. Yeah, the cornerback position is definitely a position that I want the Raiders to be able to get. When I put out my video earlier today, I said that I want the Raiders to go find a blocking tight end, and that's what Bryant's going to be able to bring here to the table. And, like, when the Raiders – not Raiders – when the Browns originally got Harrison Bryant, if you guys remember, like – he started to get more playing time over David and Joku because of the regime that they, that they had at the time. Wanted to really run the football a lot more. And what's not, not a David and Joku, uh, Austin Hooper. 
because the Browns signed Austin Hooper, and then Harrison Bryant came into the mix and was starting to get playing time over Hooper, even over David Njoku because of his ability to block, where Hooper and Njoku, they're not known to be blockers. So Bryant kind of came onto the scene pretty quickly when he first got some opportunities early on for the Cleveland Browns. Like in his rookie season, started in the nine games, had 24 grabs, three touchdowns. He's uh, never had more than 31 catches in a season, and he's had he's got 10 receiving touchdowns in four years. Again, you're looking at really just a red zone, maybe first down. So he's going to get a few first downs this season. He's on the team to block. This is a blocking tight end type of move here. All right, y'all, if you haven't yet, click that like button. Click that like button. PJ says a potential Devontae Adams replacement. No. <laughs> If this is our replacement for Devontae Adams, we might as well just close up shop right now and I'll see you all next year. Um, <laughs> that's not going to happen. That, uh, that's not going to happen. Smasher says, could have picked up a blocking tight end in the later round or a restricted pick in the draft. I mean, I'm not saying he's just a, like, he's not just a blocker, though. He does at least give you some ability to be able to catch the football. He's a good athlete. Like, he is a good athlete at the tight end position. So I agree that you're still probably going to draft a tight end which they still should absolutely do, especially because I do anticipate that Luke Getze does implement a lot of this tight end structure here, but I'm, I'm okay with the move. I, not all moves are going to be sexy. Sometimes you got to build an overall roster. All right, Coop's giving me the thumbs up here. Coming up, let's get into the latest and the breaking news of the Las Vegas Raiders signing Harrison Bryant. Raider Nation, it's Mitchell Rents here, host of the Raiders Report. And before we get into the breaking news of the Las Vegas Raiders signing tight end Harrison Bryant, I got to talk about today's show sponsor. I love me some Manscaped. And if you're looking for the best male grooming products out there, go to manscaped.com, use code Raiders for 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. My pledge to you during free agency, I'm going to be live all day, every day. So if you're not already here, pull up to our live stream. My other pledge is this, when the Raiders make a move, you're getting a video here. I made a video yesterday when the Raiders got Kanai Malga. I don't know, see many people that did that. Harrison Bryant now joining the silver and black roster on a one-year $3.25 million deal. He can make up to $4 million if he hits some of his incentives. But if you're wondering, Mitch, why should I subscribe to the Raiders report? This is why right now. I know today is going to be an insane day. Today is going to be filled with lots and lots of moves here around the silver and black. They're going to be cutting Jimmy Garoppolo. They're going to be cutting Hunter Renfro. They're going to be close to be getting $21.6 million in money today. They're going to be close to $40 million in total for the salary cap as today started. Now with the signing of Bryant, let's say that number's down still at 37. A lot, a lot of other needs for Tom Telesco, for Antonio Pierce, and they still have a lot of other needs that they need to address. I don't want you to miss it, so make sure you're subscribed. So one of the things that I like to do here on this show, and we'll get into some of the numbers. I'll get into why I like the move and why I expected a move very similar to this. But one of the things that I love to do here is I want to know what you guys have to say. I know Raider Nation is a passionate fan base. I'm a passionate human being myself. I also like to talk. And I want you guys to not be afraid here to give me your grade. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So I want you to scroll on down. Give me your grade. A, B, C, D, or F. Grade the signing of Harrison Bryant. My grade here is a C plus. I think it's a average slightly above average type of move. Like, I'm not going to sit up here and say Harrison Bryant's going to be a great tight end too. He is a blocking tight end. One of the reasons why over the past, I'll say, month and a half since the Raiders have hired Luke Getze, I've been sitting up here saying it wouldn't surprise me if they went out and they signed Mercedes Lewis because Mercedes Lewis has bounced around with Getze from the Packers to the Bears, but he was used as a blocking tight end. That's what Harrison Bryant is going to be. He is going to be the main blocking tight end. That way, Michael Mayer can be the main receiving option. But also, Bryant does have the ability, and he's a big target at 6'5", 230 pounds, where he can still go up and get the football if he's needed. Like, I see Bryant being used in the red zone from a catching standpoint or picking up a first down. This past season with the Browns was kind of a weird one, though, because they had so many different quarterbacks moving in and out. Only 13 catches. He did have three touchdowns. I really look at the 2022, 2021, and 2020 season, and the reason why that I look at those two years is because the Browns put in a pretty big concentration on trying to fight tight ends. Remember, they, they ended up taking 
uh, David Njoku, Austin Hooper at one point was a member of the Cleveland Browns, and Bryant was getting run with the starters. And when you look at some of the numbers here of him starting in general, I mean, 65 games played, started in 30 games. And the reason why he was getting starts with the Cleveland Browns was because not that he was a better athlete than David Njoku, not because he was a better pass catcher than Austin Hooper, but the way that they ran that offense, you needed to have another tight end out there on the field that was at least an option to catch the ball, but their main reason to be out there was to block. If the Raiders want to be this bad boy team, then it sounds like they want to be this, hey man, when you play us, you're going to feel it. Adding a tight end like Brian who has that athletic ability that also is going to be a solid blocker, it's a C-plus move. Not an outstanding move, but it is an above average move. And not all moves can be sexy. But you know what? You guys can be sexy with our sponsor here, Manscaped. And if you haven't already, go to manscaped.com. Use code Raiders for 20% off and free shipping. Usually the lawnmower 5.0 costs 100 bucks. With our discount, you can get it for 80 That's just simple math right there. Also, the uh, luck of the Irish. Do you believe in it? Whether you do, whether you don't, I know this. I know I'm not getting lucky if I get that opportunity and Alex looks down there and my little leprechaun here is just surrounded in a patch of clover fields. I don't want that to happen. If I do get lucky enough, guess what? I want to actually be able to get to that pot of gold, chase that rainbow. And I do think Manscaped has the best male grooming products out there. I've been using Manscaped now for four years and they've never let me down. So I think if you're a guy like me and you're like, you know what, man? I want to be able to look good, whether it's a beard trimmer, whether it's the most comfortable box that you've ever worn, whether it's their below-the-kilt care. Manscaped's here to hook up the nation, and hopefully you can remember code Raiders because that way that tells Manscaped that, hey, I saw this on the Raiders report, and believe it or not, it does help me out a lot. So one more time, that link's available to you all down in the comments and down in the description of today's show. Shout out to Manscaped for sponsoring the Raiders report. Honestly, looking at this face by Harrison Bryant, there's a really good chance that this guy manscapes. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty damn confident that Harrison Bryant manscapes. There's not a doubt in my mind anymore, if I'm being 100% honest with you. So when you look at now an updated look at some of the Raiders' moves that they have made, Amir Abdullah was like the first, I guess, like re-signing that they had on a one-year, $1.85 million deal. I don't know who makes these graphics, but we are still missing a name that I want to be able to get in there. Andre James, he's a center. Maybe we should update that one as well. Three-year, $24 million deal. He's getting $16 million guaranteed. Christian Wilkins was like the big-time signing at defensive tackle on a four-year, $110 million deal. He ended up getting like $85 million of guaranteed money. Gardner Minshew signed a two-year, $25 million deal with $15 million guaranteed. The, the deal, the move that the Raiders made yesterday that didn't really get a lot of headlines, but we did still make a video on it, was they re-signed linebacker Kanai Malga. No contract details yet on that. And not expecting a lot of money. But now the up-to-date move that the Raiders have made, the most recent one, is going out and signing Harrison Bryant to a one-year deal at $3.25 million that can get up to $4 million. I don't know what the exact incentives are yet. I'm not anticipating that it's going to be anything all that crazy. It's probably if he plays in all these games, per game bonus, maybe a workout bonus thrown in there a little bit. But today is going to be a wild day, right? Like, I mean, it's going to be a wild, wild day. And I know some people probably recognize the name Austin Hooper. Look at Harrison Bryant as an upgrade over Austin Hooper. And I mean that. Like, I still think Hooper's a better pass catcher. But Bryant's a much, much better blocker. Like, I get why they did this. It was smart to go out and add a blocking tight end. Not all moves are people are going to be like, oh, wow, like, that's a breaking news type of video. This is a good football move. This is a smart team trying to continuously build this offensive line, continuously trying to find extra depth pieces that can help them achieve their ultimate goal, and that's building a, a great team, especially when you also consider the fact that the Raiders' offensive line is a little bit of a question mark right now. Like, sure, on the left side of the offensive line, you got Colton Miller, Dylan Parham, Andre James, but then your right side is a lot of question marks, and that's part of it. So knowing that you might have some extra question marks at the offensive line position, yes, they're confident there, Munford. Doesn't mean he's going to be a great player out there, right? And there's some good offensive guard tackle talent in the draft, in free agency, all that. But until those dudes are actually on your team, what's another thing you could do? Secure the offensive line by adding a blocking tight end like Harrison Bryant. So now that we know that the Raiders have brought in Bryant, I'm going to say that there's somewhere around, let's say, $37 million in cap space, right? This is me just basing it off of where the Raiders were this morning, the Raiders moving on, and the deals that will officially be moving on from today is Jerry Tillery, Brian Hoyer, 
uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, Hunter Renfro, and now you're going to have somewhere around, let's say, $37 million to spend. My question to you is, who should the Raiders sign next? There's a lot of names out there. I know people are going to be like, oh, wait, what about Khalil Mack? He's not released yet. If he gets released, I would uh, I'd at least be willing to like kick the tires on it and see how much he goes for. To me, though, the one position that I really, really want the Raiders to get today is a number one corner, especially because Antonio Pierce called it a priority. So I'm talking like Xavier Howard, maybe a Kendall Fuller and a Dory Jackson, a Killer Willerspoon. You could even throw in there. Those are the players that I personally would like the Raiders to sign next. Or if you want to spend big at right guard, Kevin Zeitler would be a pretty interesting name to at least entertain. Now, I am putting out a lot, a lot of content today. I am live here on YouTube, but I'm also putting out tweets, updating stuff on Instagram as well. And if anybody wants to just say, you know what, this guy on YouTube, he ain't half bad. If you want more of me, guess what? Instagram, Twitter, I am literally Mitchell Renz 365 everywhere. And if you're like, you know what, I'm not doing anything. I'm chilling at work today. You want to come ball? We're about to be balling out here on the Raiders report. All right, grade the signing of Bryant A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know. Let me know. This is an upgrade. Like, I, I legitimately think Harrison Bryant is an upgrade over Austin Hooper based on what the Raiders need. Like, that's, I mean, it is. If you're looking for a, a pass catcher, that's not what Harrison Bryant is. He can catch the football. But in just what the roles were on the Raiders, Austin Hooper, Harrison Bryant, I look at this as an upgrade. I really, really, truly do. I see a C from Big Aaron, C from Boss, C from another person. We got Perry the Ickles. B minus. Nicholas is going to go with a B. I see Aiden K says B. Uh, Caleb said uh, if we get Khalil Mack, he's going to cry. You're not the only one. There's going to be a lot, a lot of Raider fans. That would be probably the biggest story that I have done in a long time. I mean, I, I legitimately think that if the Raiders signed Khalil Mack, it would be just as big as the Raiders trading for Devontae Adams. Like, that's how big it would be. Do you think that's... It's a non-zero chance it happens. I think it's a non-zero chance. Yeah. I mean, you, you have a fan base that rallies behind Khalil that they never wanted to get rid of anyway. And if Antonio Pierce, you know, carries that, like, he's a Raider mentality, I think every person that bleeds silver and black, there's a part of you that's like, yeah, you know, it might not be a big need. Yeah. But if I, I'll take Khalil Mack back. Like, it's, it's like in your heart. It's like in your heart of hearts of something that you would want. Also, like, if you're trying to build one of the most dominant defensive lines of all time, that's not a problem. And the guy that traded for Khalil Mack was Tom Telesco when he was with yeah, the Chargers. Yeah, I forgot about that connection. That's true. So, like, I, I'm not saying it's... He's still got gas left in the tank, too. He had 17 sacks last exactly. season. I mean, I don't know how much it's going to cost. I said, if you're Khalil Mack, you probably try to get a deal close to what, like, Daniil Hunter got. Yeah. For the Raiders, you know, are you going to pay that much money for an edge? $24 million a year? $24 million a year. You also have Malcolm Kuntz, who I know Malcolm's not Khalil, but Kuntz was really, really good down the stretch of last season. You signed Christian Wilkins. You have your number seven overall pick, Tyree Wilson, and then Max Crosby. I mean, that's a lot of mouths to feed. No, no doubt. Though, if your front was between Max Crosby, Christian Wilkins, Tyree Wilson, Malcolm Kuntz, Khalil Mack, you're going to be able to have an insane rotation. And you can't really ever have, I think, too many... Um, at least too many guys going after that. So I just see a deal. Commanders signing Pro Bowl special teamer Jeremy Reeves. It's actually a low key, pretty good move. Jeremy Reeves. Jeremy Reeves going to the Commanders. But uh, I I think if Khalil Mack signed with the Raiders, it would it would break the internet. At least the Raiders internet. That third down like NASCAR package where you can just have all four pass rushers out there would be sick. I, I mean, if, if even if you did some, if you brought that in, I would figure out a way then, like, this might be an interesting take. The Raiders last year, they signed a guy named Marquand McCall, okay? He's 6'8", 380 pounds. Jesus. If you put McCall and Christian Wilkins on the nose, and then you put Max Crosby on one side, and then you put Khalil Mack and Malcolm Kuntz on the other. Five, five D lineman and Let's just go it. at it on like third down yeah. or something. Like if it's third and long, good luck. Yeah, seriously, that would be sick. I mean, good luck. It, yeah, and I guess you could because Mac and Crosby don't play on the same side either, so they could be on the same on the field at the same time. I mean, shit. Imagine though, just put them on the same side one time, Khalil and Max. I'm getting excited. I'm glad you guys can't see what's going on underneath this table right now. I'm uh, Manscaped. I'm, I'm getting pretty excited. But yes, shout out to the scape. 
I'll also say this. We are six likes away from a little tune o'clock action here. So what does that mean? Tune o'clock is shot clock. Okay. Tune o'clock is shot clock. And I think Coop and I are ready to get down. I'm in. I got Jeremel, Raiderway, Scott. I believe they're going to take Penix in the first round if they can't get Jaden. That's the way they took Gardner Minshew's stew just in case Penix gets hurt. Not a big meat stew I would have preferred. There's a lot of innuendos, I think, going on in here. I see what you're saying about you would have rather preferred Russell Wilson. I don't know if a lot of the players in the locker room wanted Russell Wilson, so like that could have been a big determining factor. I do think Wilson is a better quarterback than what Gardner Minshew is, and I think one of the reasons why they did pay Minshew the amount of money that they did is because the quarterbacks that I would say that they're targeting right now, if you're targeting Jaden Daniels, people are all scared that he's going to be an injury-prone quarterback because of how thin he is. Michael Penix Jr. has his own injury concerns, no doubt about that. And then even like a guy like J.J. McCarthy... He's not ready to go right away, so do you hand the keys to Gardner Minshew? And then Gardner has groomed some young quarterbacks before. I mean, he did it this past year with Anthony Richardson. And then you just, like, he's a he's a good quarterback to have that's been in the situation that the Raiders are going to try to put him in. So I, I get the deal. I don't love the deal, but I, I get why they did it. Let's go to 93. Nation only hiring bruisers. I love it. What about you, Mitch? It's a good move. It's not a sexy move, but it's a smart football move. You win football in the trenches, and with it, and Harrison Bryant, one of the best blocking tight ends in the league. It's one of those things where, you know, if the Raiders want to act like the bad boys, right? Like, if you want to be the team that, like, think of, like, when teams played the Eagles last year, the 49ers, and you would hear, like, all right, guys were sore. Like, yeah. they knew after that football game, it was a tough physical game. I mean, people would say the same thing even with, like, Mike Vrabel teams. When you play the Raiders next year, you're going to feel it. And that's like what I think Antonio Pierce wants. That you can have speed, you can have all these things, but sometimes the tougher team wins. Absolutely. Sometimes the tougher it, team wins. That, that's football. What do you got? Okay, I'll get some food then. Later. Oh. Sausage as well. I got you. No, I, okay. Okay, cool, cool. I appreciate that. Let's go to my man, Dylan. If the Raiders sign Mac, they better go all in and QB. What does all in at QB mean? Jaden Daniels. All in at QB, I think, to the nation is figuring out a way to trade up to three. Okay. The problem is, though, it's I, I legitimately don't think it happens before the draft. Like, I don't see the Raiders trading up. I, I said originally that if a trade were to happen, I could see it going down at the combine. If it didn't happen at a combine, at the combine, I don't see it happening in between. Well, the issue is that the Patriots are in just much of need as a QB as the Raiders are. And the Commanders. And, and the, the Commanders, Bears. exactly. So, like, that's that problem. And the nation isn't too keen on fields, I assume? I'd say it's very split on fields. Okay. Like, where, you know, Antonio Pierce said that he doesn't want a Band-Aid at the quarterback position. They want a franchise guy for the next 10 years. I do think that Fields has upside. Like, I am willing to bet on Fields' upside because I do think that he can be a, a good quarterback in the NFL. However, though, do you think Justin Fields is good enough to win a Super Bowl? Like, that's the question that comes in. And because of that pause there... No, like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm I, Like, if you're going to go all in... Like, I think Justin Fields is a better quarterback than they've had since prime Derek Carr. But what is that uh, saying? No, I, I think with Justin Fields, the Raiders are a playoff team. Yeah, I think, I'd agree. I would agree I with that. I think they probably win. If they went 8-9 and nine last season, you add Justin Fields, they're, they're getting to 10 wins. Yeah. They're getting to 10 wins. And then if this defense is as legit as what it is, there's a part of me that wonders, like if I'm Antonio Pierce and I try to run, like all these NFL teams, it's a copycat league, which I get. Everybody's looking for that big-name quarterback like the Patrick Mahomes, the Joe Burrow, the air-it-out type of offense. What if you do what the Baltimore Ravens have done, where you go, you know what? I'm going to rely on a running quarterback. I'm going to go with a very run-heavy type of offense, and then I'm going to rely on my defense. Yeah, that's true. The only problem with that is, with Fields, is his style is conducive to injuries. He's been hurt every single year. He's missed time. So if he misses time, and then you have Gardner Minshew as your backup, you have to change the entire offense when, yep. he's, in, when he's in. So I agree. I, that's a that's a definitely an interesting conundrum for Luke Getze, and I know there wasn't Getze and Fields didn't really get along much last year. So, I mean, the the other reason why, and I'm glad you kind of brought up what you did about you know the backup role. 
I kind of said that before where literally what you just mentioned there is what Gardner Minshew did last season. So their offense yeah, with the, Richardson. In, the offense that the Indianapolis Colts ran was the run first offense. And then they had to switch it all up for Gardner Minshew and he handled it well and they were almost in the playoff. No so that's like that's like the Justin Fields why you would bring in Fields. I though still sit up here and I go, what if Michael Penix Jr. can be a franchise guy? What if Spencer Rattler can be a guy? Like I know, yeah. I know you're like, eh. I mean, if, I'm not sold on Bo Nix. You're not going to sell me on Bo. I, you can get value. Like, I think if you can get Rattler in the fourth, you can do worse than that. Ooh, I don't think he's gone in the fourth anymore. You think it's it's earlier than that? I think he goes earlier than that. I don't. If if I'm the Raiders, I think <sighs> Daniels is probably the move that would be the home run move. Yeah, I mean that's the deal. That's the person I think people want because of his connections with Antonio Pierce. However, though, I, 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 it's hard for me to sit up here and figure out a way that, uh, that they get him. Uh, we got some breaking 49ers news. Kyle Juszczyk, back to San Francisco. Back to SF, Kyle Juszczyk. That's Juszczyk. not shocking. Huh? I said that's not shocking. Not shocking, but that's a, that's a good player for them to be able to keep. What's up? You're coming back? Coming back into the realm? What up, Raider 34 Life? Yo, Mitch, I'm behind on free agents left, especially running backs. What is our plan? Do we go running back in the first two rounds of the draft or stick with white and backups? I don't think that either of the things that you said is going to happen. I mean, realistically, there's not many running backs that I think... I mean, there's no running backs that are going to go in round one. That I can promise you. Running backs in round two, there might be one or two. If I'm the Raiders, I'm targeting a running back in like round four or five is probably the area that I would target it. Because I know Zamir White's at least good enough to where if I'm thinking about a backfield, right? If I'm the Raiders right now, I think about a backfield. I'm thinking of three, let's, let's call it 300 to 350 touches at the running back position. That's a lot of touches. I get it. You need to be in the lead, and if the Raiders are going to lean on their defense, I anticipate 300 to 350 running back touches. I am confident that Zamir White can at least handle 175 to 200 of them. Amir Abdullah is probably going to pitch in for 20 or 30, right? So that means then I'm just looking for another, let's just call it 125, 150 touches at the running back position, which even is a lot for that. I'm looking at a Marshawn Lloyd. He can handle that workload. A Ray Davis. He can handle that workload. I, you're not going to find a bell cow back because then you are going to have to probably go up for him a little bit. But if Telesco's words are true, which I think it's kind of stayed true to his word, it is based on he, him saying back at the combine that he thinks the running back position, the backfield, should be between two to three running backs. So the two to three running back thing that I just explained there does fit to what he's saying. The other running back that I am curious about is Sincere McCormick. Uh, that's a person that I know the nation likes a lot. That's been Graf's guy for quite some time. He does have a lot of talent out of UTSA. He was injured last season, so didn't really get a lot of run. I mean, what if he's good, right? Like, you don't know what he's got. I just think the running back position is the easiest position in the NFL right now to be able to replace. So running back first two rounds, no. I also don't think that they just stick with Zamir White in the backups. Let's go to Raider J. With free agency possibilities, which makes the most sense? Fuller at corner or Armstead at defensive tackle or Mac at edge? Is there a situation to get two from the above? I'd say the situation that makes the most sense. What? I mean, maybe. Uh, we actually do have a news here around a player that I talked about earlier. Jordan Whitehead is signing a two-year deal with the Buccaneers. Two-year uh, max value of $10.5 million. Jordan Whitehead going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I would say that Fuller at corner is makes the most sense because you still need a cornerback one on this team. Hobbs is going to play in the slot. Jack Jones is a cornerback two. Pierce called to the priority, so I'd say Fuller would be there. I, I would say both Armstead and Mack are probably equally... Armstead would be a really good fit on the interior defense. I guess that would, it would be how much confidence do you have in Tyree Wilson to play defensive tackle? If you're not super sold on that idea, then you try to bring in Armstead. If you're like, no, Tyree Wilson can do it. But then I'd say the exact same thing about Malcolm Koontz. Like Armstead and Mack, I would look at as luxury items where it's kind of like when I talk to Alex of wants and needs. There are certain things that we need 
to buy at Target. There are certain things that you want to buy at Target. Armstead and Mac are wants. Fuller is a need. So, and I'm sure there's some guys out there like, I get that reference at Target. Target is a deadly place for Alex and I. I I'm actually surprised we don't, we're not going to get married inside of Target. Uh, just right there. That, that's where it's going to be. All right, I haven't mentioned this yet, so I'm going to do it now. Of all the people that are in our 50-50 raffle here, because it's been a minute since I've been able to even give some shout-outs here. So uh, we got, as it stands right now, and remember, whoever was the first person in, I said that you would get two or you'd get an extra entry in our duck race. So if you want a chance to get in, $20 Venmo at Mitchell Rents 365 And you know what? It's 1245 now. I want to do this first duck race in 15 minutes. First duck race is going to be in 15 minutes. First name that I see in is Johnny Caldera. So Johnny Caldera, you in. I'm going to put you in twice, my man. I see Tim Gatlin or Tim Gallatin is going to be in here. I got Robert Applebee's is in. Mo Chavez. Dude, what if what if the owner of Applebee's is watching right now? I've never seen somebody with the last name of Applebee's. If the owner of Applebee's his name is Robert, I'm going to lose my mind. I see Mo Chavez again. All right, wait. We got Applebee, the Mo Chav. I see Joe Maldonado. Mr. Cameron Abbott, a freaking legend in these streets here. I'm going to refresh my phone because I did see a few more that just started to roll in here a little bit. Rob Fravor. So as it stands right now, $20 Venmo, uh, you'd have the opportunity to win $80 here on the Raiders Report. I do think it's also an important time to mention because we still have some spots left. We are doing a March Madness duck race style of tournament here at the Raiders Report. And the way that this is going to end up going down is the first 64 people that Venmo me $50 at Mitchell Renz 365. We are going to take the six, first 64 people, do a March Madness bracket. And for example, it could be like Jason EB up against Trivan, 1v1 duck race. Winner of that duck race advances to the round of 32. We're going to rank you guys in seeds 1 to 16. It's going to be very random. But the winner of that March Madness duck race tournament is going to win $1,600. And on top of that, you're also going to be able to be in Jeremy and I's March Madness bracket, like Tology, for the actual March Madness bracket. So we're, uh, we're going to be having a lot of fun. It's only going to be the first 64 people, though. First 64 people. And right now we have 21 people in. So we do still have plenty of spots. But I'm telling you this, they're going to, like when, when Christian Wilkerson signed, Christian Wilkerson, uh, Christian Wilkins signed, we ended up getting like 12 or 13 of those. If any more breaking news happens, that's going to fill up really quick. What do you got for me, Chuggy Bull? Correct. Once we get to 167,000 subscribers, we're giving away 100 bucks today. And it's going to be to some random person in the chat. I don't know who it's going to be. Um, I will say I'd probably, not even one person in the chat, I, I'm going to have to have your Venmo or a dollar. I'll, or we'll pick somebody in the chat, and if you have Venmo, I'll say send me a dollar, confirm, and then I'll send you the dollar back plus the, I'll send you 101 bucks. Yeah. I mean, I got to, I, I can't just pick somebody and then I, I'm not going to mail them $100. It's going to be on Venmo if it ends up happening. So once we get to 167,000 subs today, I'm giving away 100 bucks. If you like, if you want a chance to get in, hit that subscribe button. I can promise you this. You're not going to get it. You're not going to win if you're not subscribed. That I know. Um, all right. Let me see a few more names that I just see that just got in here. I see Joel Foster is in. We see Troy Maldonado is in. Raider Ray, you in. Joseph Dotson is in. Hunter Mal Malohan is in. And then Stephen Pierce is in for the March Madness. I like it, Mr. Pierce. I should mention that you can only get one entry into the March Madness, just so you guys know. 
So now we have 22 people in our March Madness bracket, 13 people in this duck race as it stands right now. So $20 Venmo, you'd have a chance to win right now $130 here on the Raiders Report. We got some super chats that we need to roll through. Also, Jeremy, we did just hit 1,500 likes. So, 2 o'clock. 60 second, 2 o'clock. I also got to tell you this. We switched up the Super Chat menu. So the new Super Chat menu is 20 is for a wheel spin and a jelly bean. We had so many wheel spins, and we weren't really able to keep up with it. I think it was a little overwhelming. So we, we had to switch it up a little bit here, just, just so you know. Just so you know. Gilmore is there. How much are we going to spend in the draft? Gilmore is there. How much are we going to spend in uh, uh, that's what I thought, but I was like, he's obviously not in the draft. Um, Stephon Gilmore, I would say, is probably going to be around $10, $11 million a year. I mean, he had a good, solid season this past year for the Dallas Cowboys. I do think he would be a fit. However, if the Raiders spend big at corner, I don't know if it would be on Stephon Gilmore. Maybe I'm wrong in saying that, but Gilmore can still play. He would, he'd probably sign a one-year type of deal. I just If I'm going to spend $10 million plus at the cornerback position, I'd rather just spend the extra whatever and go get Kendall Fuller but maybe I'm wrong in that what oh no good no bueno I might uh I'll eat it if you're not gonna eat it, I'll eat it I'll throw some of that in there and we'll be good if you're not gonna eat it I'll eat it I'll eat it later what kind of salad is it though a Walford with grilled white chicken meat oh uh, you put apples in it you're a big apple and salad guy Oh, okay. Alex is a big Apple fan. I'm okay. I'm the Waldorf. It's from Trader Joe, so it's got to be good. I trust it. I trust it. Should we? Uh, oh, it is two o'clock. Every ten is a shot. Just so you guys know, every ten is a shot. Should we go all in and get pick one for Jaden? It's the Bears to me aren't trading pick number one. I don't see them trading it, and I, I think at this point. It would legitimately cost three first-round picks, three second-round picks, a player like Malcolm Koontz and Jacoby Myers, and then maybe even some more picks on top of that. Like, it would cost so much to get them. And it would, it would just cost so much to get them. It's the truth. It would. Silverwolf. Appreciate it. Carlos. Looks like I got off scot-free. People, I wanted Robert Tanyan for the Raiders at tight end. But Harrison Bryant fills the need for less money. Agreed. 100% agree. I had Robert Tanyan as a name to at least consider because of his connections with Luke Getze. But between Tanyan or Harrison Bryant, I would have picked Harrison Bryant. The reason why I haven't really talked about him is because I thought the route that they were going to go was going to be Mercedes Lewis because Mercedes Lewis has been that big blocking tight end that they have just continuously looked at with Getze. He's followed him around. Instead, though, you go with Harrison Bryant, you're going to pay a little bit more, to, more money than what you would have given Mercedes. It's a good move, though. Like, this is a smart, intelligent move by the Raiders, giving Harrison Bryant one year $3.25 million. I also saw Tuna, Mr. Brandon Jasper, the great one. Tuna clock, you say. It's my favorite. Shout out to the great Tuna. The great Tuna. John Hall. That is a jelly bean, and that is a wheel spin. Trade for Legereus Sneed. I think the Queef said a second-round pick for him. Trade back in the first for Penix in the late first and maybe get a second-round pick back. So if all it cost was a second-round pick for Legereus Sneed, yeah, I would do it, and I would pay him over $20 million per year. I don't think that's all it costs. And, and maybe I didn't see the report on that, I just find it hard to believe that that's all it would cost. I, I, I find that hard to believe. I mean, because when you tag a player, right, and I has he, he, I don't think he's agreed to the tag yet. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But when you tag a player, it costs two, two first-round picks to trade for that player. So if he's agreed to the tag, then it's a different conversation. John Hall. Here, take this. No, no, take this. I'm going to eat Chugs' of salad. Marsh. 
I'd say spin the wheel. Spin the wheel, and then it's a jelly. They're not pulling. All right, my man. I'm going to let you choose for me, right or left hand. A piece of chocolate. The problem is, I don't know how many more I have left, and they're out there. Dude, this is a disaster right now. All right, I got the two in my hand are this. One is candy floss is my guess. The other is sausage, which I've heard sausage is disgusting. Left is for me to eat. Okay. This is, I don't know, what's candy floss? It's not bad. It's not my favorite, though. David! Hello to your mom. <laughs> All right, which ones were they? All right, so I don't know why our system right now is having a few hiccups, and it honestly could be because we've been using it so much. So Jersey Boy Greaser said, Dalton Reisner is basically begging for a job, and I think he's an upgrade over Van Roten. Also, still waiting on a signing. I mean, I do think he's a slight upgrade over Greg Van Roten. I do. But it comes down to money. Like, if Dalton Reisner wants $5 million a year and Greg Van Roten's willing to come back at two and a half, three, I'd rather just go get Greg Van Roten. Now, I could also just say, go sign both. Like, go sign both. One of them's going to win the starting right guard job. The other is going to be the swing guard that can play both left and right guard. Um, like, a, a Reisner has got some experience in the AFC West. If you don't view Reisner as a starter, though, maybe you don't do it. But uh, I think Reisner at a cheap deal would be okay. But he's also been begging for a job for a while. This one's a definite sign. I think a lot of people are probably all in on this. Um, and the only team in the NFL that has yet to sign a single player from another team in the NFL free agency, the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys. What up, 34 Life? We got, thanks, RB Info. I hope we go offensive line in one, corner in two. NC State fan here. Love to get our beast, Wilson, and linebacker in the third or fourth rounds. FKC. Yeah, unfortunately, I think Peyton, Wil Peyton Wilson might fall to round three. Might. If he didn't have multiple ACL tears, no doubt he's round one or round two pick. There might still be some teams out there that are afraid of his injury history. Now, he passed the medicals. Everything's good. I know the Raiders really, really like him. But uh, I can understand that. If, if Peyton Wilson is a Raider, I'm going to be a very happy human being. I mean, he's an athletic freak. I mean, I said it, what, two weeks ago, and his name has escaped me again, Drake. He was the UDFA linebacker from NC State. Drake Thomas. Peyton Wilson is a long limb athletic version of Drake Thomas. Like, sub, sub, much better player, much more superior. Like, phenomenal. And then I see Macelle said, is there people trying to restructure their contract? Is there like a deadline for that? We need a wide receiver. Uh, I think he says, Curtis Samuel Ridley sounds nice. They might sound nice, but that's going to be way too much money. Like, Calvin Ridley is going to get close to probably $20 million a year. So... Curtis Samuel was a receiver that I mentioned multiple times on this show because I do think he'd be a, a good fit in our offense based on screens. He's probably going to get eight, nine, ten million dollars a year, right? Like if Darnell Mooney's getting three years for forty, I think Curtis Samuel's going to be somewhere like three for thirty, maybe three for thirty-five. Like he could still get it done. Good screen receiver, fast does offer you some of that uh, flexibility as well. 
I hear you. It's just, to me, it's not a big-time need at receiver right now. Like, I think the Raiders are confident enough in Trey Tucker to be their number three with Jacoby Myers, with Devontae Adams, and then you also have Michael Mayer. Xavier Howard would be lit. I think Xavier Howard, Howard could be one of those moves where if everyone's like, oh, this guy's old, he's washed up, I don't know if he's good anymore. And then he has a year like Casey Hayward did when everyone's like, oh, no, Casey Hayward's washed, he's old, and is a pro bowler. If Xavier Howard's healthy, he could still play at a freaking high level. I know that he could play at a high level. And if you're going to allow him to just be a man coverage corner and he gets his job one-on-one, -on -one, like the other part that people aren't talking about here is like, I want corners that I do have confidence in that can cover somebody man-to-man -man because when you have the front four that the Raiders are going to have, they're going to be able to bring four and they're going to be able to get pressure, which is going to help out your corners. And when you have somebody that's a ball hawk like Howard, that's going to make quarterbacks make decisions quickly. And when you have a ball hawk, that results in big-time turnovers. Now, here's one thing that I love, prize picks. And if you haven't started, go get started with the number one daily fantasy sports app out there. Prize picks is really, really changing the game. And I think you guys should listen up when I talk about them because you're going to have a lot of fun. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor, it's heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court. There is no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of the year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, when you can turn your hoops knowledge into some serious cash. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Testing my skills on Prize Picks this season is the most exciting uh, thing I've done where I can turn ten dollars into a thousand in just a few taps. So some of the just the reasons why I do love prize picks. It is very simple to play. Like you can literally put in some picks right now. It takes less than sixty seconds to do. It is the largest DFS sports app in North America. I'm sure you guys see them all the time on TV everywhere. Like the fact that we got a company like Prize Picks saying, you know what, I want to sponsor the Raiders Sport. That's a big big win. So if you guys have ever thought about it, don't. Use the TV, use ours, because I'd like to be able to keep prize picks around here. This is one of those, like, a big pat on the back to me, to Chugs. Getting companies like this validates a lot of the things that we do, right? You go live for 26 hours straight in hopes that you get a sponsor like prize picks. So all I can ask is this. If you rock with Chugs and I, give it a try. You're going to be, it, it's a lot, a lot of fun. I'm going to, that's my warning. You're going to be doing this maybe every day. Maybe not every day, but definitely big time games. Pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Code CLNS. Get it going. Taino. Kelsey destroyed White for 24 receptions, 282 yards. Can't have that twice a year. I think you're talking about Devin White be my guess. Like, I know that people look at the name Devin White, and it's the reason why I made the video. And I, if, I, if people that watch the show before know my take on White, he's a good linebacker. He's not a great linebacker. He's one of the most overrated linebackers in the NFL, and he's one of the worst coverage linebackers in the NFL. So, like, now don't get me wrong. Maybe I'm wrong on Devin White. I, I didn't think Robert Spillane was going to be very good. Spillane gave me two middle fingers and said, F you, I'm going to go out there and I'm ball out, and he did. But Devin White throughout his entire career has been one of the worst coverage linebackers in the NFL. And based on this defense that we're going to be running and implementing, I think we still need guys that can cover. Yes, Spillane's there. Diablo, though, is still a little bit of a, a mixed bag. We need to add more play players that help us cover at the linebacker position. I don't think that's Devin White. Let's go to Timmy Jones. Mitch, what do you think about Worthy? Xavier Worthy, receiver out of Texas. I mean, if Al Davis was still alive, he'd probably figure out a way to draft him. I mean, 4.2140 is an insane time. I, I, I'm shocked that he ran it. To be frank, like there's a lot of times like you can predict which guy's going to run fast 40 times. I don't really think anybody out there legitimately thought that he was going to run that type of time. Like he's an unbelievable speed threat. He's going to go in the top three rounds, though. Probably going to go in the top two rounds. All right, here's the first move from the Chargers. Remember, they got to cut some fat. Mike Williams is being released by the Los Angeles Chargers. That's the first move. So remember, the Chargers got to get. They had to move on from $25 million. They had to move on from $25 million to get underneath the salary cap for today. They have to do it by 4 p.m. Eastern time. And the people that were being rumored out there were Khalil Mack, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and Joey Bosa. Mike Williams was the number one one. I was like, this guy guarantees getting cut out of those names. Chargers moving on from Mike Williams. And 
on the books for a $32 million dead cap hit. Wow, that is a big-time cap hit. But the Chargers are moving on from the former first-round receiver out of Clemson, Mike Williams. Again, you're, you're about to see the Chargers moving on from a lot, a lot, a lot of people here. Let's go to my man, John Alcala. How do you think Blake Corum is going to do in the NFL? He's going to be a good running back. He's going to be one of those backs that is a reliable running back in the NFL for multiple years. He might not ever be the, the best running back in the league, but I'm telling you right now, Blake Corum is going to be a back that's in the league for five to eight seasons, and he's going to get some work. He's going to get his touches, and you're going to look at him as like, you know what? That's a solid RB2 on a lot of NFL teams. Lord Cameron Abbott Bang! I'll be real. Woo! I need a... Murbonga? I need a Murbonga. Looking around, I don't have anything. I was, uh, I, I was waiting, and I mean waiting... To see who was going to be the first person that banged today on, on YouTube. Lord Cameron Abbott, the first bang of the day. I like it. I respect it. Also, Andres Montano is in for our March Madness tournament. Montano in. And then I also see Joshua Holmes is also in for our duck race here. Which we're going to do, I know I said we would do this at 1, but then obviously we had some of the breaking news roll in. So uh, if you don't know, the Raiders signed Harrison Bryant tight end to a one-year $3.25 million deal. Look at him as an upgrade over Austin Hooper. Good blocking tight end. But Lord Cameron Abbott, I got a beer bong for you, my man. I got a beer bong for you. Also, for those that do not know, Cameron was our MVP last month. So shout out to him for deciding to pull up with us here yet again. I want to see where the Lord is at. Lord Cameron Abbott, second bang. Oh, man, that one hurt. Second bang for this month. You got to respect it. You got to respect it. If you want to shout out here on the Raiders Report, Spam L-C-A. Shout out to the Lord Cameron Abbott. Though I also always try to figure out what that picture is. I don't know what it is. Oh, thank you, good sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't you see? Sometimes your words just hypnotize me. Lord Cameron Abbott said, let's rock. Let's rock today. So I'm ready, man. I see the juice. Ron Raspberry, Vengenzo Peoples. Cheers. You want to give a few shout-outs here, my man? Let's go. I see Ron Raspberry, Vengenzo Yoda, G Money, Buzzomatic, All Spam and LCA, Pepsi, Pepsi Red. Mmm, Pepsi. <sighs> you ever see that uh, Gabriel Iglesias where he's talking about uh, – Commercials in Mexico, they're always sexier than American commercials. The answer is probably. It's just not ringing a bell right now. He was like, in Mexico, all the commercials, it'll be like some hot chick walking through like a car, like a truck yard, short shorts, just... <laughs> and then she looks around at the camera and she goes, Pepsi. <laughs> I, I will say this. If there is one thing that America needs to figure out better, it's the Weather Channel. I've seen the oh. weather, the Weather Channel, and, and well, I'll tell you what, it's uh, it's hot down there. Oh, it's it's steamy. It's uh, it's hot down there. Steamy. Hey, though, who are your top three options for running back to sign in free agency? So actually, there's not a ton of options let me if i had to legitimately give you the people that i would consider let me, let me tell you who's available right now uh one of the names is deonta foreman is antonio gibson still available no nope. antonio gibson's gone um let's see jk dobbins nope rashad penny nope clyde edwards alaire yeah maybe cam Akers. maybe cordero patterson be an interesting fit but matt Breida. kareem hunt Jarek McKinnon? No. Um, let's see. Like, to me, the running back that the Raiders would Boston honor. Scott? Eno Benjamin? 
Eno Benjamin has ties with Antonio Pierce. He's been a name that I've said before. He also offers you some special teams ability. Uh, I'll just say the Otto Foreman, Eno Benjamin. I don't see the and Raiders spending a lot of money in, on the free agent I, market. I, I think down. everybody that I meant, AJ Dillon. I mean, I think all those names that I mentioned still have not signed yet today. But I'm actually I'm looking at something that was updated this morning. Okay. Yeah, off the top of my head, I don't think any of those names went off the board. Just to me, you're drafting a running back. Like at this point, I don't want to spend a lot of money. I have a, I also have enough confidence in Sincere McCormick where. If I'm rolling into the draft and it's Amir White, Amir Abdullah, Sincere McCormick, and then you out of back like Marshawn Lloyd, Ray Davis, oh. somebody like that. Okay. Like that's going to be a good enough backfield to get by. Yeah. What? I, so people are reminding me, which. What? That, that, that's why we need y'all. Four. What? That I never did my plank clock. I never did my plank clock. All right. So, so the reason why we went to something else is because... There was breaking news. Oh, well, breaking news, but also... I'm not kidding you. We had like eight different things we had to do. So and, every $5 that comes in in the next two minutes is a second. Holy crap. Every $5 is a second that we'll have to plank. Yeah, I suck at planks. I'm telling you right now, I can't do planks. It's bad. Yes, you can. I can do If you them. can do push-ups, you can do planks. Planks are more difficult for me. Really? Puss, my, my, I, my lower back sucks. I Honestly, just have a good lower back and core. My lower back, I know you guys probably see me all the time. I go like this. It's My lower back is no bueno. It's no bueno, but hey, it is what it is. I, we, we might be get, getting off scot-free every $5 is a second. Nope, that's a lie. Lord Cameron! Abbott. Bang! The picture is of my perfect 300 bowling ring I received from my bowling league during high school. That's pretty lit. You you bowled a Bro, 300. Bro, you bowled a 300? We were just talking about this in the chat sports studios the other day of like really, really difficult things in sports that I don't think any like if we if we did a video and we're like, all right, we're gonna go live and we're we're gonna stay live until Jeremy bowls a three hundred, that we would never end. Well, we were saying, wh- how would you rank these like sports feats? Like, would like a hole in one or bowling a three hundred? Yeah, which one? If if you had which one's harder? If, if you had a week to complete each of these challenges, which one do you think you complete first? A hole in one or ah? Oh, actually, I think I think it might be the hole in one. You think you would complete the hole in one first? Yeah, I agree. I think bowling a three hundred is more difficult than hitting a hole in one. Yeah, for, because for like for for like me, and I I suck at golf. Well, because a hole in one is easier, I think, because all it takes is one hit. Bowling a three hundred is you bowling a perfect round, so you have to consistently do it, do it, do it, and you could be in the last frame and then you mess it up. Where a hole in one, it's just you need that one lucky hit, one shot, one opportunity. Ch- Chaser says hole in one way harder. What do y'all think? Hole in one or bowling three hundred? Which one's harder? Now, when I say hole in one, I'm talking par three, right? Like I'm not. Yeah, like we're not. It's not a par four, par two, five, two hundred something yards. That's that's. Or is it? Do they use feet or? I don't golf. I think yards. I don't golf. Two hundred yards feels like a long, long way. Yeah, which one's harder? Only a yeah, that's oh, what I we agree. were saying. You have to do it 12 times. Oh, yeah. I agree. I just, some people were saying hole in one, and we're like, it's not a par four or par five. What's like a normal distance for par three? I have no this idea. Is, oh, 150. 150? 150 feet? Yards. 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 Yeah, that's okay. what I thought. I, I just wanted to make yeah, sure. That's what I thought. Well, I mean, I said, I, I didn't know like what was like a normal par three. Yeah, I mean. If he says 150 yards. 130. Yeah, see, I don't golf. I, yeah. I feel like I would be, if you gave me a week, I would do whole, I could get a whole one before I bowl 300. I don't think, I legitimately don't think I'd ever, I, I will never be able to bowl 300. I at least have a shot, I feel like, at getting a whole one. Literally. Yeah, because the problem with a 100 is you have to do it 12 times in a row. What if you were allowed to have bumpers? I mean, yeah, I'm not going to rely on. If you're going to, if you need bumpers to roll a 300, then you're just wasting your time. Does it count? It would count. I can handle that. 
But I don't think it actually helps you. <laughs> Does it count? <laughs> you know what I mean. I don't think it helps you at all I either. Think it might even make it harder. So Retro Putter said this: bowling at 300 is 11,500 to one chance. A hole in one is 12,500 to one chance. Where are you getting these numbers? We uh. Cameron said I also hit a hole in one. By the way, <laughs> honest question: Has anybody in the chat hit a hole in one? How many people in the chat have legitimately hit a hole in one? My next question is Surf Life, I don't believe that. What? He said, I've bowled three 300 games. I don't know. Also, I mean, I don't see what I don't. If, if that's the truth, then Surf Life, then you need to change your name. You need to be to a bowl professional. Life. You need to be a professional bowler. You need to be Bowl Life. Now, some people are like, uh. Also. Hunter Renfro has just put it out on Twitter. If you want to hear, I'm going to send you this. I like this message. Oh, from yep. Hamez? Is that the one that he did? It's a tweet from Renfro? Yeah. Yeah. So Hunter Renfro just put out, uh, it's a picture of him, Darren Waller, and Derek Carr. And it said, Raider Nation, Thank you for welcoming me and my family in the last five years. From Oakland to Vegas, it felt like home. I wouldn't be the person I am today without my teammates and coaches inspiring me every single day. Five years went by quick. Once a Raider, always a Raider. I respect it. I, uh, I respect it. Respect to third and Renfro. You got to respect it. I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, I think a lot of people, I mean, I got nothing but love for third and Renfro. Nothing but love for third and Renfro. Which I think, I think everyone right now, you know what? Let's get a... Can we spam 13? Let's get a few 13s in the chat. I mean, I think that's one of those things where everybody watching this show right now knows that the right NFL move, the right football move, was in fact to move on from Hunter Renfro. Right? It's a fact. But that does not mean that like everybody in the chat right now wanted Renfro to work out. Everybody wanted Renfro to still be a part of this team. I love the fact that he ends up with once a Raider, always a Raider. And you know his guys got moved on from Derek Carr. Like That whole team is a lot different now. It's unfortunate that we had to deal with Josh McDaniels. I do wonder if McDaniels never came into the equation, if 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 Renfro would still be the same receiver that we, we, we once saw. But, like, I mean this, nothing but love for third and Renfro. Which is wild because... I got nothing but love for When him. he came over, it was like, oh, Renfro's the perfect guy. Well, that's what I said. I was like, if you would have told me who's the perfect receiver for Josh McDaniels, I would have said Hunter Renfro. Turns out... McDaniels just can't get out of his own way, man. Can't get out of his own way. On top of Renfro, did have multiple concussions, did struggle. I got nothing but love for him, though. I mean that. Nothing but love for number 13. I mean, I see Bobby, GC Sports, Anthony Simmons, all showing love. All, uh, all showing love. There it is. And the picture, like I said, is a picture of Waller, Carr, and Renfro celebrating in the end zone. Raider Nation, thank you for welcoming me and my family for the last five years from Oakland to Vegas. Felt like home. I wouldn't be the person I am today without my teammates and coaches inspiring me every single day. Five years went by quick. Once a Raider, always a Raider. Get those 13s down in the comment section. <laughs> nothing but love. Nothing but love for a number 13. Damn. Hey, you know what? What have we got here? For Hunter Renfro. I'm listening. Let's do this duck race. Let's do a duck race here for Renfro. Also, how many planks do we got to do? Um, every, I, I said every $5 is a second, so that would be 20, 20 seconds. seconds of planks. 20 seconds of planks. All right, how about this? Do you want to plank first or do you want me to? Yeah, I'll plank first. I'll plank first. All right, hold on. Did I do a beer bong for Lord Cameron Abbott, that second one? I don't think so. I don't think I did. Did I do one? I honestly don't think I did. I'm going to ask you guys. I, I literally don't think I did. Did I? Why free SN for no? It's an honest question. I know I did one. 
I don't think I did another, though. Or at least I don't think I did one for Cameron's second bang. Adrian says no. Yeah, I don't think I did, right? Do you think it's more difficult to do a beer bong and then plank or plank and then do a beer bong? Probably beer bong and then plank is going to be more difficult. All right, Chuggy Bowl's got a plank here for 20 seconds, and then I'm going to plank for 20 seconds. Yeah, Daniel said I only did one. All right, appreciate it. Yeah, I got a time. I got a timer. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And he's still going. He's still going. Oh, I got a few extra seconds in there for good luck. Honestly, I've been in that position before where I just kind of sit there when I'm done too. I've been there before. All right. Well, I feel like I'm going to do a beer bong first and then plank. I feel like that's the way to do it. No? Probably. It's probably the way to do it. All right, here we go. Glug, 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 glug. All right. Down the hatch. Uh, uh. I also had to do 50 push-ups earlier. I thought Cullen was going to have to just end the stream. I've only done 50. I don't know if I could do 50. I don't know if I could do 10 more. Yeah, no. I, was, I also... I was trying to tell you. I was like, bro. Like... I worked out my chest today. This morning. Briefly. Just briefly. Bad choice. It was, uh, it was a bad choice. I would almost chalk it up as like, you know what? Let's go to an all-you-can-eat Mexican restaurant and then run a marathon. That's how I felt. All right, you ready? Yep, let's do it. And go. Dude, I feel I got a burp coming. Honestly, I hope it's a burp. This is either going to come out of my belly button or my butthole. <laughs> and I don't know which. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, dude, I hate planks. The worst part is, I don't know where I'm at. I've been trying to count in my head. Ugh. Come on. Power through. Power through. Ugh. All right. I feel like I'm getting effed right now. Oh, wait. Was I supposed to count? Yes. Yeah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Oh, You're good. I'm like, time out. Something's going on here. <laughs> something's uh, something's going on here. Holy shit! <laughs> I was like, who is counting? We might have to just put. We gotta get King Shav in. One. King Shav's gonna have to do the counting. <laughs> One, two, two, two and a half, <laughs> a three. Yeah, Abby said, I got 15 seconds left to go. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. I will admit, though, that the beer bong before was tough. Dude, it's like, for me, it's like, the first little bit is good. And then the last five seconds, or once, once I get past, past around 15 seconds, do you feel like the shakes in the middle of your, like, in your core? Oh my. As soon as I got down, I started to shake. Yeah, I... No good. No good. Yeah. The, the only plank that I like is from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. That's it. That's the only plank I like. The real ones, no. The, do you guys get... Who gets it? Um, let's go ahead and get this race done. Last chance to get in. I like Mitch it. is going to put down all the people who are in right now. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get in in time, then you'll be in on the next one. 
All right, the last name that I originally got was Joshua Holmes, which means Randall Carter is in, Adam White is in, Nathan Wolf is in, Amy in, Alex Ruiz in, Peter Sandoval in, Fernando Castorino, and then Steve Briscoe. All in. So as it stands right now, we got 22 people in this race, which means winner's going to get, oh my lord, I don't think I could have done, that was a disgrace. $220. 220 No, I, I went to send you the message, and I sent, I clicked in your name on Slack, and then I typed TV, and I was going to send you TV on your own Slack. Ah. Yeah, that was, that's not good. You guys don't know what I'm talking about, but that's, that's not great. It could have just destroyed our whole live stream. Uh, potentially. Some pro days. Caleb Williams on March 20th. Jaden Daniels on March 27th. Drake May, March 28th. And then maybe after this, Super Chats, and then maybe try our mock? Um, I do want to just grab a quick bite to eat, and then I'm down to do the mock. Then I'm, then rock I'm out? Then I'm down to rock out with my mock out a little bit. Then I'm down. All right, so winner of this race is going to get $220. And then if you're not in... Don't worry, we're going to get you in our next race. So just some people, just so you know. Um, so I already see that we're getting a few more in here for our next race. So the people that are going to be in our next race is going to be um, Luis, Avina, Amonbra, in Juan Gutierrez, you in. And then I think I saw... One more person get in a little bit late here. I see Dylan. Dylan Ginger Rich. So those are our first four names in our next duck race here on the Raiders Report. Okay. This is creepy. Spiders. Winner gets 220 bucks. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. First race of the day. And Steve Briscoe gets out to an early lead. Robert, the owner of Applebee's, I want to say is in about third place here. Joel Foster. This is like a, a scary fever dream. Like this is this is a nightmare. This is horrific. I mean, if you had this many spiders in your house, could you imagine? I'm moving. Could you imagine? Like this is nightmare fuel. You shrink down to the like, like to this big, and then you have these. You ever spider? see the movie Eight Crazy Legs? Have you guys ever seen the movie Eight Crazy Legs? It's literally like spiders the size of bison. And they're just hopping around and just destroying shit. People included. Peter Sandoval's got the lead right now. I don't know. The, I can't see any names. I don't know who's in the lead. I have absolutely Chavez. no idea. Chavez with the lead. Six seconds to go. Rob! Fravor! All, and all the other ones die. Rob Fravor said, you know what? I love spiders. Mr. Rob Fravor. Uh, Alex. Oh, Alex Ruiz gets a butthole pick. That's actually the second butthole pick I've sent to Alex today. I guess I should say Nico two. says it's called Eight-Legged Freaks. Oh, uh, what did I say? Eight crazy legs. That's uh, that's the spinoff with Adam Sandler. Mm. It's the Jewish version. <laughs> um. All right. Congrats to Rob Fravor on a big time dub. Big time dub. Special teams, special players. All right, Chuggy Bull. Can you just uh hold it down here for about five ten minutes? I'm just gonna go get some lunch. I'll be right back when we get back. Let's do a mock draft. Mock draft with the nation here. I don't know if I want to do it on PFF or PFN. And however the mock goes, again, we have no we have no idea how it's going to go. Um, but we'll, uh, however it ends up falling, we'll just we'll let you guys pick for us. Sound good? Okay, I'll be right back. And here we go. Uh, besides quarterback, name somebody. 
Name a player the Raiders should draft at 13. Go down and let me know. We're going to do a quick mock draft here in a little bit. But let me know. Who do you want, if not quarterback at 13, who should the Raiders select? I see Jerzon Newton. I see, oh yeah, Kool-Aid. I see Fuaga. I see Terry and Arnold. I see Quinion Mitchell. I see Fuaga. I see Byron Murphy. Let me know down in the comments section. As we do have some more Super Chats to roll on through, Cameron Abbott also hit a hole in one. Let's see, we have Daniel Topchi. Once a Raider, always a Raider. Renfro is the man. Raiders! Boogie says Dallas Turner. I see Raider man says Renfro just win, baby. And Brandon Johns says Raiders need to hurry up now. Come on, do some. That, uh, that meme where he's poking the thing with the stick, and he's like, do something. Just tap it in. The great Carl Weathers. RIP, man. RIP. Continue to let me know a player the Raiders should draft at 13 as I'm going to get our mock draft set up so whenever Mitch gets back, we can get into it. I think I'm going to go with the PFF mock. I, I think we go with the PFF All right, seven rounds. We're going with the Raiders. Oh, okay. Interesting. They added a new feature on the PFF mock draft simulator. Now it says, do you want to go with the Publix board or the PFF board? I think we go with the Publix board. Huh. Looks like they, PFF heard our cries that their simulator was broken and they fixed it a little bit. Hopefully we get a good simulation here. Super Chat coming in from Nico Laz. Renfro says thank you to the nation before even being officially released. JJ posts some cryptic IG story about loyalty. All you need to know. So Nico, are you saying that... Are you saying that it's the Raiders front office's fault or... Are you agreeing with Josh Jacobs about the loyalty aspect? Let me know what, what you mean. I think this super chat is a little cryptic. All you need to know. Nico, what you mean? Uh, Khalil Mack staying with the Chargers. No return of the Mack. Oh. Yeah. That blows. I was looking forward to those Khalil Mack rumors. Very upset. Um Mack restructuring contact staying with the or contract staying with the Chargers. Yeah, the news that just came in. They are releasing wide receiver Mike Williams, but Khalil Mack. Staying with the charges. Mac staying. Don't know what Marsh was talking about, but that was intense. All right. And as we're talking about the upcoming PFF mock draft that we're going to do, bigger... Free agent priority, I guess also priority in the draft. Are we looking at right tackle, cornerback, or offensive guard? Those are three positions that Mitch wants the Raiders to address, obviously besides quarterback as well. Right tackle, uh, cornerback, or guard, which one of those, if the best or if a good player at each of those positions available at 13, which one are you going with? Right tackle, cornerback, or offensive guard? I see a lot of cornerbacks. I see all CBs. All CBs in the chat. Trevor, is it still valid to wear a Hunter Renfro jersey? I think it's fine to wear a Hunter Renfro jersey. 
I mean, he's a guy who played well for the Raiders. There's not really like a controversy there. Now, if he does sign with a division rival, that might be a little bit tougher to swallow to continue wearing a Renfro jersey. If he signs with the Chiefs, the Chargers, or the Broncos. But I would say it's fine wearing a Hunter Renfro jersey. Yeah, you should be good. You should be good, Trevor. Um, Nick says my super chat got skipped. Possibly. Let's see. Opinion on Edgerin Cooper, linebacker from AM. Great option in the second. Can can cover super well, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind Edgerin Cooper in the second round if he falls, depending on who else is on the board. Um I don't think it would be a bad option. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind the Raiders drafting Edrin Cooper, linebacker from Texas at AM in the second round. Let's see uh, some of his statistics. Edgerin Cooper. So this past year at Texas A&M, he had 39 tackles, eight sacks, two forced fumbles. Not too shabby. Not too shabby from Edgerin Cooper. Let's see how PFF said this young kid did. 2023, Edgerin Cooper. No, we, we haven't started yet. Uh, but they did change the PFF – Simulator did change. They added an option for public versus PFF board. So I'm guessing now Jaden Daniels doesn't fall to round two anymore. Um, yeah, I mean, PFF loves this guy. 90.8 overall grade in 2023. They gave him an 86.4 pass rush grade, a run defense grade of 87.6, coverage grade of 85.5. Um which PFF is usually more of the maybe, – maybe in college they're just like round, round up. I don't know. Like all these grades seem amazing. Seems like they're tougher on NFL guys. Maybe they're professionals. I don't, I don't know. But for NFL guys, a lot of guys get rated in like the 50s and 60s. Edrin Cooper, all in the 80s, 90s. I don't know. What's going on, PFF? going on uh jc sports says how about jc jackson to the raiders he could take a cheap prove it deal it could be worth the risk yeah i it could be but if i'm the raiders i'm looking for a more proven guy because there are still some more proven guys available in free agency mitch mentioned kendall fuller Xavier howard two really good options the one i would like out of Though out of those two, or more than those two guys, would be a Dory Jackson. He played really well under PG with the New York Giants. He, I mean, looked really good whenever they were paired together. I wouldn't mind a Dory Jackson coming over to the Las Vegas Raiders. Also, good return guy. Wouldn't mind that at all. Mac is staying, yeah, Mac staying a Charger. But actually, let me let me ask this question to you. Um, where is it? Mm. We did get the news, though, that Mike Williams is being released. So, my question to you, should the Raiders sign Mike Williams, former wide receiver with the L.A. Chargers? I think he has a t I, I think he's still a good player. I think he has a... Really nice skill set as an outside receiver. Maybe not a one, but I think he would be a really good two. Where are you at? Type S for sign, type P for pass. Would you sign Mike Williams? A ton of no's. That's a, I mean, is it because of the price? That makes sense if you think he's going to be too much in terms of contract. But I think on the field talent, yeah, I mean, always injured, but... I don't know. I mean, he got injured this past season. But if you're saying always injured, last season, played three games. The three seasons prior, he played 15, 16, 13. So, I mean, 
Missing like one or two games, I wouldn't really hold that much against him. Injury, I mean, he missed last season, but before that, he it's he missed a couple games here and there each season, but I don't know. I think the the if, if you're saying risk reward for a guy like JC Jackson or some of these guys who haven't been good, and you're not willing to do a risk reward contract for Mike Williams, I don't know. That seems a little weird. That that's just what I would do personally. That's what I would say. S for sign, P for pass. Curtis Samuel. Let me know in the chat. Who would you rather have than Mike Williams if they were going to sign a wide receiver? <clears throat> Don't need a wide I mean, you need to at least sign or draft. It's not a hard need, but you need depth at the position. Because right now, the Raiders have Devontae Adams. The Raiders also have Jacoby Myers, Trey Tucker. Besides that, who do you have at wide receiver? DJ Turner and Christian Wilkerson? Like, you don't have the depth at wide receiver that you necessarily need. I do think the Raiders need to draft or sign a wide receiver. If you roll into next season with those five guys, I wouldn't be necessarily thrilled as your backup options. And Trey Tucker being your third wide receiver, yeah, he has upside. He has a lot of potential. He's not proven. You at least want to bring somebody in that can compete with him in camp. I see Curtis Samuel, Ridley. I don't know. Cobain says they'll draft one. Yeah, that could be a possibility. Real Cowboy, Xavier Worthy's not falling to the third. Xavier Worthy is not falling to the third. I think he's a second-round pick lock, in my opinion. <coughs> I'd be surprised. Mark, Mark, I see some Hollywood Browns in there. Quez Watkins. K-Rock, what's the contract look like? I mean, he's still got a hefty payday from the Chargers coming off an injury season. I could see Mike Williams signing a one-year deal, a prove-it deal, in the range of $10, $13 million maybe. Brandon Ayuk, our 49ers guy, has been telling me for the past couple weeks that he doesn't believe Ayuk gets dealt, that he believes that they're working on a long-term deal to keep him in San Francisco. So I don't think that's a possibility. I see Brendan Rice, Johnny Wilson, Xavier Worthy, Brian Thomas Jr. as options to get in the draft. I'll see a super chat from Beatbox. Let me get that up on screen for you. Beatbox. Imagine owning a company and an employee, Renfro, puts out mid-effort for above-average pay, and I'm supposed to keep him because loyalty? Companies don't become great <coughs> with mid-workers. Love Renfro, but come on. I mean, I, I agree with you, Beatbox, that he didn't live up to the contract and he wasn't worth the money that he was getting paid for. So, I think at the end of the day, I think he's a really well-liked player among Raider fans, among the nation. I think a lot of people love what he did for those couple seasons with the uh, Raiders. But at the end of the day, I, I find it hard-pressed to see anybody who really wanted to keep Renfro around. Like, for the contract that he was on a little bit ago. I know a lot of people wanted to trade him. We, we've been telling you all the trade value wasn't there. It just wasn't going to happen. With his contract and how how he was playing, he was not worth that contract whatsoever. And that's okay. It's okay to still be like, you know what, he's a good guy, a good Raider player, but it just wasn't going to work out. Jeffrey Kreischer says Quez Watkins can't catch. Debatable. Debatable. You know, Mike Williams. Sign or pass. As we're getting ready to do our PFF mock draft simulator here in just a moment. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want to get your questions on, maybe give me some advice of who the Raiders should be selecting in the draft. You can super chat or use hashtag Raiders. David A., who do we get for a speed wide receiver. Well, in free agency, 
Um, oh, I just had my list up here. I got rid of it. Let me see. Let me see who's available. I know Curtis Samuel, decent option for a faster wide receiver. <coughs> Let's see. Wide receivers available and free agency. We have Calvin Ridley, Marquise Brown, Mike Williams, Tyler Boyd, uh, Speed Guys, Nicole Hardman, DJ Chark, Curtis Samuel, Van Jefferson, uh, Olamide Zacchaeus, Quez Watkins, Paris Campbell, Jamison Crowder, which those are lower level guys. LaVisca Chenault could be a decent option. I don't mind on a really cheap deal, LaVisca Chenault. I don't hate that. In the draft, I would say Xavier Worthy. Obviously, he broke the combine record for a 40 time. His teammate, Adonai Mitchell, another guy who, bigger than Worthy, I think he'll end up being a better wide receiver than Worthy in the NFL. I mean, he still ran like a 4-3 something. A lot of fast wide receivers in this year's draft. Brian Thomas Jr., another really fast guy. Keon Coleman didn't run fast in the combine in the 40, but he plays a lot faster than what his 40 time indicates. Malachi Corley is another guy who's pretty fast in the draft. I'm not huge on Devontae Walker out of North Carolina. That's just me. A lot of good options for speed wide receivers, though, in the draft and in free agency. Uncle Drew said Xavier Leggett, stud from South Carolina, DK Metcalf type of dude. Yeah, he's, he's built. Ronnie Lewis with the $2 Super Chat. He says, let's get Fields for a fifth and uh, draft a CB at 13. Well, we're about to do our uh, PFF mock draft here in just a moment. And how we're going to do that is I'm going to be changing our live poll. And I'll give you a couple options for each point in the draft. We're not going to do any trades because I don't want to get it to go too crazy. But we're going to give you all options with the live poll. We're going to give you, I believe we can give you four options with the live poll. And then you all are going to be able to choose which guy we select. Who the F is Harrison Bryant? So Harrison Bryant, tight end with the Browns last year. A decent, you know, secondary tight end. Going to be your second or third guy on the roster. Did we move over any graphics for him? Yep, here we go. We're looking at his stats. He missed Mitch's breakdown of Harrison Bryant earlier. Here's his stats the past four seasons. I mean, not an extremely exciting option, but a decent-handed wide receiver with the Browns. Last season, 13 catches, 81 yards, three touchdowns. The years prior, I mean, career-high 31 receptions last season, but has never eclipsed 300 yards. Has stayed around that 200-yard mark this year, got a little less work, but also the Cleveland Browns were missing... Deshaun Watson for most of the year. Joe Flacco likes to chunk it deep. But I don't hate the signing. I don't hate the signing at all of Harrison Bryant. I think it's a decent depth piece for the Las Vegas Raiders. Another super chat coming in from... Uh, oh, no, but Ronnie Lewis. I, did, I just didn't read it. My bad. Ronnie Lewis, let's get Fields for a fifth... Oh, yeah, I did read it. Oh, yeah, I did read that. All right, y'all, I'm back. Sorry, had to get some lunch. Had to do a few other little odds and ends here around the office. But, man, oh, man, Khalil Mack not coming back. Are we ready to do a mock? I think so. Ready to mock out? This Raiders mock draft is presented by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports Made easy, folks. Just choose two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Some of the guys that we're about to draft, you can play prize picks on them once yep. we start the NFL season. But not only NFL, they have NBA. 
They have MLB right around the corner. How are yep. your How are your Mets looking? I haven't even asked you. Nah, dude, I, I don't stay in, in the loop with the Mets anymore. I I wish I could stay on top of other sports, but You're a big, big A's fan now. No, that's that's cap. I'm I'm a Mets guy <laughs> through and through. But I the other thing that I just saw with Price Picks that I actually did not know they have season long that you can do. So yeah. like, um, I they have uh like for right. home runs in Major League Baseball you can do will Jordan Alvarez get more or less than 32 and a half home runs. I mean, they even have them for NFL. Like, they already have some NFL ones out right now. Really? I know. I was just looking at them. Oh, like, I didn't see those yet. The problem is they don't have, like, many, like, Raiders on there. All right, so Josh Jacobs is at 999.5 rushing yards on the season, more or less in Green Bay. Like, that's one out there. Um, Lamar Jackson, 770 and a half rushing yards they have. Passing touchdowns for... Patrick Mahomes, 34-and-a-half. Josh Allen is 30.5. Kirk Cousins in Atlanta, 28.5. What about this? C.J. Stroud, 26-and-a-half passing touchdowns for Stroud. I think Give that's me the low. more. No, I agree. Give me the more. Baker Mayfield, 23-and-a-half. I think that's kind of low. Bryce Young, 18-and-a-half. Russell Wilson, 19-and-a-half. I mean, some of these are pretty interesting, man. I was hoping that... Some Raiders players would be in here, but I think because the quarterback situation is still a I don't know what it is, that that's probably one of the reasons why they're not there. Yeah. Bottom line though, prize picks here to hook up the nation and you're gonna have a good time. Prizepicks.com slash C L N S. All right. So I told them I think the easiest way for me to do it and how how I would like to do it, unless you want differently, I think we just select four players for them to do on a live poll. Okay. And I think that might be the easiest way. I agree. Yeah, that's 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 probably the way to do it. Um, and then I can keep this stuff on screen. I'm actually we've we've talked about Harrison Bryant a lot, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the loop here, so that we can just go over all the or you can see all the signings that have happened in free agency. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, okay, so look, I'm gonna try the public board on PFF. See if that fixed it. See if that helps it. Um, Okay. I'm going to end the, our live poll because now we'll, we will be using our live poll for the, the mock draft. Yep. Um, I'll also say Ty Davis said, what the hell is happening with Jimmy G? He's getting cut. So Garoppolo is going to get cut. Uh, the Raiders are going to eat $17 million this year, but they're not going to have a dead cap hit next season. And then what they're going to end up doing then is they're going to have that money to spend right away. So they're going to have that $11 million, $11 million to spend literally right away as soon as that brand new – league year happens, which the brand new league year for the NFL starts in an hour and eight minutes. Cool. So it's exciting stuff. A lot of stuff's about to happen. All right, y'all, if you haven't already, also make sure you are subscribed to the Raiders Report. We're trying to get to 167,000 subscribers, and I think it's one of those things where the show continues to grow and grow. We're able to do fun and interactive stuff like this. We got 2,000 people watching right now. I know for a fact that not all 2,000 of y'all have hit that subscribe button. So if you could, believe it or not, it does help me out a lot. If you want to get in for a chance to win some money, we also have a 50-50 raffle going on right now, which is a $20 Venmo to get in. Uh, we already have four people in this. And the next one to get in, Rob Fravor, who won our last race. So $20 Venmo at Mitchell Rent 365 which would put us at right now. Winner would get 50 bucks. So you at least have a shot to win a little bit of cash. A little bit of cash here. Download the Venmo app. Super simple, easy, free app to be able to get. All right, so what do we have here? Daniel right. said, so you got less than two hours to back out of a contract agreement. Yeah, essentially. I mean, imagine. Holy crap. That would be nuts. What? I mean, technically, all the deals like we've said, they're not officially official yet. Like that, Everybody's just backs out, and then we start over. Let's do it again. Let's run it again. Hit that reset button. That would be nuts. <laughs> Actually... The Raiders are signing Chris Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like the. I'm really happy with Wilkins. Obviously, Chris Jones would have been something special, but I mean, Chris Jones, five years or 160 mil, or Wilkins, four for 110. I think, I think you can make an argument that it's, it's a pretty good value for both sides. Yeah, right. No Chris Jones from Miguel. We'll see. Uh, Joshua says Bobby Wagner chugs. Come on, bro. Bobby Wagner would be a good sign. I I, I think Bobby Wagner is one of those guys where every single year people are like, oh, dude, he's he's done, he's old, he's he's washed up, 
And then every single year, you're like, holy crap, he was one of the best linebackers in the NFL again. That's what I see. All year right. in and year out. Let's try this mock draft, see how it turns out. Let's try. Okay. Let's try to rock out with our mocks out here. So how is this going to be? Are you going to put it like up on screen or? It's going to be the live poll. I thought, all right, I'm, I'm saying like the draft itself. I see what you're saying now. Well, once we do our draft, the results, I'll be able to put it on screen kind of like I do the wheel. I got you. I mean, even if though, could you put up what you're looking at right now? Is that possible or no? Yeah, but it's just, we, to, for people to vote, it's only four options, so I don't, I think it'd be easier for us to just pick the four options. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. <clears throat> All right, here we go. All right, so I want to know the first 12 picks. So we're not going to do trades. I, I should probably throw that out there. <laughs> All right. Here are the first 12 picks. Let's go. And the 2024 Raiders day three of NFL free agency mock draft simulator. All right. Da -na -na -na, da -na 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 -na. With pick one, the Bears select Caleb Williams. All right. Pick two, the Commanders select Drake May. All right. Pick three, the Patriots select J.J. McCarthy. Wow. See, if that were to happen, I'm hopping on the phone right now. With pick four, the Cardinals select Joe Alt. Yeah, I'm picking up the phone. Pick I'm five, the Chargers select Rome Adunze. Okay. Pick six, the New York Giants select Jaden Daniels, quarterback yep. LSU. That's brutal. Pick seven, the Titans select Malik Neighbors. Eight, Marvin Harrison Jr. Eight? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, nine, the Bears select Jared Verse. This is why whenever you see a mock draft, it's, it's just for fun. Yep. No way Marvin Harrison Jr. falls to eight. Uh, Jared Verse, nine to the Bears. Ten, the Jets select Talisi Fuaga, which, upsetting, that was one of the guys that I really hoped was going to fall. Uh, fall. 11, the Vikings select Byron Murphy, okay. defensive lineman from Texas. And at 12, the Broncos select Dallas Turner, edge rusher out of Alabama. So according to PFF, yep. here are the top guys that are on the board. I'm listening. Brock Bowers. Yep. Cooper DeGene. Okay. Quinion Mitchell. Yep. Jerzon Newton. Troy Fatanu. Nate Wiggins. Terry and Arnold. Olu Fashanu. J.C. Latham. Jackson Powers Johnson, lay to lot two. All right, I'm going to say let's put Terry and Arnold in the pool. I'll also say let's put in Olu Fushanu. I think it would be an interesting name out there. I know he's predominantly a left tackle, but could be a, a good name on the right side. Some people are screaming for Penix. I think just for the namesake, like if we are going to take, take a quarterback – just put Michael Penix Jr. in there, I think, in that mix. And then we need one more name. So we got Olu Fashanu, Terry and Arnold, Michael Penix Jr. And then, honestly, I don't know if Bauer makes any sense anymore just because that's going to make your tight end. I mean, I don't know if I want to do Bauer. I don't want Cooper to Gene, so we'll stop that. That's not going to happen. Um, People yeah. are saying Quinion Mitchell. Dejean, Dejean ain't happening. That that's that's a no bueno there. You want to go with a? Uh, I can't really. Jerzon Newton's still there. All right, Johnny Newton. That's fine. Uh, maybe in my bin. That's fine. We can go with Johnny Newton, <clears throat> defensive tackle from Illinois. All right, Quinion Mitchell is another name to think about, no doubt. All right, so who should the Raiders? Who should we take? In our mock draft, are we going to go Terry and Arnold, Olu Fashanu, Michael Penix Jr., or are we going to roll with Johnny Newton, the defensive tackle from Illinois? So cornerback from Bama, Arnold, Michael Penix Jr., quarterback from Washington, Olu Fashanu, offensive tackle from Penn State, or defensive tackle uh, Johnny Newton. It looks like Newton's so, not going to win this one. So I'm going to give them until this clock runs out. Between those four guys, you've also – I mean, obviously you picked those I don't four want guys. what I say to persuade them. So I'm not going to – I'll give you my two cents after it. 
I will say, I'll try to like paint the picture of why this would make sense for each one. I would say if you want to vote for Terry and Arnold, he is a very physical corner. He can play man. He can play coverage. He has experience playing safety and corner. Uh, the Raiders met with him at the Combine. Olu Fushanu is, to me, one of the most athletic, gifted offensive tackles in this year's draft. I have him as my number two ranked offensive tackle. The problem is, though, if we're going to talk about a problem, he does play on the left side. So do you have confidence in kicking him over to the right side? That could be at least a conversation to have. Michael Penix Jr. would be my fourth ranked quarterback. And if the board were to fall the way that it did. It's it's really close. Make sure you get your vote in. You have a minute left to vote. 304 what? votes in right now. We got 2,000 people watching. Penix is the fourth best quarterback, at least I believe, on the board. And if you want to go with the QB and secure that guy, you can go that route. And then Johnny Newton, by some, is the best defensive tackle in the draft. He's my number two ranked DT. I mean, him next to Christian Wilkins would be a very interesting duo, dynamic duo. There, there ain't no doubt about that. But I think overall, you're looking at a top corner, a top offensive tackle, a top quarterback, and a top DT. I know that some other people might have wanted somebody like uh, Quinion Mitchell. To me, I think Terry and Arnold is above Quinion Mitchell. I also think that I saw some people asking for um, Latu Latu. Latu spoke very highly of Max Crosby at the Combine, but his edge rusher, that big of a need. Final seconds here rolling in for a chance to get a pick. Two, one... With the 13th pick in our Raiders report, free agency mock draft, the Las Vegas Raiders are selecting Terry and Arnold, cornerback from Alabama. So I will be curious to see how the board ends up falling. I am very curious to see how the board ends up falling now for the Raiders at the quarterback position. Okay. Out of all the picks that were there, I would have said Terry and Arnold would have been my pick number one. Pick number two for me would be Olu Fashanu. Pick number three for me would have been Michael Penix Jr. And then I would have went Jerzon Newton, Johnny so, Newton. Do you want me to, uh, uh, so I'll tell you the picks that have happened in the second round okay. leading up to the pick. 33, the Panthers select Ladd McConkey. 34, the Patriots select Troy Franklin. 35, Kamari Lasseter, cornerback, goes to the Arizona Cardinals. Ennis Rakestraw, cornerback, goes to the uh, Washington, Washington Commanders. Linebacker Peyton Wilson, off the board okay. to the L.A. Chargers. Xavier Worthy, off the board to the Tennessee Titans. Chris Braswell, edge, going to the Carolina Panthers. Jordan Morgan, tackle, going to the Commanders. Mike Sainer still, cornerback, going to the Packers. Adisa Isaac, edge rusher, going to the Vikings. And selected one pick before the Raiders, Tyler Newbin, safety, going to the Atlanta Falcons. So, here are some of the top guys on the board. And this could be even more interesting than the first round. I also see St. Michael says, could we cancel the Uncle Rico contract? Yes, you technically could, but that would be... Um, very bad malpractice, and I don't know if an, if you would ever get another NFL free agent to sign with you during the tampering period ever again, so they would never do that. And then DJ Faze, when would we see moves today before or after three? I mean, we've already seen at least a few moves today. I do think more dominoes, though, might end up falling after this, uh, once the new league year starts, which the new league year starts here in 57 minutes. So here are the top guys that are on the board. Okay. Um, according to PFF, Bo Nix and Michael Penix still on the board. So, all right, put both of them in the poll. We might as well, if both of them are on the board here, you might as well put both in the in the poll. Michael Penix Jr., Bo Nix, and then, I mean, what other position would you guys want to go get? We just got our corner one. Um, Braden Fisk still on the board. Really good defensive lineman, defensive interior. Okay. Um, also, some other guys, uh, TJ Tampa. I know, oh, we just got corner. Yep. Um, Zach Frazier, good interior offensive lineman center from West Virginia, is on the board. He's the 31st ranked player by PFF. Jatavian Sanders, tight end, is still on there. Javon Bullard, no. safety. I'd say give me the, the top offensive guard. What's like the top offensive guard or top offensive tackle? Let's just get that prospect in, whatever that is. 
The top offensive guard would be Christian Haynes, guard from Connecticut, UConn. All right, put him in there just for an offensive lineman's sake. The, the next one on here would be oh, – I can, I can just go to in, – interior, interior O-line, the next three best are Zach Frazier, Christian Haynes, Christian Mahogany. All right, let's just do uh, Haynes, Christian Haynes. Okay. Throw him in there. That's a need. What's another need that we have? I mean, if we already have two quarterbacks in this next one, we have an offensive guard. What would be another position that you could think that the Raiders would potentially now, look at? Now that we're getting further on, I'm going to put their positions with them as well. Even though we know Michael Penix and Bo Nix are QBs, I'm just going to put that on there as well. Uh, seeing some linebackers. To me, running back's definitely not going to be a position that they would go this early for. I would say linebacker or Fisk. What do you guys want? LB or Fisk? Who are the top linebackers on the board? Edgerin Cooper is there. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is there. Okay, so how about Fisk or let's go, I think uh, Edgerin Cooper would be their pick. They met with him at the Combine. Based on what I hear, they like him. Do you want to go Edgerin Cooper as the? Cooper or I'm seeing a lot of Fisk. Okay. Put Fisk in there. Put, Put Fisk in there. I mean, if they go best player available, one he, in the one in the hand, uh, two in the fisk. Yep. All right, so that means that this next poll is going to be. So remember, at pick thirteen, we got Terry and Arnold, cornerback from Alabama, <clears throat> and this is based on you know what we have already done here in free agency. Also, I got to say, Lord Cameron Abbott wants an extra raffle entry. For our duck race here, Lord Cameron Abbott. Okay. The poll is up. Go vote. The poll is up. Two minutes on the clock. Oh, yeah. Yep, clock. All right, so the poll right now is for the second round here. It is Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., Christian Haynes, Brandon Fisk. So defensive tackle from Florida State is Brandon Fisk. Christian Hayes is the offensive guard from Connecticut. Michael Penix Jr., quarterback Washington. Bo Nix, quarterback from Oregon. So if you want a system quarterback in Bo, somebody that's going to have to sit a year or two probably behind a starter and then get the keys to the truck, there you go. Penix is a lefty, does have some injury concerns over the past two years, though, was probably the best quarterback in the Pac-12, and that's even with Caleb Williams being there. Christian Haynes is one of the top offensive guard prospects coming out of UConn. Oh, I don't, I don't think this is going to be close. And then Brandon Fisk, top uh, one of the better defensive tackle prospects also. I think I have him like six on my board. Really, really great combine. And I mean really, really great unless, combine. Uh, unless we get a wave of new voters coming in, I think the pick is obvious. I think the pick is going to be obvious. Roddy White just tweeted this. Sean Payton time has passed him, but don't matter who he gets in the draft, Drew carried that man, and he ain't done nothing since. It's not wrong. Roddy White throwing shots. I mean, I I do think that sometimes, you know, these head coaches, they get this. I mean, we'll see what Sean Payton does, but. I know you want to say it. What? He gets what? What What do these head coaches get? They get big heads and big uh, egos. I don't know. I thought, I thought you were going to go with your McDaniels tagline. Which is? God guys? Sometimes, man, get that, you get that mentality that everything you do is great. Everything it, everybody else does is shit. And sometimes that happens. But All, all right. right, I think we got this pick locked and loaded with the 44th pick. Second round, the Las Vegas Raiders are going to be selecting quarterback Michael Penix Jr. All right. Off the board. The way that I would have ranked those, in all honesty, oh. I would have ranked Penix. Number one would have been my choice. You know, you know who's the best player on the board now in round three? The next thing I would have gone was Brandon Fisk, then Christian Hayes, then Bo Nix is what I would have done. Best player available in round three right now? Who? Spencer Rattler. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, man. So the next guys would be Tavondre Sweat. Uh, defensive lineman from Texas. Texas. Brendan Rice, wide receiver from USC. I would say let's concentrate on positions before instead of like just the best player. So, 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 t- so I would say give me a linebacker. Who are the top linebackers? 
Linebackers, uh, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is still on there, so I'll go ahead and do that. All right, we'll put Jeremiah Trotter Jr. on there. What about a um, – put Devondra Sweat on there, defensive tackle from Texas. I mean, he's a – mount. him next to Christian Wilkins would be definitely intriguing. I don't know what it necessarily would mean for Tyree Wilson. Who's the top offensive lineman on the board would be my next question. All right, let me – hold on one second. Devondre Sweat. Yeah, I'd say top yeah. top offensive lineman and then – Maybe even a... Uh, the best offensive lineman is going to be Patrick Paul uh, tackle, tackle from, Houston. from U- Houston or Christian Mahogany guard from Boston College. Do you want to tackle or guard? Um, hang on a second here. I, Pat, I know Pat Jones is like... Um, oh, man. I don't know how to find it. What side of the ball he plays on. What is it again? Patrick Paul. Yeah, I was going to say I spelled that wrong. I think he's a right tackle. I just want to make sure before I – no, he's only played left tackle. I don't know if they would take somebody like this in the third round. Do you want the kid out of Boston College, Christian Mahogany? Christian Mahogany, sure. Throw him in there. He's an offensive guard. Though, I'm trying to – who are some other tackles, though, because our – I mean, this would be that means we're rolling with Thayer Munford at right tackle probably at this uh, point. Other tackles would be Matt Gonclaves. Um, let me see. Go to tackle. So I feel like- Patrick Paul, Dominic Pooney, Matt Conclaves, Christian Jones are the top four tackles. All right. What about running backs? Who are the top running backs? Running backs on the board. Jalen Wright, Blake Corum, Bucky Irving, Ray of, Davis. All right, how about this? Out of those names right there, what running back do you want to put in the poll? Do, do you want Mahogany still or no? Yeah, you can leave Mahogany in there. I don't love any of those other tackles like off the top of my mind right now. So give me Wright, Corum, or Irving. Who do you want as the last RB option? Yeah, I think it's between those two names right now. Um, I think Corum's got it. Let's go. Put Corum in there. Okay. All right, so the new poll here is for our third round. Remember, we got Terry and Arnold in round one. Round two, we ended up getting Michael Penix Jr. So now for round three. It is Jeremiah Trotter Jr. at linebacker. Tavondra Sweat, defensive tackle from Texas. We got Christian Mahogany, offensive lineman from Boston College, basically a guard, or Blake Corum, running back from Michigan. I'm going to let this one up to you. We got two minutes here on the clock. I know what I would do. I, uh, I know what I would do. And I'll tell you like how I would rank these from top to bottom, though this one to me is going to be close. And? This one's pretty close. Though the first one we still did was closer. Right now, Corm's in the lead with 33%. Mahogany then's got 24. Sweat at 24. And then in last place is Jeremiah Trotter. It's actually really close. Oh, this is this one's gonna come down to the warrior. This one's gonna come down to the warrior. I, we got 305 votes. So Trotter to me is uh my third ranked linebacker in this year's class. I'm gonna add 45 more seconds on there because this is really five. Or 30 more seconds. Pump it up. Pump it up. We're going to pump you up. Sweat would be a monster on the inside. I do think Mahogany would could probably be your starting right guard. Though, I want to just make sure Christian Mahogany. Mahogany! Onions. Oh, Jam- James is just in the back creating accounts voting for Blake Corum. Probably. <laughs> Christian Mahogany... I know this was an interesting prospect. I know Tom talked. Yeah, he's a right guard. Right guard prospect. Did not play in 2022. 6'3", 322 pounds. This is going to be close. I, I think, though, I, I know which way they're going to go. I, I think it's going to be Corum. I think it is, too. Hey, and it, there's 1,800 people watching. If you don't know what we're talking about or how to there do this. There is a live poll. It's at the live poll at the top of the comment section. 
We keep on changing it. All you got to do is go and click whoever you want to vote for. We have 1,700 people watching, only 400 votes. Go in there and vote who you want them to draft. I see a lot of people saying no to quorum. Then go and draft or go and pick somebody else in the live poll. If you don't vote, I, what, what is the line? If you don't vote, you can't complain about it. Correct. If you don't vote, you can't complain. 15 seconds. If you don't vote, you can't complain. Yeah, I mean, this one for me, I actually think would be a pretty easy pick, if I'm being honest for me personally. Um, could definitely go in a few different directions, obviously, but there is some, there's some talent on the board in certain spots. All right. I think the people have spoken. The people have spoken? I think so. And the pick is Blake Corum, running back from Michigan. So the way that I would do this draft, the way that I would have ranked him would have been, uh, to be real with you, it would have been Tavondra Sweat for me, number one, not all that close. Uh, he would have been the person I would have should, picked. Should have gone with one of the other picks, in my opinion. Best player on the board for our next pick, Marshawn Lloyd. Yeah, I, to be honest, the, the pick that I would have selected last would have been Blake Corm. That would have been my last one. So I would have went Sweat, number one. Uh, then I probably would have went Jeremiah Trotter at number two. Then I would have went Christian Mahogany at number three. Blake Corm would have been my fourth pick out of all those. But this show is for the nation nonetheless. Like Blake Corm in the third round or uh, Marshawn Lloyd. I mean, I'm taking, I, I have Marshawn Lloyd ranked higher for me personally. I think that would have been the so better value. Now let's look at who we have available. Trey Benson's still available somehow still too. Yep. Um, what positions do you want? Um, Guard I, Cooper uh, BB out of Kansas State is available. Put him in there. Cooper BB is, uh, that would be a pretty damn good fit, I think. I would say... Let's get an offensive guard. We got to figure out a tackle. We should probably put a tackle in, though. Again, based off some of the things that I have said or have heard, excuse me, they are very high on Thayer Munford, and like he's gonna get a shot to be the starting right tackle for the Las Vegas Raiders this season because that man, funny enough, Jermaine Illuminor signed a two-year deal with the New York Giants. So we got a guard. What uh, what other position do you want to look at? Do you want to look at tackle, you said? Yeah, let's get an offensive tackle in so there. So the best tackle on the board is Christian Jones, tackle from Texas. Christian Jones. Let me see here. God, there's just so many Christian Joneses. Yep, forget it. I can't find him. Um, all right, that's fine. If he's the top guy on the board. He's the top tackle. Just, um, the question is, is he a right tackle? Like I don't, I don't follow Texas football closely enough. Yeah, he's he, he was the starting right tackle for the past two seasons. Okay, sounds good. Um, okay, what other position do you want to look at? I would say linebacker. Throw a linebacker in there again. Linebacker. Cedric Gray is the best linebacker from uh, North Carolina. What are some other names in there? Michael Barrett, linebacker from Michigan. J.D. Bertrand, linebacker from Notre Dame. Uh, personally, I'd rather have Barrett in there, but Cedric could be another interesting name. I'm pretty sure the Raiders met with him at the Combine. Cedric? Yeah, let's go that route. Let's, uh, let's go that route. Yeah, and then Christian Jones played right tackle the past two seasons for Texas. Where he was good. His first year, though, he was a left tackle, and that, that didn't work out too well for him. Um, all right, and then what, what was the other position you want? So we got a linebacker. We got an offensive tackle. We got an offensive guard. You want to look at safety, wide receiver? What do you guys think, safety or wide receiver? What position should we do? I'm seeing some safeties in there. Let's, uh, let's look at some safeties. Safeties. Uh, Tyke Smith, safety out of Georgia. Cole Bishop, safety out of Utah. Bo Braid, safety out of Maryland. Malik Mustafa, safety from Wake Forest. And the top wide receivers on the board are? Are. Javon Baker, wide receiver UCF. I think he's really good. Malik Washington, wide receiver from Virginia. Cornelius Johnson, wide receiver from Michigan. And Taj Washington, wide receiver from USC. Uh, to be honest, if I had to pick anybody on that list out of everybody you said, I'd pick Malik Washington. From Virginia, 
the wide receiver? Yeah, I know for a fact it's been reported that the Raiders have looked at Malik Washington. Uh, I don't know if they've looked at the other guy from UCF. I have heard really good things about him. So let's go Malik Washington. There's at least been reports out do you, there. Do you want that over a safety? Yeah, let's just do that. Malik Washington. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we got an offensive guard, an offensive tackle, a linebacker, and a wide receiver here on the board. That's going to be the live pull. That's going to be the that's going to be live pull. Washington got wheels. Yes, yes he does. All right, so we got an offensive guard and Cooper BB Malik Washington this past season, um, eleven one hundred and eleven receptions, thirteen hundred yards, nine touchdowns, twelve point five yards per carry. He's a good receiver. He's a good receiver. Uh, Cedric Gray, linebacker from North Carolina. Christian Jones, right tackle from Texas. And then Malik Washington, wide receiver from Virginia. If we didn't go corner in, the, in round one, your, your guy was here too for us. Uh, Cam. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's sometimes that's why it's like fun. And I would actually tell NFL teams to like do mock drafts. And I know that you never know exactly what's going to happen. But sometimes, like, you can find, like, all right, I might pass on this guy here because I really think that the depth at, in the fourth round at running back is good, right? Or I love the depth at linebacker in the third round. So that's, that's just personally what I would do. But what do I know? I want to see. So Cooper BB has uh, been predominantly a left guard at Kansas State. So I do think that that should be something to be noted because Parham – now. Maybe you could kick Parham over to right guard. Parham has played right guard before. And maybe, you know, you give BB an opportunity to be a right guard. He just, he's never done it. Not that he's never done yeah. it. He's just, he's only played he, on the left side. He played left tackle his first season and then left guard the past two years. Correct. He did play 103 snaps last year at right tackle, I guess when they needed him in a pinch. So does that change your opinion on Cooper BB? Saying it, hey babe. Uh, you know what? I actually never put the countdown clock, so I'm gonna give you all one minute. A B B, E B B, E B B, E B B. So I think right now, it's really what it's coming down to is what do you think is the bigger need? Are you gonna draft a player? Which I will admit, Cooper B B to me is a higher graded player. Like I, he is ranked higher than uh, Christian Jones for me. However, Jones plays right tackle. B B is either gonna put you're gonna put a left guard at right guard or you're going to make Dylan Parham go play right guard. I I mean, I will say, though, Parham, if I were to do one of those two options, I would actually kick Parham over to right guard. Yeah. Parham has played right guard before, so I don't think it's like the end of the world type of discussion, but it, it's something to be thought of. And I think NFL teams, you have to think about stuff like that. Yeah. Looks like you might have to make that move. I think that's probably what it, this one's going to end up being, though. I've seen it been able to get persuaded here. Malik Washington, if you want another, like, he'd probably be your four receiver on this team. He's not better than, I mean, Trey Tucker's a, a vertical threat. Washington might be a better receiver, though. Yeah. Like, I think he might be the better overall receiver, though. I would like to see Trey Tucker in an offense where it's an actual competent offense because. His separation last year was one of the highest separation like averages in the NFL. Yeah, it's it's a pretty good one. All right. Um, looks like we've made our choice. Sounds good. We're going to go Cooper BB. The 112th pick in the Raiders report, day three NFL free agency mock draft simulator. Raiders select Cooper. A Cooper BB. BB. All right, so right now we got Terry and Arnold, Michael Penix Jr., Blake Corum and Cooper BB off the board. Next pick after the Raiders, the very next pick after the Raiders took Cooper BB, Cam Hart. Cam Hart. Um, all right. What positions are you looking at now? Uh, I think we got to go back to linebacker. Linebacker tackle. Michael Barrett's still there. Put for Michael Barrett on there. He was a team captain for Michigan. He's a, he's a hard hitting linebacker. I would say offensive tackle again. Might as well throw one in there. Wide receiver and safety. All Let's right. go wide receiver and safety. Does that sound good to you guys? Linebacker, offensive tackle, wide receiver, safety. Cloud says corner. All right, so you want the top wide receiver on the board would be... I'm listening. Uh, Zach Zinter still on the board, but we just took that. Uh, let's see. 
Top wide receivers available. Uh, Luke McCaffrey, Casey Washington, Anthony Gold, DeCorian Clark, Joshua Cephas. Say those again. Luke McCaffrey, Casey Washington, DeCorian Clark, Anthony Gold, Joshua Cephas. Luke McCaffrey actually ran a faster 40 than Christian McCaffrey. That is correct. That is correct. Um, I see some people saying McCaffrey. You know what? Let's do it. Let's put him in there. Let's put him in there. Uh, also, the Jets are re-signing punter Thomas Morstead. Thomas Morstead, uh, going right. back to the Jets. Who? What other position did you say? Safety. Safety. We need linebacker. Um, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this guy in. Unless you have any qualms, I mean it's fourth round safety. Malik Mustafa, I heard, has been impressing a lot of people. Let's do it. Safety from Wake Forest. Let's go. Let's do it. I think he was one of our winners actually at the combine. If my memory serves me correct. I don't know, though, off the top of my head. Also, y'all, we do have the new league year. It is getting ready to get started in about 35 minutes. Um, and then what was the last position? Linebacker, safety, offensive tackle. Oh, offensive tackle. Yep. Give me, give me one of the top OTs. OT, Roger Rosengarten or Javon Foster? Does anybody know Rosenberger? Rosengarten. Rosengardner. You're up. Is he a right tackle? Um, let's see. He played right tackle the past two seasons for Washington. Let's do it. Get him not, in there. Not the best uh, grader. I mean, think about this, though. You drafted Michael Penix Jr. Do you want the guy that's been blocking his blind side? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You go with the guy that's been blocking Michael Penix Jr.'s blind side. Let's go with it. All right, those are the names that are in right now. Those are the names. Okay. Somebody said Zach Zinter. I don't think they're going to put Zach Zinter if they already took a guard just because he's not going to be able to play this season. So, now again, I think the next time that we do this, I do want to figure out a way to get the names like I want to I want that mock like up on here. Yeah, I I just think for like them, I don't know like I just would. I want to be able to see it, and I think it would be easier for them to see. Well, it I mean, well. I can, I can have you see it easy. Well, I think in the future it's more valuable than, like, if we do this again, I just want that mock up on screen. That's all. I think that would be good. Just so like they could see who are like we can scroll, we can like just look at some other positions top available. Who's been picked? Because I've seen a few people are like. Is this guy here? I don't know. Mm. Next time. Next time. We're going to be doing this in March, April. I was going to say, we could do... We could do this. What do we got? What do we got? I can see a lot of clicking around. I mean, like I, I think that's fine. I just need to be able to see something. So, So here are the other players that are still on the board here. Yeah, I think this at least just gives some context. All right, so we have some of these names are on here, which, again, there's a lot, a lot of names. So I think in the future, we're, we'll have to pick, like, which positions that you should potentially look at. Um, Theo Johnson is an intriguing name that's up there. He's met with the Raiders before. But I think we have a good list of four names here. I think we have a good list of four names. So what do we have right now? We got Luke McCaffrey. Michael Barrett, Malik Mustafa, and then Roger Rosengard, an offensive tackle. So Which, the offensive tackle from Washington, who was protector of the blind side for Michael Penix Jr. Malik Mustafa, who has been an impressive safety from Wake Forest. Luke McCaffrey, the brother of Christian McCaffrey at wide receiver. Michael Barrett, linebacker at Michigan. I know how I would rank these. And if I was on the clock right now for the Raiders, I know how I would rank these. I I have a clear there's a clear number there's clear two that I would go with. There's a number three, and then there is a clear number four. For me personally. Me personally. What would you guys go with? Omar said Renfro released. That is correct. That is correct. Correct. That is 
Correct. Uh oh, can't control life says Mitch sounds tired. I'll have to get some caffeine in me. After this mock draft, I'll go get some caffeine. I got a, I got an energy drink. Gotta wake up a little bit. And uh, Luke McCaffrey at receiver is the selection by the Las Vegas Raiders. So to me, I would have ranked these at number one. I would have said Michael Barrett to me. He would have been a good fit with the Raiders defense. At number two would have been Roger Rosengarden. Get that offensive tackle, that blindside blocker for Michael Penix Jr. At number three, I would see uh, say, honestly, probably Malik Mustafa. And then at last place would have been Luke McCaffrey for me. Uh, just I'm not, as, I'm not as sold on him. I think he's getting the hype because of his name. Yeah. A good player, and I don't look at 40 times. I look at the player itself, and his combine's not as good as what his brother's was. And he's just, he's not his, he's not his brother. <laughs> he's not his brother. All right. So what, who are we going with? Okay. Um, I would say let's add some names in here. You know what? You just want to scroll down here and look at positions. I would say add Julian Pearl to the mix. Pearl's uh, at least an offensive tackle. He's he's uh, one of my, I don't want to say one of my darling prospects, but definitely a guy that I do like. I think he's ranked a little bit higher for some people than others, but he is predominantly only a left tackle. His first year at Illinois, he did play a little bit on the right side, but predominantly only a left tackle, big guy. Are there any names that you guys see up on screen we already have a running back, so we're not going to get Frank Gore Jr. Um, keep scrolling down. If there's other names that I see pop up, I'll let you guys pick them out, and then we'll kind of go from there. Eric said, anyone else heard of this Khalil Mack trade? No, the Chargers are keeping Khalil Mack. That was reported at least by Adam Schefter. Your guy Trevin Wallace is a little bit down there. Wait, Trevin Wallace is on the board? Yeah, I'd, he's ranked 245 by PFF. I mean, that's that's who I'd pick. Trevor Wall is going to go in the third round. You think? Guaranteed. I guarantee. I guarantee he doesn't make a pass round four. Round three or round four? I think he'll go in the top three rounds. I'm guaranteeing you. Though we're in round five here, right? I'm Just saying two, oh, you're in round six. Round, yeah, he he's not falling past round four. I mean, I think there's some people that have him as a top 100 prospect. Let's see. I, 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 I'm actually shocked here. Again, that's just based on what I people I talk to. The other interesting thing about Wallace is he worked with Rob Leonard at the Combine. Yeah, I, I'm, I actually have never seen Wallace rank this low. That, that would be, but again, I don't want to be persuading anyone. I want y'all to pick who you guys want to go with. That's, uh, that's what I want you guys to do. Unless the quarterback is Jaden Daniels. We can, put, we can put Trevin Wallace in there. I would put Trevin Wallace in there. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to just get like a reference point here. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of people saying Jalen Ford, but that's two linebackers. Unless you want to, I mean, if that's what they want, put them in there. That's fine. I think at this point, you're probably looking for some special teams players overall. Um, definitely something there. I want to see if I can find. And then, so ESPN, for example, has Trevin Wallace ranked as their 72nd overall player. Um, trying to see some more draft rankings here. Let's look at. The safeties, because we haven't taken a safety. I haven't taken a safety yet. These are the guys that are on the board for safety. Oh, my Lord. Uh, Trent, Dominic, Tyler. I would say, personally, for me, the name that jumps out is the kid from Kansas. I know he's a cap, like a team captain, very well valued, but... Good coverage, safety as well. I am worried though. Does his talent translate to the NFL? Because he's like he's a very smart player, but does that translate? Let's see here. People are asking about linebacker who's still available. We have two, but Trevin Wallace, Jalen Ford, Curtis Jacobs. 
Eichenberg is not available anymore now. I uh, I would I'd say just pick one. Pick top player on the board. Let's keep this mock rolling. All right. Top player on the board is going to be edge rusher Jalen Green from James Madison. Let's do it. James Madison, edge rusher. 18 sacks this past year. Holy crap. I mean, they were a good football team. If you're, They were ranked at one point. <laughs> James Madison. Get him Allie. in there. Jalen Green, James Madison edge. Good. That was, uh, yeah. That's, I'll tell you what. That is the, uh, that's the type of confidence I need from Alex. Alex, how was dinner tonight? Was it good? Yeah. She said, and I quote, she doesn't, or he doesn't push the needle. Doesn't push the needle. That's, I, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> it's, I feel like that's a good thing. All right, we have them all in? Yeah. All right, get those votes in. Julian Pearl, offensive tackle from Illinois. Trevin Wallace, linebacker from Kentucky. Jalen Ford, a linebacker on top of that. Or are we going to go Jalen Green, the edge from James Madison? Gets those in the chat right now. What are you guys I going mean, with? 18 sacks on the year, though. Oh, well, that's impressive. I mean, I will always say I think Raider fans will always be intrigued by the small school guys just because. Could he be the next Max Crosby? Could he be the next Max Crosby? The next Mad Max. I don't think we're going to find another Mad Max, though. I really don't. However, the votes for Jalen Green right now are increasing. I think, I think there are some people that are looking at some of those numbers there, and they're like, you know what, that's pretty damn good. Look at this. I mean, those are, those are impressive numbers. 89.6 pass rush grade. Yep. 18 sacks on the year. That's 6'1", 245. Oh, wow. What? It said reminds him of Max Crosby. <laughs> I can't talk for serious. I can't read it. It's too far away, so I don't know what it says. FCS. I mean, I, I think it's still I'll impressive. be real. I have not watched them. I'm not. I have no idea. No, right, but it's like the numbers are impressive. I'm no, saying for for Raider fans, I know it's different level. Eastern Michigan even, but because Crosby went to a small school, everyone's like, can that guy be the next guy that pops up out of nowhere? I'll watch him. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'm intrigued by it. Maybe not, a late-round depth guy. Not mad at it. And the clock is in. Trevin Wallace, linebacker out of Kentucky, is the pick. I'm glad that we went that route because I'm telling you all right now, Trevin Wallace is going to get taken in the top 100. You know, let's put that stamp on it. Trevin Wallace, top 100 pick. That's if my... not, Mitch has to run a half marathon. I'm not going to go that far. I'll do 50 push-ups. <laughs> oh, Jalen Green's still on the board. so Mr. Jalen Green's still on the board. I would say, let's go Jalen Green. Put Jalen Ford back in there in that mix. Put him back in there in that mix. Are we going to go get him? Oh, man, that burp. That hurt. Some other players then as well, Chugs. When you get a sec. All right, we're going to do pick. What do we got? Two, this is number 223. Pick 223 coming off the board here. Now we're in round seven. All right, uh, I have Jalen Green, Jalen Ford. Cool. Let's go with, let's go with another it? corner, Willie Roberts. Sounds good. We love our uh, La Tech guys. Uh, the little bit of the Bulldogs. Replace Amik Robertson with another. And I think he's still on the board. Let me double check. I'll, I'll put that safety from Kansas. If he's still on. Ron Raspberry says Cody frickin' Schrader. I don't even know who that is. Kenny Logan. Which I'll put, yeah, I'll put Kenny Logan on the board. Kenny Logan in? All right, let's go. Cody frickin' Schrader from Robert Jansen. And I've seen, I've seen a few people say it. I'll look into it. Cody Schrader, where do they see that? I don't know. I think maybe they're just like saying, like, is that a name? I don't know. I don't see him on here. But okay. All good. All right, so we got the pull up. I got to sneeze. 
we already took a running back, so I don't think they would double dip at running back. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you there. Somebody who I found, because it's like, the one thing I like about doing mock drafts is, especially like these late round picks, I end up like just kind of studying some of these guys and just seeing where they're at. This Rasheen Ali, from a uh, halfback from Marshall. Okay. Look at these stats that he put up this year. I can't see him. Oh, uh, this year he had 1,100 yards, 15 touchdowns, 5.4 yards per carry. The past three seasons, he's had 5.4, 5.8, 5.6 yards per carry. And in 2021, so he got hurt in 2022. He only played three games. In 2021, as a freshman, 13 games played, 1,300 yards, 23 touchdowns. That's impressive. I mean, it's at Marshall, but it's still that's a that's a Division One school. Sure, but I'm still like, dude, that's impressive. My small school running back that I like is Vital from Troy. He's uh, uh, talking about small, small school, but isn't he like five eight? He's a tiny guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a little feller. He's a he's a little guy. I think this one is a, a lock. I think we're getting Jalen Green. I don't. I don't see anybody getting close to him. I don't know. We'll see. What do you guys think so far of this mock? I mean, we're gonna we're gonna get the results in. I'll let you grade it. I'll give my honest grade. I will say I got a pee soon. I can already. I can feel it coming. We haven't even really drank that much. I mean, I have done a boo in two or three beer bongs. I. I'm telling you, this is all just catching up to me from the right. last few days. Jalen Green is Jaylen the pick. Jalen Green is the pick, which that means we got two more to go. Last pick. Last pick. All right. Um, okay. Where do we, where do we want to go? Where are we going? Where are we going? We can go. What are what are the? Is your guy still? If your guy still up, I'll put him. Trey Knox. I know Knox is there. Oh nope, your guy's actually already gone. Who? Vital or whatever. Oh yeah, no, he's. I thought you meant somebody else. Um, I would say pick out. So lost in times. I'll go with. Vincenzo is saying Trey Knox. So I'll 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 put him up in there. Sounds good. And then I'd say let's go with. Oh, I need to finish that poll first. What the other one? Oh, I see what you're saying. I got it. It's gone. Start a new poll. I see Hampton from Alex Lanier. I don't even see Hampton on there. Can you guys give me some positions? Because you're just saying the name Jones. All right, I'm gonna go Willie Roberts again. There's a lot of Joneses, believe it or not. CB. Somebody said a long snapper. Uh, Dov, it doesn't appear the Eagles are in contention for Justin Simmons. Interesting. No Justin Simmons. Well, they did They did get uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson. All right, Lost in Tines wants Isaiah Davis, running back from the Jackrabbits. Okay. Is a really good athlete. But remember, we did take Blake Corum in round three. Okay. Took Corm in round three. Dominic Hampton, safety from Washington. Carmela Super Chat said, Hunter was so fine, though. No Jimmy either. Yeah, Carmela, I, I, I agree with Mike's comment here. We want championships. You're not, you're not going to win a championship with Jimmy Garoppolo, unfortunately. Um... Then we'll go with final one. What do we think? Somebody said Trent Jones. J.J. Weaver. Trajan Jeffcoat. You pick. Layden Robinson is a name that I see down there. Uh, Ron Raspberry is just Cody... I mean, I, I got a. Who is this person? Cody Schrader. 
I don't know. I'm he's, gonna look him up. He's not. He's not there. I just yeah. looked him up. All right, Cody Schrader's not available. I'm going Dylan McMahon, center. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I was like, at this point, get me a. We got to get something. All I gotta right. pee. I gotta pee. I gotta pee. I gotta All pee. Right. I'll give y'all a minute to choose this one. All right, we got Willie, last pick. Willie Roberts, corner, Isaiah Davis, running back, Dominic Hampton, safety, or we're going to go Dillick McMahon, Dylan McMahon at center. This one's going to be intriguing to me. I mean, the last pick, again, I'm looking for special teams. All right, according to Jordan Schultz, Calvin Ridley's market has been very strong of a leaf to be a two-horse race between the Jags and the Patriots. Interesting. I mean, it's almost sounded like he wanted to remain in Jacksonville, but it could have just been because he wants more money. Yeah. Like, he's like, give me more of the payday. I mean, also, if you're a receiver and maybe you don't like the length of your contract, you don't know who that quarterback's going to be. Yeah. You're like, you know, it's Trevor Lawrence, at least. Like, I'd rather have Trevor Lawrence than J.J. McCarthy. I mean, maybe in year one. Maybe in year one. The pick is in. Willie Roberts, cornerback from La Tech, off the board. All right, so here we go. Here is our mock draft. We ended up getting Terry and Arnold in round one, Michael Penix Jr. round two, Blake Corm round three, Cooper Beebe, Luke McCaffrey, Trevin Wallace, Jalen Green, Willie Roberts. So get your grades in. A, B, C, D, or F. How would you grade it? A, B, C, D, or F. Our Raiders report free agency mock draft. A, B, C, D, or F. According to PFF, our worst pick was Luke McCaffrey. And our two best picks were Terry and Arnold and Michael Penix Jr. For me personally, I think Terry and Arnold is a solid pick. I think Michael Penix Jr., that value is good. The picks that I like the least are Blake Corum and Luke McCaffrey for me personally. Um, I think Trevin Wallace, you being able to get him there is a steal. Like If you put Trevin Wallace as your third round pick, bump down and everybody else, I would say this draft would actually look a lot better to me personally because I do see Wallace going in the top 100, which is, again, PFF having Wallace as a C grade is in round six is just insane to me. Um, I would probably give this draft overall a B minus. Like I like Cooper BB. You add some good interior depth there. You do get a reliable running back in Corm. However, I do think Corm and Zamir White are very similar in their own regard. Obviously, some upside in Jalen Green. And then, but again, you you got a quarterback in round two. You're able to keep some of those draft picks. To me, the worst pick in this draft is McCaffrey. And then I'd say the second worst that we did was Corm. I'm gonna give it a B minus grade. Really? I give it a B minus. Not loving Luke McCaffrey. I just I I think it's a name. I I when I watch him, I don't see it. Like I when I watched Chris McCaffrey, it was like that guy's a clear difference maker to me. Luke McCaffrey is not. Like he doesn't move the way that his brother does. He's not quick twitchy like Christian is. All right, Chugs. I gotta go take a leak though. All right. I gotta go take a leak. I believe we have some super chats that I need to catch up on. What's up, Graf? Good to see you, my man. Graf, what do, you, what do you think? This was a mock draft we just did with the chat. Give it a grade. A, B, C, D, or F. I got to go take a little tinkle. All I got to right. get some caffeine in me, too. Got to get some caffeine in me. All right. Let me move some stuff around. Uh-huh. Really? All right. I'll be right back. St. Michael. Oh, let me do that so it changes the top. There we go. All right. I'll just save that so we can maybe take a picture of that later. St. Michael, could we cancel Uncle Rico contract if we get JF1? I think I think Mitch did answer this one, though. Um, in essence, yes, but the Raiders would never do that because if you did that to somebody in the tampering period, n next year nobody would want to sign with the Raiders during that tampering period. So it'd be like, they will just go back on their word. Uh, DJ Faze. When would we see moves today, before or after three? Well, we were hoping we would see him all day today, 
The only move the Raiders have made so far is the signing of tight end Harrison Bryant. Uh, Graf says he loves this. Oh, okay. He loves the mock. I had to reread that for a second. Didn't know what he was saying at first. I saw love the, it was mock. So Graf loving the mock a lot. Just mock, mock, mock everywhere. Mock here, mock there, to the window, to the wall. Um, yeah, we're, we're hoping to see some moves, but maybe now that, uh, now that Renfro, Jimmy G, they're going to be cleared off the books, not designated as June 1st cuts, which me and Mitch both thought that the, that's the route the Raiders were going to go. They decided to cut them now so they can use the money now. So it, may, it would only make sense for them to make a move coming up either today or tomorrow. Hopefully it doesn't happen uh, as soon as we leave the office because that would blow. Um, but hopefully the Raiders making some moves, already working the phone lines with that money that they're going to get. John Gruden joining an Italian football league team. I was going to say, did you not like post that tweet and just laugh a little bit inside? John Gruden. Um, Carmella says Hunter was so fine, though. No Jimmy either. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Um, also, are you guys in the Bay Area? I'm in San Francisco right now. No, we are actually based in Dallas. So, not in the Bay Area. Shout out where you're from, though. Where are you watching from right now? <laughs> Nico says John Gruden to the Seamen. Yeah. Um, shout out where you're watching from right now. Where are you watching from? We, I know we have people all over the U.S., all over the world. Shout out your city. Where are you watching from right now? The Lesbos in Albuquerque. I see Jesse McMurtry in Montana. Javier's from Miami. Vegan Tapatio Corn Dog says Bay Area. Quiet Storm is in Vegas. Queen Sarah Auto in Missouri. I see Vegas from Taj Tears. Let me know. Where are you watching from? Get in the comment section right now. Let me know where you're watching from. Been a slow day of free agency so far. I'll, I'm going to break down some of the moves that have happened so far in NFL free agency today. Um, pretty quiet day. I see Philadelphia from Mike. I am punchy is from Merced, California. Juan Hernandez is from Vegas. Uh, Vicar is from Oakland. Albuquerque from Ray. Jamo H is from the UK. T.O. is watching from Vegas. Hella High from Porterville, California. Makes sense. Awesome from Porterville. Jose Romero. Maybe y'all can uh, meet up. Say, what, say what's good. Robert from Port Ritchie, Florida. Blue Gas from Tacoma, Washington. Anthony Parks from Los Angeles. John Scheffler from Pittsburgh, California. David Rubio. 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 Uh, let's see, David, anything new? Last thing I saw was Chicago tight end. Yeah, I mean, not a lot of moves to break down today. Um, the biggest name would probably be Jordan Whitehead, safety, signs with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Only two years, $9 million deal, so a really good value deal right there for the Buccaneers. Besides that, Khalil Mack restructuring his content, uh, contract Staying with the Chargers. Mike Williams getting cut by the Chargers. Um, what other big moves happened today? Jake Elliott stays with the Eagles, gets an extension. Malik Collins, defensive tackle, traded to the 49ers. Morgan Moses, tackle, traded to the Jets. That one makes a lot of sense. Um, earlier today, Mac Hollins to the Bills, one-year deal. Today is, I think it's about the pickup, though. 
think so? Yeah, I think once a lot of things become officially official, that's like when technically like money, you know, starts to like actually like, like you officially have the money. Then like I would almost kind of look at it as like at three o'clock for a lot of teams is like payday, right? Like yeah, the day before your payday, you're like I know I'm about to get paid, so I'm not going to spend money now, but tomorrow. I'm going to spend money. And I think like that's what's going to happen here in about six minutes. I think news is going to become official. People are going to understand how much money they officially have, which you should already know. But then this is when some more stuff will start to come out. Because the other, the other like, I guess, problem, if you will, <laughs> is some players, like, you know, they, they can't negotiate or else that is – so, tampering. So I was talking to one of my buddies this morning. He's a Cowboys fan. And I wanted to get your opinion on this. All right. Um, I've heard, obviously, our HQ. I told you, everybody's shouting out their city right now. I told you we are located in the city of Dallas, Texas. Um, so I have a couple Cowboys friends. He was saying. I'm listening. I think I might be done with Dak Prescott. They're not building around him. I don't think that he can take this team to a Super Bowl this year. As we know, last year of Dak's contract is this season. Yep. Can't get tagged. Has a no-trade clause, which he can waive for the right team. Say the Raiders miss out on quarterbacks this year. Okay. Cowboys start 0-5. Okay. Trade deadline's coming up. Would you trade for Dak Prescott? No. No? I, I, I view Dak as a very good quarterback. Very good quarterback. To me... If that's even an option in your mind, you're going to have to give up at least. Honestly, I think Dak goes for two, three first-round picks. I, well, no, that, that's, the, that's the whole thing. He's on the last year of his deal. They'd already, in essence, be maybe losing him if you could get him for like a, like a Brian Burns. Like, same thing with Brian Burns. He was going for two firsts last year. Right, now that he's in a contract year, a second and a fifth. Second and a I think a team would still offer him more than that. The bigger question is, are you going to give Dak Prescott $60 million a year? Because well, and, that's the and, and that's why that's why it would be cheap to trade for him. Because you'd have to pay him on the back end. You'd have to give him a new I'm not contract. giving Dak Prescott $60 million a year. Like, the team that he ends up going to, when it, when you look at reports, it sounds like that's what his team is asking for. Like, if, if that, my point was going to be, if that's even the back of your mind for the Raiders, then, like, I, I'd rather you trade the farm to go up and get one of those rookies and figure that situation out on a cheap three, four years instead I, of I do have to say, Dak, Dak Prescott, like, way better than Justin Fields. Oh, Christ, yeah. Way better than Justin Fields. I, mean, Dak's a, I think Dak's the top 10 quarterback. I mean, he had an MVP caliber season last year. He was in the running for MVP. However, though, I, I feel like I go right back to the same conversation of if I'm going to pay my quarterback all that money, I want to be able to, in the playoffs, look at that QB in the huddle and know that I have the utmost confidence in that guy. I don't care anybody out there right now. There is not a single person alive that would say, I want Dak Prescott to be my quarterback in the playoffs. And if that's your mindset, you don't get that guy. Like He's a, he's a very talented QB. Very talented QB. I mean... But I'm not... I'm not going to trade he, for a dude if, if that I think... he had his season last year on the Raiders, that might be the best quarterback season by any Raiders quarterback of all time. Great. You're, sure. Maybe. Awesome. Think about that, though. What, what He was awful in that playoff game. I mean, that's been his problem. And same thing with, like, Kirk Cousins is you can pay all these guys in the regular season. I get it. Regular season, it's happy-go-lucky. But you're not going to remember that down the road. Like you don't pay a quarterback 55, 60 million dollars to get you to the playoffs. You're paying a quarterback that amount of money to win you a Super Bowl. I, I don't think Dak can do it. I, I do think the Raiders have a lot better defense than the Cowboys. I agree with that. I, I don't know if it's a lot better. I think the Cowboys last season had one of the best defenses in the NFL and they Dak still could not get it done. And now this next season, the Cowboys are going to take a massive regression losing Dan Quinn on defense. To me, though, I think that they're going to keep him. Like, if you're the Cowboys and you say that you're going to go all in, I get Jerry's insane. But you're the only team in the NFL that has not signed a free agent yet. To me, that means you're stocking up money. Well, they didn't make any moves to create cap space. They could have now, done something with Michael Gallup. Again, they, I don't follow the Cowboys. I just, it's, they, I don't know. They didn't do anything to create cap space before free agency. They didn't 
restructure any contracts. They didn't do anything with Michael Gallup. That, that is telling me that they're trying to keep their op- options open of not restructuring these guys, not doing stuff, to after this season get rid of people if it doesn't work out. People are saying that Dak's not going to get $60 million. I mean, I think the one thing you guys also have to think about every year is the salary cap continues to go up, right? Like, I'll tell you this, Dak is not getting anything less than 50 So this past season. I know that for a fact. This past season, Dak, 70, almost 70% completion percentage. Yep. 4,500 yards, 36 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Also, it's officially rating, the new league year. A QB rating of 105.9. Cool. What'd they do in the playoffs? It was an embarrassing game. I'm just saying, from the quarterback options, what's what's a better option than Dak Prescott that you have right now? Do you trust Michael Penix or Bo Nix or Aiden O'Connell or Gardner Minshew over Dak Prescott? Say that again? So do you trust any of these four guys over Dak Prescott? Aiden O'Connell, Gardner Minshew, Michael Penix, Bo Nix. No. Of course not. No. And where do you go? I'm not trading for Dak. That's where I go. I think that I'm going to have a better chance winning a Super Bowl. This is even coming from me. Is if you line up Gardner Minshew under center and build a fantastic team around him. Compared to trading for Dak Prescott, paying him $60 million. Because again, the Cowboys were stacked last season. They had an unbelievable offense, and they had one of the best defenses in the league. It didn't matter. Like, what you can't afford is if putting a QB like Dak on a team that where Dak has well, to carry that the, team. Their defense, one of the, one of the best. It was. Their run, de- their run defense sucked. It, throughout the season, it did as well. Their, defense, their team was their, built their on. Their run defense sucked. It, yes, but their defense was and built on the idea. And it got exposed by Aaron Jones in the playoffs. That's, that's what happened. Well, Jones has exposed them his entire career. Yes. I think the Cowboys, though, were a team where if they got to a lead and their team was built on being able to get after the quarterback, they were tough to beat because they had some of the best edge they, rushers. They also if lost, you got the lead on them, they They also struggled. lost Trayvon Diggs. Sure. Yeah, so here. bad run defense, you lose your CB1. The defense really struggled. Um, and I mean... Honestly, even though, let's see. I mean, which a lot of these numbers were probably, you know, second half stats. I mean, I see some people saying I'd rather have Derek Pre- Carr than Dak. Pre- no, Prescott you went. No, you wouldn't. 41 of 60 for 400 yards, three touchdowns, two picks. I'm just surprised that we're having this conversation right now. I feel like you're, if, if there would have been somebody who I was like not thinking would be in the corner for Dak, it's you. That, I, uh, yeah, I hate the Cowboys. I know. Dak on the Raiders, though? They would be I good. I kind of like it. If this is Madden. I kind of like it. If it's Madden, you're like, sure, we're just putting Dak, and you don't pay him anything. But yeah, even no, that, I mean, you're eventually going to have to pay a quarterback. Sure. Will that quarterback be better than Dak? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. But to me, I'm not going to win a Super Bowl with Dak Prescott. Therefore, I'm not going to go get him. I don't. I mean, but the same could have been said about Matthew Stafford. A lot of people were like, Stafford can't win the big game. He can't win the playoffs. He's not. He's a regular season stat patter guy. Goes to another team. I never in the said LA that, Rams. Though. I didn't. Some people did. I didn't. You you always thought he had it in him to win a Super Bowl. Mm, I more. I was more confident in Stafford's abilities than Dak Prescott's. You think yes. Stafford's a better quarterback than Dak? Right now. It's close. And Staff- if he's two, not better than two Stafford years, won when a qu- Stafford got traded before his arm injury, yes, Stafford was a better quarterback than Dak. I would have said that. I again, I I don't know why we're deba- debating Dak. It's I, not happening. It very much possibly could. I don't know. It, Dak is a very good quarterback. He gets ripped on because he's the Dallas Cowboys QB, but he's not somebody that if I'm running an NFL organization, I'm DK. targeting. Would you want Dak on the Raiders? <laughs> She's saying no. Exactly. See, DK knows ball. Be careful. Would you rather... I mean, if that if we're just going to talk about adding quarterbacks like that, I'd rather you sign Russell Wilson to that 1.2 instead of Dak. Like, to me, Dak is better than Russell Wilson. 
But is it all that close? I don't know. What's up, Brett? What? I said, how does he compare to Aiden O'Connell? Who, Dak? Yeah. I mean, come on. I, I mean, la- nobody la- last here, year of his contract, it seems like... Nobody here thinks Aiden's better than Dak. I, like, I, there's joking matters. Here. No, I, I'm yeah. saying, legitimately, there's nobody alive that thinks Aiden's a better quarterback than Dak. Oh, my God. There's so, no I, way. I dare you to tweet it. I, I think... <laughs> nobody thinks that. You can I, say it, nobody and, thinks it. And, and I truly do believe everybody's, like, heard Jerry Jones say, we're going all in this season, and thinking, oh, they're going to, you know, put all their chips in the middle of the table, they're going to sign all these guys... I think what he really meant by it is we're going all in this season, which the guys we have, if we don't win it this season, we're the, blowing it up. The Bears are signing Brett Rippin, quarterback. Oh, let's go. Oh, dude. They got their Justin Fields replacement. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweet this out just to see how many people freak out. Justin Fields is so getting traded. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but I just want you all to know the tweet that I just put out is a 100% troll job. However, y'all know the amount of – dude, by the way, the amount of people that were blowing up my Twitter yesterday was insane, bro. It was – people were like, I don't see how you could say this about Gardner Minshew, and then you do this. Uh, Blake Rippon – Brett Rippon, yeah, sorry. Ended up signing a uh, one-year you, deal with – the Chicago Bears. So the joke is, obviously, now they're trading Justin Fields. I missed what the thing was about Gardner Mitchell. I mean, other than his photo. Oh, uh, our wheel mm. landed on, I got to uh, do a tweet for Mitch. So that's what I tweeted out. <laughs> yeah. He said he, he, he said the caveat was I couldn't put out any fake news. Well, like, like I didn't, yeah, Raiders I, signing I didn't want Tyree that. Kill or something. Well, technically what I did put out is fake news to what Mitch actually believes. But. Yeah, but there's no harm in that. Like, I didn't want him to put out, like, Raiders trading for Khalil Mack. <laughs> right? Like, that, that, didn't, that I didn't want. That I didn't want. Oh, man. And this is also the best, worst time of the year where everybody now is just going to start doing the, it's officially official. Like the Eagles. <laughs> it's official. We have signed Saquon Barkley. Dude. So I, I follow him because he's really good for Texans news and rumors. But Aaron it's, Wilson is the king of next day tweeting stuff that happened yesterday. Yeah, it's, it's brutal. The Texans have signed – he literally tweeted this morning, the Texans have signed Daniil Hunter. Yeah. I was like, thanks. Yep, thank you. Uh, Brandon Johns, I mean, I'm down for Elmo CB1. Don't know what this means. I feel like this, is a, this has got to be a prank. Elmo CB1. It, it's funny that Shy Guy is saying this. Chug sounds like a Cowgirls fan. If you actually knew me. I just said it. If there's the one person that shits on the Cowboys the most in our office, it's Chugs. He has a t-shirt in the back that says Bench Dak. Start, Cooper Rush MVP. Cooper Rush MVP. Where when Tom used to work here and now Tom's up in Cincinnati, that was like the go-to. <laughs> it was, that, was, that was the go-to. That's funny. Uh, if, my, if, if my friends could see me now on this live, they'd be like, we're proud of you. Um, proud of you. And he says, and I'm from El- uh, Arizona. Elmo. I, I feel like that was a typo. Brandon, what did you mean by... I don't know. Alex just sent me a whole bunch of random pictures, which it has obviously something to do with the wedding. It's like... No context, though. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. And then? <laughs> oh, wait. I think those are different themes. Like, different. I think it's themes, too, but is it just themes overall? I think so. It's like, which theme Our do you wedding like? design and color palette. Obviously. OC, can I get an update for Raiders free agent uh, activity today, please? The only move that's happened today, Harrison, Harrison Bryant. Bryan. Which, I will say... Not a sexy move, but it is a good move. So I like for, Harrison Bryant. For, for the people that have been watching the show pretty often, I, I've been saying if I'm the Raiders, I go out and I find a good blocking number two tight end. And, you know, the name that we always brought up was Mercedes Lewis because he's followed Luke Getze around. <laughs> Harrison Bryant, though, has been in the NFL for four years. And to me, he is a better – he's better than Austin Hooper for, way, for the way uh, that the Raiders are going to use him. Harrison, odds 
Odds you asked Alex if you can do a silver and black color palette. Odds or zero? That, that's a waste of time. Od odds you just text her. There's so a better chance that the Raiders trade for Dak Prescott in the next minute than me getting a silver and black palette. For no, just, just texting her. Obviously, like, as a joke. All right, we'll see. What, what are the odds? Just say, hey, say, hey, somebody sent in a $500 super chat. Can hey. we do a silver and black color palette for our wedding? All right, I'll, I'll freak her out. Hey, so um, how much for a silver and black color palette? I totally spelled palette wrong, but that's okay. So I'm, I'm not, not... Also, officially official... Uh, Michael Thomas, post-June 1st release. Wow. Not, not gonna get... Lord Cameron Abbott Bang! The first bang of the new year. Lord Cameron Abbott. Alex said, so our, uh, our hashtag, what was your and Danny's hashtag? Did you have one or no? No. So Alex and I, our hashtag is forever ends. I know. If you guys look it up on IG, you see all of our pictures. We've been doing it for like four years at this point now. Forever ends. Forever ends. But, but it's just one R at the end of forever. Yes. It's forever, capital R at the end, ends. Yes. Yeah. Wait, is it really? Yes. Forever ends. That's, I was I was actually joking. That's I'm, cool. I'm actually I'm actually not 100 percent sure. I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's it. You guys can look it up. It's all of our pictures. We've been we've been using like I said for like four years now. Um, but she said hashtag forever divorced if it's silver and black. See, she wants the color she sent me: greens, pinks, yellows, and browns. Think me. I don't know. Though I'll admit. Where we're getting married is, it's like very dark inside. Somebody said hashtag forever Ren 365. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> forever Ren 365. I uh, freaking love it. Odd you have something Raiders in your wedding. Hang on. Let me do this first. Ugh. Um, odds I have something Raiders in my wedding that Alex knows about. 0% chance that that happens. I'll figure out something, though. Inside of your suit, the interior lining is just the Raiders logos. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess it depends what it is exactly. I don't know yet. I'll think of something. This will be our secret. I'll get something. I don't know what it is. It might be my ring, a silver ring, but <laughs> I don't know. See, the, the other thing is this. Alex is a wedding planner, so, like, she just is, she's dotting all the I's. She's crossing all the T's, and she just, she's on top of everything. Hmm. Henry Lamberti, as an FAU alum, I'm excited to see Harrison Bryant in Las Vegas. Now, Henry, uh, we're actually uh, bitter rivals. I don't know if you knew this. Oh, yeah? F FAU, UNT. Really? Go Mean Green! Go F Mean Green. F FAU. F FAU. Go Mean Green. GMG all day, baby. GMG. Go that's, Mean Green. That's funny. The meanest of the greens. Yeah, I think, uh, you, know, you know what I might be able to do? It's actually something I've been looking into. Neck tat. No. Um, no. I would say... I'm going to get like a whiskey. However, we were thinking about getting another drink. And one of the ideas that I was going to do was going to be Alex drink, the Mitch drink. And then we we're going to get a Chuck drink. And I jokingly was like, we got to find like a, a drink that we can like dye black. Or we we're going to do water. One of the two. Uh, that was Chuck's drink. I could Silver and black. I could just tell her it's Chuck. But we know. Fingers crossed, right? Fingers crossed. As a Raider fan, I'd love Dak. <sighs> I think it just comes down to the money and how much you'd have to give up for him. I mean, I, I know that it's trying to, you're trying to improve at every position. 
I would be like if the Raiders announced right now that Dak Prescott is the Raiders quarterback, like I wouldn't sit up here and be pissed off about it. I would want to know what are the ins and outs about it. it. It would just be more of a if I was the GM of this team, it wouldn't be what I would do. You have to wait for the second super chat though. Is what a goof would say. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Dude, that's elite. That's that's next level trolling right there. That's next level. Spam David Rubio. That's elite. Rubio. 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 Dude, that was good. That was good. <gasps> Holy shit. <laughs> if Rubio sends in a one hundo, I'll do a boot. That's my deal to Rubio. Also, we're about 135 from a boot from you. Yeah. We're getting close. Uh, Brandon, sorry, I meant Elvis Presley. Ah, Elvis Presley. I will be having a little... I don't know what Brand is Johns is talking about here. We will, he he we said, will I be mean, playing. I'm down for Elmo at CB1. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm not... Did somebody any... check on Johns right here. I'm a little bit worried about him. Hypothetical, but what is Mac worth in a trade? Not worth it. I would say... Oh! Oh! See! Raider! Bang! What's up, OC? Pull up to the scene with my OC missing. Congrats, Mitch. Happy for you and your girl. This bang is for Chugs. Drink up. A Chuggy Bowl. Wow, I'm, I'm honored. Which means we are 30. 30 away Way. from a boot. From, a boot. <laughs> <laughs> from the boot, boot, skadoot, uh, People were saying maybe you just have me sing y'all's first dance song and I, I sing like the autumn wind <laughs> dude she would throw you <laughs> she just she would push you off you, of the roof have you seen um oh what is it what the wedding it, singer no it's uh <laughs> it's like kung pao like kung pao or it's like a funny like fake bruce lee movie he's like chosen one no no you sound like shishimi <laughs> Uh, the uh, 49ers have officially released Eric Armstead. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. All right. So, again, the Raiders Come are not down. using their post-June 1st cut designations, just so all y'all know. Uh, the Raiders officially have cut Jimmy Garoppolo, Brian Hoyer, Jerry Tillery, Hunter Renfro, and they have now saved and created... Twenty-one point eight million to use this year. You've never seen Kung Pao? I don't think so, dude. <laughs> one of the main characters is this chick who has one breast. Oh, dude, I have seen this movie. <laughs> Chosen one. I have, dude. That's that came out thirty years ago, though. Chosen one. I have a hundred percent seen that movie. That's an old movie reference, right <laughs> the there. The chick with one breast. Mitch, you need to get culture. Chugs, you need to get Mitch cultured. I just didn't watch a lot of TV, man. Chosen one! This one. OC! With the ceiling missing. Um, all right. Going back to Rubio. Rubio. Oh, he said Raiders report intro music for your walk-in at the wedding. Walking down the aisle to the... Chuck would be like, not this again. No, I, I think we uh we already have our walkout song. That's already uh that's already a done deal. <laughs> DJ face. What? Chosen one! Ooh wee 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 <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I guess I gotta hear this. I don't wanna you can't play it now, I'm worried yeah, about but dude. there's a scene where it where it's just thirty seconds and he's running through a field and she's like, Chosen one! Chosen one! It's legit like 30, 45 seconds. Of that? What yes. if that's just our new intro? That, that's what you guys listen to on the countdown. Chosen one! <laughs> so um, like, search I. I'd rather get eliminated by Lizzo in a WWF Royal Rumble than trade for Dak Prescott. I'd rather kiss Lindsay Lohan after a drunk night than trade for Dak. I mean, honestly, those two things 
not I mean not fun, but in the grand scheme of things, don't sound like the In the worst. grand scheme of things, you're in a Royal Rumble on WWF. Yeah. That's a that's a memorable experience, even if it is against Lizzo. And you and you kissed one of the two actors in the parent trap. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Still looking for a twin. Yeah. Though like Lindsay Lohan back in her I haven't seen Lindsay Lohan probably since at mean girls. It's a little it's a rough. Yeah. Not not as bad as you think, but not good either. It's not not Britney Spears bad. No, no. Okay. No, no, no. She she like randomly owns this like I don't know if it's like an island or Charizards can Lizzo play right guard. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, you guys kill me sometimes. <laughs> I would rather have Lizzo than Trent Williams, correct? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Not as bad as you think, but not great. I mean, Lindsay Lohan's, that's okay. I mean, you can just tell, like, she's had, like, some plastic surgery. So. Oh, there's no doubt. Yeah. Um, but I think she owns, like, a resort or something in Greece. Like, she loves Greece. She owns, like, some sort of, like, resort. Jersey or, like, boy. Beach, like, resort or something. And she, like, parties there a ton. I mean, that, by the looks of it, I get it. She looks like she tripped and fell into Barbie. That that's what she looks like, uh, but yeah, search I. So, it's funny because we went to the hundred. Which, if we skip your super chat, normally we all. If somebody sends in a hundred, we always go directly to them. So yeah. don't worry, we're gonna we'll go to we'll, all. We'll them. roll back. He oh. goes, Chugs, please don't skip my super chat. You skipped it. Please go back. Please yeah. go back. Yeah, don't worry. The way if you send in a hundo, you bang. You kind of just skip the line, jump to the front. Also, I know that we've been doing different things. Two o'clock didn't really seem like it hit all that well last time. I know. The great Brandon Jasper got in on it. So uh, how about this? Every 250 likes. He said, Lizzo's better than Trent Brown. Every 250 <laughs> likes, we'll, we'll do a wheel spin. Oh, my God. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. Okay. Every 250 likes, we'll do a wheel spin, which means oh. we are 100 likes away right now from our next one. Um, Today's been a snacky day for me because I didn't like my salad. Did you eat my salad? Crushed it. Was it good? Did you like it? It was all right. Like... Again, I'm not a big apples and salad person. Yeah. Alex likes that. Danny got me these 100 calorie pack little. You want to try one? A little chalky. I'm okay. A little chalky right. wafer. I'll just take one. Not bad. It's like, remind me of like Golden Grams, or like the Teddy Grams. That's a good comp. I mean, if I had like a cup of coffee, a little Dunkarooski. And, I'm, and then I'm chilling. See, like, if I eat cookies, that's what I want. I want coffee. Mm. Like, recently I've been making a lot of um, coffee-flavored ice cream in my creamy. And then I bought I bought some cookies, which was a dis- I should not have done it because I can't. Yeah. I have no self-control. Rich, Rich Wolf, I've been, I've been eating a ton of salads ever. Well, I, I lost some weight before the wedding. Then I went to an all-inclusive resort, uh, gained some of it back. <laughs> that's what um, you're supposed to do, though. And then now I'm back to some salads. So I've been trying to eat a little bit healthier. Yesterday I had some chicken salad, which, I mean, for salads, it's not the <laughs> healthiest. But healthier than what we had yesterday, which was sliders and chicken tenders. Yeah, that's true. I saw a video, Alex sent one to me about like eating healthy in like 2024. And it was like this woman, she's just like wrapping everything in like a salad. Like, she's just doing her lettuce wrap. And then the last one is, like, a milkshake from Sonic, and she just puts, like, lettuce around it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah, it's, uh, that's, my problem is I have such a sweet tooth that as soon as I get started, it's really hard for me to, like, stop eating sweets. I, I love sweets. That's why I've been doing a lot of no sugar added stuff. Like, I have these no sugar added milk chocolate peanuts. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor is right. Not a sponsor. You know who is, though? Let's hear it. Today's show sponsor is Prize Picks. I do love me some Prize Picks, man. Prize Picks, NBA, college basketball. Right now, the deal of the day for them is James Harden, 3.14 points. If you want to get in on that action, I actually had a text message earlier that said, Killa said, if I want to use his, I can use it. So, Killa which is kind of crazy, sent me a picture on prize picks. He won $1,740. Mm. 
Wow. He did a $58 flex play for the Super Bowl. He had Isaiah Pacheco more than 16 and a half rushing attempts. Fred Warner more on eight tackles. Harrison Buckner more than one and a half field goals made. Noah Gray more than one and a half receptions. Travis Kelsey more than 17 fantasy points. And then McCaffrey more on 23 and a half fantasy points. Put that down. Uh, for the Super Bowl, six-pick entry, 58 bucks. Turn that into $1,740. That's awesome. That's why you should play prize picks. And in a game like that, which I was telling you guys during the Super Bowl, like, this is the perfect time to do prize picks because at the end of the day, we didn't want either team to win. But you know what? I guarantee you this. My man Kill is going to be like, he's going to remember that game for a long time because he's like, shit, man, I was able to put $1,740 in my pocket. But you're not always going to win that much, obviously. You're also going to lose sometimes, too. That's what happens. However, you are going to have at least a fun time watching a game. So if like you're sitting around tonight and you're like, ah, man, there's no games going on, look up some games, go to prize picks, even pick a few players from that game. And I promise you this, you're going to be locked into that game, whether it's Points, rebounds, assists, it could be any type of sport. You, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm good on that. <laughs> you can get started at pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Just make sure that you use code CLNS for a first-time deposit match up to $100. <laughs> Those links are going to be available to you in the comments and in the description of today's show. Thursday Night Football, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thursday night football, absolutely. However, God forbid the biggest thing in the world were to have. Raiders trade up for Jaden Daniels. I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm in trouble. One of the players that got released today, and I'd be really, really interested to see, Tyus Bowser, I think could be another intriguing linebacker pick. He's got some connections with some of the Raiders coaches if, uh, if we wanted to go down that route. Jay Roy. Uh oh. He says, sign Kyle Bowler to be our starting QB. He's solid. No chance. Yep. Sign Kyle Bowler to be our starting QB. Also, again, this is from Tashawn Reed. He's interacting with some people and had the opportunity to meet Tashawn at Media Day. Cool guy. He's interacting with uh, some people on social media. And some people are like, is this the beginning of the Aiden O'Connell era? And Deshaun was like, they gave Gardner Minshew $15 million fully guaranteed. Like, I know a lot of people think that Aiden O'Connell's still the QB1. He's the QB3. We don't have a QB1 yet. Can you read this next one for me? The Chosen One. Ooey, 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 ooey. <laughs> chosen One! Ooey, 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 ooey. Oh, man. Did yeah. I say Elvis? I mean, Ed, Ed, and Eddie for CB1, 2, and 3. Yep. Uh-huh. And again, the, the updates are going to start coming in here that the Raiders have officially released. Jimmy Garoppolo, Hunter Renfro, Jerry Tillery, Brian Hoyer, all that stuff. It's coming in, which we already knew. The Raiders are saving now up to $21 million in salary cap space that they're adding so right now, I'd say they're probably somewhere around like thirty-seven million. Oh wow! In cap space, what? What do you got for <laughs> me? The trade just came out. The official for Joe Mixon. It was yep. a seventh-round pick, but it's a conditional twenty twenty-five seventh-round pick. Yeah, that's that's a good deal. I mean, if you're you're honestly hoping that you give up that pick. Oh yeah. Right, like you're honestly hoping that you give up that pick. Um, I just got something here. I see some people trying to get in for a duck race. I had a few people ask me what it is right now. Jamari Murray, you in? So the last time that I said anything about a duck race here, which it's been a little while. It's been a while since I have had Jamari Murray. Talked about a duck race. You in? So $20 Venmo for a chance to win 70 bucks. Do you want to try to get a get a quickie in? Quick, yeah. Quick little duck duck ski in. All I'll, right. Final I'll call. A little quick duck. I mean, I'm always down to duck around. I mean, sometimes you just need a good duck. What? What? I do not know. 
I don't know. Yeah, we said it. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Aaron, Aaron Wilson's going through all the uh, uh, tweets that happened yesterday. Oh, no, no. I was saying Aaron Wilson's tweeting all the stuff that happened yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, we knew, we knew what the Raiders were going to do. We've been saying it all day today that the four cuts that they made – and it is now officially official. Yeah. I, I wonder if things do start to pick up because it's not just been the Raiders. Today has just been a slow day in general. I mean, we just hear, heard cheers from the other studio for a backup quarterback. Brett Rippin. For Brett frickin' Rippin. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I would like another move. I really did. I knew the Raiders were going to make at least one move today. I was hoping that was a little bit bigger than Harrison Bryant. I'm, I mean, st I'm I mean, still hopeful that something else happens here. From, from the high of you waking up at 6 a.m. to now, it's a little <sighs> anticlimactic. Yeah, I mean, I might just have to continue this climax then. I don't know. Um, I would say... We are $20 away from a boot. Holy shit. That's true. I think that's what we need to get this party rocking and rolling here. I got Raider Ray is in. For our duck race. Raider Ray. Excuse me. Fields playing is going to uh, play for the Italian Football League next year. With Randall them. Carter with John Gruden. With John Gruden. I also see Paul Edgley. Paul Edgley in. So right now 20 to win. Yep, right now 20 to win. 100 bucks. The Raiders now have just said it. We have uh, officially released... Garoppolo, Hoyer, Renfro, and Tillery. I mean, till. that's as expected. Till, till, t -t 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 Tillery, Tillery. Official. Nothing we didn't already know. I feel like since everybody else is tweeting out it's official, I'll do the same thing. Official. <laughs> Again. Breaking I, news. The Raiders have officially moved on from Brian Hoyer, Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, I bet you we could make a video right now and say the Raiders have officially cut four players. That'd be brutal. And there would be someone who's like, you got to be shitting me. I can't believe I clicked in on this. Huh. I'm going to be, uh, it's, a, it's all the same stuff that I said earlier, but now it's just six hours later. You're welcome. You're welcome. I mean... Technically, there's. I bet you there's going to be people that make a video around the Las Vegas Raiders have signed Christian Wilkins officially. <laughs> Raiders add a defensive tackle in the new year officially. Yeah, I mean, I, I broke down all the moves that happened today earlier on the... Kyle Peck, you in? All right, I'm, uh, I'm going to send you this list here. Right now, we got a $20 Venmo race. Winner's going to go home with $110. Or... Wait, how many people are in it? 11. Mm -hmm. Or... How many, how many subs are we at? How about that? How many subs are we at? We are... How many subs are we at? We got to be getting close to 167. Got to be at least like 100 away. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. I, I figured we'd be at least close to 167. I can see you're doing some math back there. Oh, here we go. All right, we're getting close. How about this? If we get, like I said, I was going to give away 100 bucks today as soon as we hit 167. If you guys would rather, I can add that a hundo into the Venmo for the duck race. If that interests you. Now, we still got to get there. Now, we'll probably end up doing another race at some point today. But... Right now, I think Kyle Peck just sent another one. Or am I tripping? I got Paul, Kyle Peck. No, I think I'm good. I'm all caught up here. Jamari. All right, I say we, I say we run this race, and then we'll get another one going at some point. I'm going to send. Oh, I'll send it to TV. That's on me. And sent. Okay. So the first race we did was Spiders. I don't want Spiders again. That was a horror film. 
Good Race. It was a what film? Horror film. Horror film. Am I saying it wrong? Is that not horror? A horror film? Horror film. You're saying a horror film. I will say it is a difficult word to say. Especially after a few cold ones. Especially after a few cold ones. All right, I see Jason E.B. Put Jason E.B. in twice. Jason E.B. is going to go in twice. Uh, I got a last second entry in for Amy. So then that puts us now at winner gets 140. Yep. Amy. Amy. Just Amy. It's just Amy. It's, it's strictly on a name basis. Amy. All right, so winner's going to get 140. Oh, man, we got to shuffle these at least once. I mean, how? who do you think's the best guy jumping around in a sack? That's what I want to know. Who's the best sack jumper here? Also, Chugs, we are 10 away from a Jeremy <sighs> Chugs boot. We are 10 away from a Jeremy Chugs boot. Breaking Mitchell as the running back to replace Jacobs. I will not be replacing him, unfortunately. I, though, I wouldn't mind signing a four-year, $48 million contract. I'll be real. I would yeah. do that. After, after this race, I say, how about we break down all the draft quarterbacks and talk about them one by one of dun, dun, dun. Who, the tech, or who the Raiders could possibly get. <laughs> all right. Let's do it. Coming up, sack race. Three. Two, one, let's get this thing going here. Winner gets 140. Also, the good news from Ace Grimm. Chugs, get chugging, buddy. You always talk, but you never drink. You always talk, but you never chug. We got Mr. Jason E.B., which I think is hilarious how you spelt that. E.B., though, does he have two of them? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I didn't see the other one. 34 seconds to go. <laughs> oh, the other Jason E.B. is really, really down there. Dylan, Ginger Rich. Did you hear that gingers might go extinct? No. How? It said with all, like, the amount of people that are, like, you know, like. Breeding? Cross, like, different, like, nationalities and everything that it, within 100 years they think gingers might be uh, extinct. I don't know if you're, I don't, I, I guess I'll believe you. This is a race between E.B. Randall Carter. Oh, Randall. I feel bad for E.B. because I'm pretty sure he came in second and third. Is that right? Dude, his guy is on the line right here. It's close. Second and fourth. Mm, fourth. Arbora. And Juan Gutierrez is the big winner. The big, big winner. Randall Carter. All right, let me – um. where is Randall at? Mm, not there. Not you there. little rat. There's Randall. You always talk, but you never chug. All right, let me see. Randall's been in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Randall's been in 15 races, and he has just won his very first race. Congrats to Randall Carter. Randall, I need you to confirm with me that you just received one hundred Mitch and forty dollars. Look out! Look up gingers going extinct. Hmm? Look up gingers going extinct. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Let me see here. I'm telling you. Very first thing that pops up on National Geographic, redheads aren't going extinct, and here's why. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that there's no truth to this. I'll have to look into it a little bit more. They're wrong. Wrong. Fake news. Fake news. All right, you go get your boot. You go get your boot. We're 30 likes away. 30... Likes away. Um, while I'm doing that, oh, my back. 
My back. Shoot, I got it wrong again. How about Thanos? I think at this point it's a troll. I think we're, I think we're getting trolled here. What up, Ben? Xavier Howard just got cut. Xavier Howard's been cut. Now it's official, sure. Um, what do you think he'll cost, and do you think AP is going to at least reach out? Could be a potential name. Uh, I would say Xavier Howard got told about a week ago that he was going to be officially hitting the market. And over the past few days when I've talked about free agent targets, Xavier Howard was one of the names to at least keep in mind. He does have some ties with Gerald Alexander. Alexander used to work. Down there in Miami, he also was a part of a defensive regime that had Patrick Graham as the defensive coordinator. Because, again, PG was the D.C. in Miami. I want to say back in 2019 is the correct year on that. So, to me, uh, he's going to be a name that should at least be brought up and mentioned. When he's healthy, he can be a can be a legit corner. Yeah, Xavier Howard, he, didn't, he did just technically get – he got officially released, sure – I mean, it's kind of like saying, like, Jerry Tillery just got cut. We knew Jerry Tillery was getting cut four or five days ago. Like, now it's like the Broncos have officially traded Jerry Judy. Yeah. So, you're going to get a lot of this officially official news that just kind of rolls out. So, just, again, it's nothing really new. What up, Flip? What up, Dre? What up, what up? Uh, Morgan says, Chugs. No, he won't do that. Any smoke on a Ramsey trade? I, I They restructured his contract, so I don't really think that he's going to get traded. I, I mean, you, you don't restructure a contract with the player. I guess that's not true. Sometimes it does end up happening. I think for Miami, though... You let go of Xavier Howard. You're still trying to win and compete. Getting rid of both of those guys, especially, I don't think it's a good look either because Jalen hurt his knee and came back early last year to help you compete and try to win a Super Bowl. I think that would be a bad look if, you know, just a few months later you end up trading him. So I don't think that that's going to happen. Chazzer says it's official that we need to sign someone. That I agree with. That I agree with. I, I want to see a move go down. I want to see a move go down. I want a big splash. I want a corner. I want a cornerback one. The cornerbacks to me that I would target, Kendall Fuller, Xavier Howard, Adoree Jackson, those would be the top three names that I would throw out there right now. But, Ben, I appreciate it. Chugs is going to fill up his boot. So Chugs will be back here soon. Chugs, uh, Chugs will be back here soon. Cheers to all of y'all for being real ones out there. I got my drink of choice. This is probably one of my favorite drinks right now. Good energy drink. Real good. All right, so you got your boot. Sounds good. Yeah, we can run through the supers. Like officially official. Um, Brett, can you update the Raiders, uh, like, moves they've made then, like the signings? It's not updated. Like, the players at the Raiders, like that graphic? No? Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll... No, like, the, the graphic of, like, all the signings that the Raiders have made. It's not updated. At least I don't think it is. Yeah, the team one. Yeah. It's not updated. Uh, Kanai Malga's missing. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing that needs to be added. And then Andre James needs to be center because he's not a tackle. Those would be the only things. Okay. Um. What's funny is, I'll say this, we have some conflicting reports. Vincent Bonsignor just tweeted out that the Raiders are still waiting on word whether Jimmy G is being designated as a post-June 1st transaction. Uh, so I think it's already been reported that he's not going to be a post-June 1st cut. At least that's what Tashawn Reed reported. I'll just put out maybe it's something to monitor. Uh, 
maybe something to monitor uh, since Tashawn. I'll just put this uh, reported. Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't going to be a post June first cut designation. Maybe just something to look at. So again, Vinny Vincent Botts and yours saying that they're still waiting on word on whether Jimmy G is being designated as a post June first transaction. Uh, again, though, it was already reported by Tashawn Reed that the Raiders were not going to use him as a post-June 1st designation. So I think Vinny maybe just hasn't been told yet and I, or Tashawn jumped the gun. So, I, I mean, that does make a big difference for the Raiders. It does because um, you're either going to get $24 million after June 1st or you're going to get a, you know that extra money to be able to go out and spend right away. So just something to keep in mind. Again, I, I'm going to – I thought originally that maybe one of those could have been a post-June 1st cut, but based on the dead cap, the Raiders don't want to pay a lot of money in that dead cap. I think it's something to monitor. Oh, boy. All right, so what we're going to do here on the show is since there are a lot of things that are becoming officially official – Chugs is going to do a boot. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, Chugs is going to do a boot, and then we're gonna just going to roll through all the things for the Raiders that are officially official. So that's what we'll end up doing. Talk to me. Mm. I'd rather honestly just open it up to some questions here, and I, I was still kind of hoping that some some stuff would happen. So we do a mailbag. We haven't done a mailbag in a while. All right, so that's what we'll do. We're gonna do it. We haven't done a mailbag here for a while on the Raiders report. Yeah, how about this? It's uh, we'll do a mailbag around what you think the Raiders should try to do next. So. In terms of like what players they should sign and whatnot. So the way that this is going to work is hashtag Raiders is the way to get up there. Um, we're going to still roll. We still have super chats to go through. Like we got like 10 of them, I feel like. Um, I mean, we got to be. Because the one that we got was. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we have about 10 to go through. So I see Rich Wolf says, Chugs, who do you like more, Jalen Green or Alperin Shingoon? Alpi, and it's not even close. Okay. These say, are two these are two no players idea. for the Rockets. Um, it's Alperin Shingoon, and it's not even close. Even though he did get injured and it was pretty scary. He had to get uh we uh not stretchered, um wheelchaired off the court. But he's been the best Rockets player by far this season, in my opinion. Give me Alpi. Give you LP? All right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, sounds like Brandon Johns has done a few too many bangs this morning. It sounds like he's been tailgating for St. Patty's Day and he started today. That's uh, that's what I think. That's what I think. Dave says, what's happening with us? Are we asleep today? I mean, today has been a slow day, but it's been a slow day in general. In the NFL. It's been a slow day in general in the NFL. What up, John? Mitch, the correct way to say it is horror show. You keep on saying it wrong. How do I say it? You're saying horror show. Horror show. Yeah, you just said you. it's horror show. It's a horror show. I feel like I'm saying the exact same thing you're saying. Dude, no. You, you keep on saying it differently. It's horror show. Horror show. It's just not there. Dude, that's it. <laughs> it's just... I, I, I don't feel like I'm saying anything different. Horror show. Horror show. Not close. Dude, come on. It's there. It's there. Chugs, get to chugging, buddy. 
All right, let's go. Let's get no. Leave leave Ace Grim up. Let's knock back this one. Let's knock back this boot. Let's knock back this boot. Let's get some chugs going. I want to wake up here a little bit. I want to wake up here a little bit. We got a wheel spin that we got to do. I don't, I don't know. Oh, I thought Tex was coming in here. He's making me nervous. He's got that crazy look in his eyes like, let's get it on. Oh, that's good. Let's get this thing going. I also don't know how that one comment is getting through. I have no idea how that's getting through. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what that even means. No one knows what it means. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah. Contract details are not out yet. What? Probably. I don't like I don't like the way other people do the scroll. If I want to scroll up, I push my finger up. If I want to scroll down, I push my finger down. I think on an iPhone it's different. Yes, I don't like that. I tried I tried going the other direction and it had to keep going up. Yeah, if, see, if I want to scroll down, I I push my finger down. If I want to scroll up, I go up. I think that makes sense. I do. I don't know. That's that's what I got, man. All right, let's knock back this boot. Horror show. Horror show. It is. It's a horror show. He keeps on saying it wrong, Tim. I'm saying horror show. He's saying horror show. There's no difference. It's not like a Penix Penix situation. All right, I sided. I sided with Jeremy on the first one. I'm siding with Mitch on this one. I couldn't tell a difference there. Thank you. Say it, again. it might just be an at me. Do it one show. more time. Horror show. Horror show. No, I hear. I I can tell where you think he's saying differently. The this the this or, is back to the R. we're back to the pink shirt or magenta. You're or hearing horror and not horror. <laughs> horror show. Come on, Chugs. Come on, Chugs. This is a this is back to a who's on first situation. I don't know who's on first or what's on second. I don't know what is that a is that a Bud Light? The gas light. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Three. Dos. Uno. Oh, wow, the Titans are signing Mason Rudolph to a contract. And that's why he's known as Jeremy Chuggs. The quickest boot. The quickest boot in the game. It's impressive. So Mason, 3.6 million. That's it for Mason Rudolph. I mean, I would take the job for that much. I just actually thought that he might get more. Like, Sam Darnold, 10. Who would you rather, Marcus Mariota or Mason Rudolph? I agree. Marcus got six mil. I'd rather have Mason Rudolph than Marcus Mariota at this point. Six million for Mariota. He'll sell jerseys, though. He'll, Mariota will sell more jerseys than Mason Rudolph. That I can guarantee you. That I can guarantee you. Um, all right, Chugs. I need a wheel spin, and I need it bad. I need a I need a wheel spin and I need it bad. We're still rolling through some supers too. We gotta we gotta catch up here a little bit. What? Yes, hashtag Raiders or Super Chat. Get those questions on here. I think for Jeremy and I, we'll probably stay live. Another we'll probably go until like five o'clock. If nothing happens by then, then we might try to get out of here. Now, obviously, again, if anything happens around the Raiders today, then you know we'll we'll go back. We'll, we'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back. We'll see. We shall see. I think the the one interesting thing again to note here. Yeah, I think some of the people aren't quite understanding. 
uh, I, I said something to monitor about the Garoppolo thing, and some people are like, oh, he already got cut. But that just tells me they have no idea what, I'm t what they're talking about. All right, we have, holy last name. Bears are signing somebody to a one-year $2.1 million contract. Give me your phone. <laughs> Give me your phone. Give me your phone. Of course, yeah. No, that's that's reasonable. Um, am I allowed to go on Google Safari? I, I'll try not to. Um, okay. I, I already know what I'm going to do here. I already know. I'm curious to see how this goes. Philip Trueworthy, any right side O line available today? Ooh. Um, we talked about earlier Makai Becton as an option. Um, who's your other tackle that you were like? Greg Van Roten for the right side offensive guard. guard Cornelius Lucas was the cheap option. Um, Fant, I think, was another name that I threw out there. I think Fant already got. Yeah, signed. I think he did. Now that you say that. Um, I don't want to do something like that's just going to... I'll do. I'll still make it Raiders related. I was going to be like... I hate Polish people. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go, the Houston Texans should trade C.J. Stroud to the Cowboys for Dak Prescott. I don't want to do that to you, though. <laughs> that, I, that You do, like, thoughts on trading... <laughs> I'm going to comment underneath. The real ones know what I'm talking about if they were watching Raiders Report Live. I think, uh, I think that would be a good thing. You got it. You can keep talking. I, I, I got I to figure this out. <laughs> Philip Trueworthy, uh, thank you for the super chat. Next up, we also have Ultra Vabe, Ultra V-A-B, boot it and toot it, fellas. Well, he wants you to boof it. Ryan Campbell... Here you go. I got a chalk touch your toes and at the same time spell out the word run. Ah, Mitch, can you touch your toes and spell the word run? What? Can you touch your toes and spell the word run? I don't get it. You didn't spell the word run. R-U-N. Can you bend over and do it? I, 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 yes, but I don't even get what the joke is. I, I, it's just, can you do it? R-U-N. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You don't get, you, wait, do you really not get it? I do get it, yes. I'm just so locked in on this tweet right now. <laughs> of course I get it. You in? Yeah. Yeah. Doppelganger. Uh, drink up, boys. Brandon Johns, Aiden O'Connell is the greatest quarterback of all time. That's how we know. He's trolling. All right. We're going to get into our cut here in just a moment. So we're going to break down all the official moves that have happened today. He would be the best QB the Raiders have had since Kent State. <laughs> All right, there you go. If you want to read it out loud, you can. Dak Prescott would look great in silver and black. The Raiders should cut Aiden O'Connell and make a deal with the Cowboys. He would be the best QB on the Raiders. He would be the best QB the Raiders have had since Ken Stabler. I'm going to at Tom. <laughs> and, all right, you can add Tom. All right, so that was uh, that's going to be my spoof tweet for Jeremy. Send it. Send it. I am. Uh, we got to get that in the chat. Then we got to get that one in the chat. Can I? I'm going to add this. Can I? What?
Sure. <laughs> All right. I'm also going to tag Dak's brother. No, oh, no. That's that would be a problem. I know a few people that know him. I actually feel bad for Dak. Like, I feel bad. For, I, I people always talk about Mahomes' family and that whole regard, like his brother. I think Dax uh, Dax has got to be up there as well. What on earth was that? Dude, some weird shit just popped up on my. I don't even see this tweet. Oh, now I do. Oh yeah, my mom just sent me a memory from high school when uh, senior year we went to state. Look at that. You see me? Honestly, no. I thought you were the Asian guy sitting cross-legged. Oh, yep, now I do. <laughs> Dude, that's one of those pictures where, like, guess who went pro? <laughs> this guy. This guy did. That's funny. <laughs> that's, uh... <sighs> Hashtag Raiders to get on the show. We're going to be breaking down all the official moves that the Raiders have made. I'm going to put this tweet... If you guys want to interact with the tweet, I would appreciate it with Jeremy. It's uh, it's going to be here in the chat if I can. Dude, my YouTube right now is glitching. There you go. I need you guys to interact with that tweet for me. Interact with that tweet for me. That's uh, that's the tweet that I just sent out for Jeremy. Give it a like. Give it a share. Give your two cents on it. Go for it. You might get some interaction. I don't know. Dude, Tad just retweeted it. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know for a fact that that's not It's like true. that tweet gets trending on like Dallas sports. <laughs> They're talking about it tomorrow on the radio. Tad retweets crazy sportscaster Jeremy Chuggs <laughs> saying that the Cowboys should trade Dak to the Raiders. What are your thoughts? Wow. Is that what we sound like? That's kind of crazy. Oh, no, that's what radio stations sound like. Mm, okay. That's fair. All right, so what are we doing now? We're going to... We're going to... Wait, we got to spin the wheel. We do all wheel spin. We hit 2,000 likes. Ah, I do see... Got to get a good wheel spin in there. We also have a lot of super chats we have to answer. Um, no, we only have two, but... It did the whole thing again. All right. Well, then I'll Kevin, Kevin shout Rogers, out. Uh, Mitch Chugs, what's up? If you could guys could bring back any Raiders team, uh, what team would you bring to play this year? The 2024 Raiders. <laughs> now, I mean, I'm not going to speak on teams that I haven't like watched legitimately just because I wasn't alive in the 80s and the 70s, and that's probably the best teams that the Raiders have had. I mean, I would love to be able to watch how some of those teams work. If, uh, to be fully honest with you, the team that I would like to be able to see again would be that 2021 Raiders team if the whole Gruden and Ruggs thing never happened. Like, if I, the Raiders were 5-2, and two, they were getting ready to enter their bye, Carr was playing at a very high level, I mean, he was basically was one of the front runners, I would say, for the NFL MVP, so based on just in recent memories of Raiders games that I've watched on a daily freaking basis, because I feel like that's the only thing I'd be able to speak on. Now, the other, the other Raiders team that I would love to be able to see was that, um, I guess that 2016 Raiders team where they went 12-4. and four. That would be another, be able to run that back to see how that looks. Um, those would be the two teams, though, that I would throw out there just to see what could have happened. I, I'd be curious to see what you guys have to say, though, if, if Carr doesn't get hurt in 2016, can we replay that one again? Yeah. All right, I do see some supers, though. It said Ace Grimm sent in a 10, which, again, was the chugging one. Phillip said any right side offensive lineman available we, today? We read that one. We did? That's what I was saying. The only two that we didn't read were Ultra Kevin's. Ultra VAB booted yeah. up. Okay, Ryan Campbell. Yep, okay. All right, then, yeah, you're right. And then Rich Wolf said... Raiders versus Texans AFC Championship game. Chugs, who are you rooting for? Um, it would have to be the Raiders because that's who signs my paycheck. Um, <laughs> Smart man. That's but, I mean, 
for me, it would be one of those situations where it's a win-win for me. Good answer. Because if the Texans and Raiders are both in the AFC Championship game, you're going. That to means Super the Bowl Chiefs no are. What. That means the Chiefs are not in. That's true. See, that's that's. And something that I've that's a smart something answer. Something that I've had, you know, growing up being a Texans fan, being a Raiders fan the past couple of years, working with Mitch and getting to interact with all y'all is, I truly do hate the Chiefs. I, I'm with you. Like I can't stand the Chiefs. I also like, get it from. I, I think they're a spoiled fan base. They don't appreciate with what they have. They you know, really kind of luck and happenstance got into all this with the Eagles releasing Andy Reid and then Patrick Mahomes falling to him in the draft. Yeah. No, hey, I, I hear you. I can't stand them either. You're also going to hate for what I'm about to do. Let me go pee real quick. Uh, my, my bladder's not well right now. I can already um, tell you. All right. Will you tell Cullen what you want on the thumbnail and stuff for this cut? Oh, it's going to be a cut? Oh, I didn't realize that. I thought we were just going to roll through it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Sounds good. And I, I think Chase put, like, a mock title in there. I mean. For, like, what I, he was I, using for it. But I trust him. I'll, I'll tell, you, tell people who I want on, the, on everything. All just right. Let me, uh, let me go real quick. Go ahead. Oh, wow. That tweet is already. Tom said, come on, it's been a long few days. <laughs> oh. Woo! Use the use that hashtag Raiders to get on our next cut that we're gonna do. Ask anything that you'd like about Raiders free agency, Raiders free agent targets. Who you like the Raiders signing? Did you like the Christian Wilkins signing? Did you not like it? Do you want them to go after a certain player? Maybe something about the draft now that they've uh, signed Christian Wilkins, signed Gardner Minshew as well. You want to talk about some draft quarterbacks as well? That could be an option because Kirk Cousins. On his way to Atlanta, Justin Fields doesn't look like that trade's going to happen to the Raiders, at least not right now. Raider Ryan says, Mr. Jeremy, Mr. Raider. F our whole division except the Raiders, the F y'all talking about. Wow, Brandon Johns is just on one. I mean, I'll, I'll show it. Um, John Rodriguez says, I want to see the Super Bowl team with Rich Gannon. Yeah. That was a good one. Brandon Johns, good thing, googly moogly, or good googly moogly, that thing is juice, booyah. Steve, this is actually a good question. I'm going to add this to our cut that we're about to do. With GM under contract, could we pass on QB this year's draft one net? Uh, pass on QB this year, draft one next year. Not sure who next year's QBs are at the moment. Wilkins is a three technique, correct? Yeah, he did both. He's been, uh, he's played as kind of like a three technique and a nose guard as well. Let me look at his splits really quick. Um, he plays some nose tackle. I know a lot of times he plays in the B gap. Got to go to Christian Wilkins. Snap counts. I want to see where does he play. Usually they have the splits of where they are at on the defensive line. I know he he plays on the interior, three technique, so a little bit over the center as well, but I think he thrives more over the guard in my opinion. But no, yeah, I will, uh, I'm going to add this to our cut that we're about to do because I think that's a pretty good question. What? Uh, Steve-O's. Okay. Sounds good. 
Let's, uh, all right, so for some of the old school Raiders Report watchers, we used to always do these like mailbag style shows where we would literally like ask y'all questions, make a cut out of it. It's kind of what we're about to do here on the show. We're going to answer some of y'all's questions. We're also just going to go through like a, a tracker, if you will, of everything that has happened officially official by the Las Vegas Raiders. So the Raiders have officially signed six players, which we'll kind of run through. When I say like some of those are re-signings on top of that, so you're, it's all news that we have already covered here, but we are starting to just find out and see that some people are just randomly like joining in and maybe you know you don't know everything that has happened around the Raiders to this point. So essentially, if y'all have been sleeping for the last week, sleeping the last week, we're just going to go through a quick rundown of everything that's just happened around the Raiders that we think is notable. So just to be clear, this cut is... Tracker and then mailbag. Yeah, and then we'll actually, we'll since it's a cut, we'll do manscaped. Okay, so it's tracker, everything that has happened, and then also answering questions inside. Yeah, on the back end, after manscaped, we'll answer some questions. Okay, that sounds good. All right, y'all, if you want to get those questions in, start getting them in right now. Hashtag Raiders or Super Chat. Oh, wow, this is a little bit of a turn of events here. The Titans are signing Calvin Ridley to a four-year, $92 million deal with $50 million guaranteed. So it was reported that the Patriots and the Jags were the two teams mixed in on this, and now he's going to Tennessee. That's interesting as well. I wonder, Mitch, if... Wow. Because a lot of it had to do with if the Jags re-sign Ridley, they had to give another pick to the Falcons. Yep. Do you think the Jags were like, I would rather keep my pick than re-sign Ridley? I guess it just, I mean, to me, if, if Ridley's getting a value like that, he's a good receiver. I'm not paying Calvin Ridley that much money. In Division two to the Titans. I get it, but I mean, that's almost $25 million per year for Calvin Ridley. I mean, almost. I mean, I, I get it. I mean that's uh that's a lot of money. That's a that's a spicy meatball. I mean you're making he's making almost Mike Evans money. Almost. Like Cal really's a good good player. But this is one year after he just was suspended an entire season. That's I mean this is if you're Minnes or if you're Tennessee though, you're able to add a lot of speed. I don't know what the Titans are trying to do though. T. Higgins is such a Texan. You think? You think? Well, we're about to find out. All right, let's run through this. All right, here we go. The latest official Raiders news and rumors. Presented by Manscaped. Presented by The Scape. Presented by The Scape. Coming up right now. Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Renz here, host of the Raiders Report. And if you've been sleeping for the last week, and you've missed everything that has happened around the Las Vegas Raiders, don't worry, you're in the right place. What's going to be happening here on today's show is we're going to look at a little bit of a Raiders free agency tracker. I'm going to tell you all the players that the Raiders have signed because they have technically signed or re-signed six guys as it stands right now. And I'll tell you the guys that they have officially moved on from and where their salary cap is currently at. I wouldn't be able to do today's show, no cap, if it wasn't for today's sponsor, Manscaped. And if you haven't already... Code Raiders, manscaped.com, 20% off, and you're going to be able to get free shipping on the male grooming products that I trust. And if you trust me, then you'll trust Manscaped. So again, coming up here, we're going to get into the moves that are officially official. So remember, the legal tampering period for NFL free agency started March 11th at noon Eastern time and ran until March 13th at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Well, now we are officially out of this legal tampering period. It is officially the new league year here for the NFL. New year, new Raiders. If we're going to the Super Bowl, click that like button right now. So what I figured I would do here is since all these updates are coming out that are like officially official, I am going to run through a tracker just to show you everything that the Raiders have done. And that way you have a more clearer picture of where this team stands as it is exactly right now. And then at the back half of the video, we're going to go old school Raiders report. I got some fun questions that are thrown in here from all the people that are watching this video live. So from Raiders free agency, the first move that they technically did was, or one of the first moves, 
was they re-signed Amir Abdullah. They brought him back on a one-year, $1.85 million deal. He's got 850 guaranteed. That's going to be your third down scat back. Offers you some special teams ability there. Andre James signed a three-year, $24 million deal. The first two years are guaranteed. He's also on the books for 6.3 against the cap this season. Christian Wilkins was the big time, I think the biggest signing outside of Chris Jones in free agency so far. Four-year, $110 million deal with almost 85 guaranteed. I mean, we've been sitting up here saying, hey, let's go get a defensive tackle. Let's go get some Max Crosby help, a little bit of Malcolm Coons help. And as it stands right now, I am not afraid to say this. And I'm telling y'all right now, the Raiders have a top five defense with Christian Wilkins and arguably have the best defensive line because of this big guy right here. The numbers that he is going to be able to create for this defense. I can't wait to see what this D looks like. Giggity. The move that's probably the most controversial amongst the nation right now is Gardner Minshew to a two-year $25 million deal with $15 million guaranteed. Gardner Minshew is going to be the Raiders' backup quarterback. Like To me, this plan still indicates that they are going to look for a QB in the draft. like That is their plan. We have already known that Jaden Daniels has always been that plan A. However, if Jaden's not available, then they might have to look at some other quarterbacks. Maybe that's a Michael Penix Jr. Maybe that's a J.J. McCarthy. Maybe it's a Spencer Rattler, Bo Nix. I mean, whoever that might end up being. To me, though, the move of giving Minshew the money that they did is just saying, okay, he's going to be that security blanket in case we do have to roll with Minshew for a year. And then you let that quarterback sit back for a year. Aiden O'Connell is going to be the third string quarterback, but Again, like Aiden is is what it is. I would not have given this much money to Gardner because I am confident enough that Aiden could have been at least a reliable backup in the NFL. With this move, though, I mean, this just screams to me that Telesco and Antonio Pierce never actually valued Aiden as a starter, now even let alone as a backup. So AOC, to me, is probably going to be the quarterback three, and I know some people don't think that that's the case. Look at the guaranteed money that they gave Gardner Minshew. Aiden is the quarterback three. How about this, though? I like this question a lot. Did the Raiders overpay Gardner Minshew? Give me a yes or give me a no down below. So his cap pit for this season, I want to say is $7 million. And then his cap pit next season is, I want to say, 13 on the books. Now he's going to get some cash. He's going to get some of that guaranteed money. He's getting 15 mil guaranteed. I want to know, though, this is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. Did the Raiders overpay Gardner Minshew? Yes or no? Let me know down below. I think they did overpay Gardner Minshew. I think he is a high-end backup quarterback. He is probably a top 30 QB. I'd probably rank him somewhere around 25. It is an upgrade over Aiden. But to me, the biggest reason why the Raiders did this is because their plan is to draft a quarterback. Gardner Minshew has been on multiple NFL franchises where he's had to help groom that rookie QB. One of the reasons why the Raiders offered a two-year deal to Cliff Kingsbury, remember, that was shut down is because they wanted the two-year window. Gardner Minshew is built here to be this backup quarterback to help groom this next line of QBs here for Antonio Pierce and Todd Telesco. That's why they gave him a two-year deal. Essentially, this is insurance. If you pay insurance on your car, if you pay insurance on your house, I bet you all the time you think, I'm overpaying for insurance. But when you do actually need it, it's good to have good insurance. And I think that's what Gardner Minshew is right now. Good insurance, but in the moment, it is a little bit of an overpay. Some other moves that the Raiders have made, I think Harrison Bryant... Not a sexy move, I continue to say, but I have to applaud Telesco and Antonio Pierce for going out and making this move. This is an upgrade over Austin Hooper. I have sat up here on this show saying, hey, you need to be able to go out and find a tight end too, a tight end too that can block, and that's what Harrison Bryant is. He is a good blocking tight end that has 10 touchdowns to his name at six foot five, 230 pounds, really good fit here in the Luke Getzey offense. And then Kanai Malga was re-signed yesterday. It was technically the only move that the Silver and Black did officially make. I'm going to say that the contract details are going to be somewhere around what Amir Abdullah makes, essentially a little bit less. I should mention, though, just because you brought in Kanai Malga and Amir Abdullah, I see it every year, just because guys get signed or re-signed does not mean that they're going to be official lock for the 53-man roster. Kanai Malga is a good name for the offseason to have some extra bodies there in the rotation but if I had to bet on it, I wouldn't say that he'd be on this official roster come game time. Some other moves that are officially official, the Las Vegas Raiders have released Brian Hoyer. They have officially released Jimmy Garoppolo, Hunter Renfro, and Jerry Tillery. I should mention that it's been expected 
around all these moves. Well, how about this? I'll get into everything that you need to know around Garoppolo, Renfro, the money save, how it impacts the salary cap. But first, I am going to tell you about Manscaped. And these guys got cut. I don't want that to happen to you. And with our awesome sponsor here, Manscaped, your balls aren't going to have to worry about that either. Like, I'll be real with you. There was points in my life where, and Chugs, maybe you could speak on this, I bought cheap razors, and I bought cheap electric razors. I cut myself one time so flipping bad that, oh, man, I don't even know if I could say this. Let's just say I, I couldn't touch myself for a little while because of how bad of a cut I had. With Manscaped, I'm allowed to touch myself a lot, and I want you guys to be able to do the same. Manscaped.com, code Raiders, for 20% off and... You're going to be able to get some free shipping. Matthew Y said he found his balls. I did. My balls were up in my throat after I freaking cut those things, man. But same, I, a little carpet says been there. Guess what? You're not going to be there with Manscaped. And I know that this is the time of the year we're all trying to get lucky. I'm talking about St. Patrick's Day, so get your head out of the gutter, right? And I want you to be able to embrace the luck of the Irish and join over 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. So head on over to manscaped.com. Use code Raiders for 20% off, and you're going to be able to get free shipping. Manscaped products to me are over the moon great. I love their boxers. I love their lawnmower 5.0. I do think that their weed whacker is a great tool on top of that to help you get in those hard-to-reach places. The beard hedger really helps clean up. Like I'm a man that I used to not take care of my beard and now the older and older I get, I, I'm starting to realize, like, if you use, you know, shampoo, conditioner in your hair, or if you, I always say, if you put deodorant underneath your arms, you should put it on your balls. You should all take care of the hair that's on your face. I mean, earlier today, Chugs did a boot, had some little bit of the David Zahn milkshake dripping off there. You got to be able to take care of your beard. Manscaped helps you from head to toe, and that's why I think they're unmatched out there. And that's why I'm happy they've been a part of the show for about four years now. So if you haven't gotten it, I love me some Manscaped. I think you will too. And I think your lady friend's going to like it as well. So go to manscaped.com, code Raiders for 20% off and free shipping. All right, let's go back to the dudes that got cut. Brian Hoyer, Jimmy Garoppolo, Hunter Renfro, and Jerry Tillery. With the moves here, the Raiders save a staggering $92,000 by cutting Brian Hoyer. They save, it depends... On the Jerry Tillery contract, I have seen it at $2.2 million on over the cap. I've also seen it at three point eight on Spotrack. The Raiders, though, I'll say at least are saving $2.2 million there. By moving on from Hunter Renfro, they are not going to do a post-June 1st cut there. They're just going to take the dead cap hit. They're going to eat it, which is about a $5 million dead cap hit. And they're going to take the $8 million save. With Jimmy Garoppolo, this is where I do think it's kind of interesting. So yesterday, to Sean Reed from The Athletic reported that Jimmy Garoppolo is not going to do the post-June 1st cut. That They're just going to cut him outright. The Raiders are going to eat $17 million this year, and then the Raiders would save $11 million to be able to spend right away. The reason why the Raiders would do that is because then, if the Raiders do the post-June 1st cut, yes, they save $24 million. You don't get that money, though, until after June 1st. And on top of that, you're going to have to eat $12.8 million in dead cap in 2025. So Tashawn Reed reported that it's not going to be a post-June 1st cut. They're just going to outright cut him. However, now Vincent Bonsignor has said that there has still been no word on what the Raiders are doing for post-June 1st. I say it all the time. Just wait to see what the Raiders beat reporters say. Don't take it as news. Just take it as it is an opinion. And then wait to see it when a credible source has come out with it. So I, I, I don't know whether to believe Tashawn or whether to believe Vinny, but the bottom line is, after all these moves, if the Raiders are just, just cutting guys outright, they're going to have around $21.6 million to spend, which at the start of today meant that they would have been about $40 million. After the Harrison Bryant move, you're looking out about $37.5 million in salary cap space somewhere in there for the Las Vegas Raiders. All right, now... Let's get into some of these comments that have been around, uh, some of the moves that the Raiders have made, haven't made, and all these are from people who are watching the show live right now. So if you're like, Mitch, how do I get on the Raiders report? Pull up, live, because we're rocking. we got over 1,700 people here in the chat. With GM under contract, could we pass on quarterback this year, draft one next year? Not sure who's next year's quarterbacks are at the moment. Wilkins is a three technique, correct? Wilkins could play anywhere on the defensive line. Like, he's going to be over the center, to me, when you sign a player, I, I won't even get into the details here of 3-Tech, and the only reason why that I say that is because 
He can play on a three-man front. He can play on a four-man front. Wilkins is that good of a player where he's going to be able to fit into any system that he wants to be able to go out and fit in. I don't think that the Raiders pass on a quarterback because I don't really see why they would waste an entire year. Like I think Gardner Minshew is an upgrade over Aiden, but the Raiders were 8-9 and nine last season. Gardner Minshew, I mean, if your defense is as elite as what it was, which again, I'm hoping the Raiders have a top five defense in the league, Gardner probably gets you to 8-9, maybe 10 wins again, but do you have a legitimate shot at winning a Super Bowl? That I don't know. And some quarterbacks might... The quarterback I like the most that I'm going to be watching, Cam Ward. Was at Washington State, transfer to the U. He's going to be the guy that I watch the closest. Let's go to RNFL. What's the best old lineman to get in free agency? Maybe budget pickups. I would say if you're going to spend big at right guard, Kevin Zeitler would be the first name I would throw out. My budget pickup, it's not sexy. I'll go back to Greg Van Roten. He was reliable, can at least be a potential six man. If you're looking for an offensive tackle, I would say stay away from Tyron Smith because the last time he played right tackle, he was really, really freaking bad. Cornelius Lucas could be a cheap right tackle also to at least throw out there. And if you want to go big, a good competition, Makai Becton, Thayer Munford. You get a motivated Makai Becton, that's going to be a pretty damn good player in my book. Adam, next up here on the show, what do the Raiders need next? I say we need help at the quarterback, cornerback position. Couldn't agree with you more, Adam. If I'm the Raiders, I am going to stick to my word here that Antonio Pierce said they're looking for a priority. Priority cornerback one. Let's make it happen. I love what we have in Trevon Merrick, Marcus Epps, Nate Hobbs, Jack Jones. You're missing that fifth and final cornerback one secondary piece. If you're looking for a legit corner one, his name's Kendall Fuller. If you want to go a little bit cheaper, Xavier Howard. You want to go a little bit cheaper, bigger risk. Also, a Dory Jackson who has got some time with Patrick Graham. Let's go to, wow, Schlock Sluch. Uh, is DJ Reader to the Raiders possible after Wilkins? Anything's possible. It's the NFL. I, I mean, I've sat up here and said before that I remember when I told people Khalil Mack's going to get traded. People called me all sorts of crazy things. I can remember when Devontae Adams, I sat up here and said, never going to happen. It ends up happening. Is it possible? Yes. Do I really think the Raiders would do it? No, not really. They got to like what their front is right now in Tyree Wilson, Malcolm Koontz, Christian Wilkins, and Max Crosby. I will admit, though, if they were to bring in a guy like DJ Reader, He's probably going to be somewhere around $16, $17 million per year since defensive tackles are making a little bit more than what's expected. If they do that, though, it just speaks volumes of how much they do not believe in Tyree Wilson. Let's go to Trask Morgan next up here. What's your grade on the Raiders' free agency move so far? I would say bringing back Amir Abdullah to me is a C grade. Nothing special there. Average, good special teams player. Bringing back Andre James, three years, 24 mil. I'll give that an A, A minus grade. It's not a sexy pick, but you need to be able to bring back your center. I'll then go with Christian Wilkins as an A plus to me. Yeah, you probably overpaid him a little bit, but if there was one spot I'm okay overpaying, it's at defensive tackle. Gardner Minshew, I'll give that one a D grade. It's just not, not the move that I would have done. I would have rather us allocated some of that other money to some other positions of need, though. Sometimes you got to overpay for insurance a little bit. Uh, can I Malga? D grade, I don't really see the need to bring him back. And then uh, Harrison Bryant, I'm going to give that one a B minus grade. It's a, it's a good, non-sexy pick, but it's going to be a good fit for what the Raiders need. B minus, C plus somewhere in there. So overall, I'd say the Raiders right now are at a B plus grade for free agency, which I, I'd be okay with with still $40 million to basically to spend. We're, we're going to be we're gonna be good. I'm excited to see what Telesco and AP get. Let's uh, go to David. Who do we get for a speed-wide receiver? I guess it depends where you're looking. If you're looking at free agency, I don't really want the Raiders to spend a lot of money at the wide receiver position. You got Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, Trey Tucker, and you got a pass catcher also in Michael Mayer. Like Those are more than likely going to be your top four targets this upcoming season. Now, if you want to sign a speed, Quez Watkins is the name that I'll throw out there. A cheap wide receiver from Philly, legit 4-3 speed. Kind of got buried on that depth chart because of A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith. Was kind of like their third guy that they would use to stretch the field. I want a field stretcher. That's what we need here. Let's go to GC Sports. Did you see that the Bears might keep fields to be a backup? I mean, right now, if I'm Chicago, that's what I would say. I wouldn't put Justin Fields even out there in a trade. Like He's worth more than a fourth or a fifth round pick. But if teams know that you're going to get rid of somebody, you know, it's kind of like putting something out on a yard sale and being like, like that's what Justin Fields is right now. He's at a yard sale. Everybody knows that Chicago is going to take a quarterback at one. Nobody thinks that, that he has any value. 
So why am I going to give a premium pick, especially when all these other teams in the NFL, they're not offering premium picks right now for Justin Fields. So like, if all you're getting is fourth and fifth round options, maybe it is better to just hang on to the guy and then see what happens. However, if I'm Chicago, you're more than likely just going to have to move on from him if you do legitimately want to take a quarterback. And I say that because I find it hard to believe that his value is going to go up anymore. The only way Justin Fields would improve his value on the Chicago Bears is if Caleb Williams, who you draft the number one overall, gets hurt, which the Chicago Bears do not want. So those are all the questions here. Again, shout out to all of y'all. I'm going to end this with this question. What position do the Raiders need to target next in free agency? Still a lot of positions out there to consider, but I need to know from the nation, and if you want to hear some of our answers here live on the show, we are still live. We have been live since 10 a.m. my time, so a little over... Get close to seven hours of straight live time here, and that's what the free agency is all about. So please let us know down below, and if you're not subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button for all things going on around the Raiders. If the Raiders make a signing, I'm going to let you know. If the Raiders cut a player, I'm going to let you know. And I hope that it's a big-time move because, man, there's nothing more electric, I think, than a big-time signing here on the Raiders port. So fingers crossed that it ends up going down, and if it does, I don't want you to miss it because Chugs and I, I don't care what time of the day is, we're here to ball. All right, man. It's official. It is official. Calvin Ridley just posted a picture of him. And, I mean, he's got to be pretty ecstatic. He's just teabagging Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> I mean, imagine. That's a guy that Here's was, a guy. was gambling for a few thousand dollars. <clears throat> and now he just signed a $92 million contract. Yeah, now, it, <clears throat> now, now he, he doesn't need to gamble. <clears throat> and maybe. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. Maybe. His future, like, self-written memoir, I gambled on myself. <laughs> That's kind of like uh, OJ. If I did it. If I did it. If I did it. Uh, ben Bravo, I saw that you super chatted, but it was a Raiders cut, so I didn't, didn't really make sense at the time. Yep. But Calvin yes. Ridley, the Titans, yeah, it's a four-year, $92 million deal with $50 million guaranteed. Again, what's interesting about the Calvin Ridley deal is, you know, it, it's been reported that it's only the Jacksonville Jaguars, essentially, and the New England Patriots, and the Patriots have let a deal on the table for quite some time. I mean, if you're the Titans, you just were like, we're swooping in here and we're going to get this guy. Like I, That actually makes me wonder if the, the Titans did a good job here of not like telling anybody what their plan was because I feel like this isn't something that would have just happened. Like the whole situation around Ridley was weird. Like why would Ridley? It was just like oh he wants to stay in Jacksonville. He doesn't want to go with the Patriots. The Patriots are still letting an offer on the table. I think always there was somebody in the background. And I think that team was probably always the Titans to make that situation as weird as what it was. Yeah. And then they were like all right here's our final offer. You're gonna take it or leave it. And it was probably the biggest offer he's seen. Right. Yeah. Also, the Titans desperately needed a wide receiver. They they traded or they got DeAndre Hopkins in free agency. Yep. And not that he's been bad, but he just seems. I mean, obviously he's still going to get his. He has his numbers. He just seems unmotivated on a team that's bad. I don't disagree with that. Like, like you know, when you see a guy and you're like, he's obviously really good. But, like, if he was actually, like, locked in, he could be that much better. But it's also hard to have a guy who's locked in on a team that's going 5-12. and 12. And I, I feel like DeAndre shows up every week, though. Yeah. Like, like, he shows up every week no matter how bad the quarterback play is. Like, he's going to go out there and he's going to get his. I think actually a good comparison would be, like, Devontae Adams. Not that Devontae wasn't trying 100%. But you could tell Devontae at times last season was just noticeably frustrated. It was getting to him a little bit. I mean, he was noticeably frustrated. He's like, these are not the numbers I like to put up. And when you hold yourself to that type of standard, like, you know, your standard is very, very high. So um, we'll see. Well, uh, Calvin Ridley, the Titans. I mean, you have Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, Traylon Burks, Kyle Phillips. I'm actually, I bet you, if I, if I ran a Titan show, I'd say Traylon Burks on the hot seat. Yeah. I mean, they, well, you should have known first offseason 
he's having conditioning issues at minicamp. Yeah, that's like true. your first round pick should not have Condition. conditioning issues. Yeah, no, like that right. is a big red flag. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And the, the funniest part was they traded him, or they traded AJ Brown to then draft uh, AJ Brown type of wide receiver in Traylon Burks, who has been like he's been bad. He's been the Temu version of AJ Brown. <laughs> Yeah, he is. Uh, he has not been very good. Which that's another one where I know a lot of Raider fans got mad at me when I was like, "You don't want Traylon Burks," and then that one worked. There's, there's. You're you gonna get some right. Idiot. You're gonna get some right. You're gonna get some wrong. It is what it is. Somebody said, "Please, Raiders questions only." Well, then ask me some. Hashtag Raiders. The way that you do the question is whatever question you're thinking, use hashtag Raiders and slap it in front of it. That's also, how you do it. we've been live for six and a half hours. We've been talking a lot of Raiders. True. Maybe you're just getting here. That's true. We uh, a we, lot of Raiders has been discussed. We've been here all day. But when when you make one signing and it's Harrison Bryant, there's only so much Raiders for us to talk about. We've broken down players that they can sign. I mean, I can go through. Maybe we, maybe we just run through. All right. How about this? How about let's run through all the deals that we have going on today. First off, let's do that. Oh, I was gonna go through all the. We can do that. Uh, yeah, let's just real quick here. I want to go through all the deals, and then we'll go through some of the players that I talked about earlier today. Is, yes. that, is that fair? All right, so the deals that we got going ah, on, not quite. Fake. Fake news. Fake news. Wait, real quick. Take that off. All right, so the deals that we got today are... I'm just in shambles. Yeah, I don't know. Are you all right? All right, so those are the Raiders' needs. All right, so the deals that we got today, though, so it was 500 for 2 o'clock. Yeah. 20 is, no, 500 was wheel spin now. 500 likes was wheel spin. Let's just do 20 is the bean boozled. Then we'll do 50 for the push-ups and then 100 beer bong bang. Okay. I like it. Beer bong bang. We do have another super chat. We do have another super chat to get to. And then if you guys send in a super, all those questions that we get, we'll put them up here. Actually, you know what? Every 250 likes is now... Every 250 likes, we'll spin the wheel. And uh, do, how do we feel about five? Five is cheers. Cheers to you. So, no, Raiders. No, I'm saying five. Are, are, are we still. Um, how about. I think five. five we'll see. We'll I'll see. set it at 515. 515? All right. That sounds good. Obviously, if more breaking news happens, we'll we'll do our best here to keep you guys up to date. Yeah, th this is only if nothing happens. Correct. If nothing happens, we'll, we're still going to hang out. If nothing happens, then we'll leave the show here in 37 minutes. Is that is that fair to y'all? Is that fair? I think it's fair. Let's go to Eric Castro. So the Raiders released those players and didn't do any signings. What was the rush? I guess well, th there's still a, well, which. Well, we can break down here in just a moment. Yeah. We put out a video this morning, and I think almost everybody we talked about, today's been one of the slowest days of NFL free agency. I know yesterday was a little slow. Um, I today, can't believe Today's it. slower. I can't believe it. This has been the biggest move by far that has happened today. Yeah, by far. Um, no, but the reason why you had to do it, like what the rush was you had to pay those guys then. Like It's officially the new league year was at 4 p.m. Eastern time, so you had to cut those four players or else they would have had certain guarantees and certain things roll over to next season. So to avoid that, you got to move on from them. You have to make the decision. Yeah. Like, that's that's why it happened. Which, again, most of it, though, already happened. It's just officially official. It's kind of like when Jeremy got married, but then he had his wedding a week later. Or yes. two, three weeks later. Yes. It was, he was already married, but now it's officially official. Yes. Like, you go to the courthouse before your wedding day. Yeah, you're married. But then it's officially official. There you go. Arbora, Mitch, Raiders hypothetical. If they trade with the Bears for the number one overall pick, would you take Daniels or Caleb? The Raiders would take Jaden Daniels. That I'm telling you right now, they would take Jaden Daniels. Uh, this might be an unpopular opinion. I think Drake May is the best quarterback in the draft. I don't know if he would fit the best for what the Raiders were going to try to do. The safest pick is probably, like, to me, the safest pick actually is Drake May, which I, I, I might be on the odd man out in that. Uh, 
the highest upside to me is Caleb Williams. But to me, you hired Antonio Pierce to trust AP, and if AP's up to number one, he's going to be the person that they end up taking. This is actually another really big move. The commanders, Bobby Wagner. Wow. Bobby Wagner signing a one-year deal. Sperry, go live! Six million in guarantees. He can make up to 8.5 million. So one year eight? One year can make up to eight and a half. I would have done that. It's a good deal. If you're the Raiders, would you have done that deal? I would have. Yeah, yeah. He's still at a playing year, at a very one, high level. One year for eight? What do we see? You're giving Dan Quinn Bobby Wagner. Old buddy. Old buddy Bobby Wagner. Hot take. Do the Commanders win the NFC East this year? I mean, I'll say this. The Commanders low-key are making some good moves. Quinn is definitely getting his guys, though. Oh, he's, yeah. He's stolen some Cowboy players. He got Tyler Biotis. He got Dorrance Armstrong. He uh, got his old guy in Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wags. Yep. Be wags. Be wags. I also I'm gonna have a I'm gonna throw out a special deal when we get to thirty minutes. When we get to thirty minutes, I'm gonna throw out a special deal. Ah. I'm a little bit I'm a little bit curious to see what you think about it, but I'm gonna go with it. Let's go to Dr. K. I know we are shaky at QB, but I'm still having this feeling I haven't had in years. Hope. Let's go, Raiders. I, I think that's the Antonio Pierce effect of like you have somebody who Antonio Pierce could be a motivational speaker, like the way he oh, yeah. controls the room, the way he talks to a group of grown men. He really instills some confidence. He instills that even though, like... Guys want to play for him. Even though the Raiders were not a better team than the Chiefs last year on Christmas Day, yep. the way he had those guys pumped up, I think every one of those guys would have literally, like, I'm not, and not even figure of speech, would have literally ran through a brick wall that day for Antonio Pierce. I, I really do. So whenever you have a guy like that at the helm, it brings a lot of confidence, not only to the players, but whenever you see how confident the players are, it brings a lot of confidence into the fan base. Listen to this tweet here by Josina Anderson. Oh, no. Okay? According to Josina Anderson, Patriots will mainly turn their attention to the draft to address wide receiver. I am told they have moved on. Uh, they've moved on. Remember, comma, splashes come in the win-loss column. I'm trying to figure out what this means. However, though, if if this is true, right? If if let's just put what Josina's saying here is wide receiver will mainly turn their attention to the draft to address this position. I think it's a basis off Calvin Ridley, right? They did not get Calvin Ridley. Which, if you're a Raider fan out there, that's one thing that you got to be thinking here. Like, if there's a team that I would love to not take a QB would be the Patriots at number three. They don't get Calvin Ridley. So that tells me that they've obviously been looking for a legit number one receiver. If it's true that the Patriots are going to put their attention at the wide receiver position per Josina Anderson, Marvin Harrison Jr. at number three. Lock it in. Speculation. Marvin Harrison Jr. at number three, almost confirmed. Not official, though. <laughs> We're going to talk about it now on draft day is when it will be. A, a, well, it, we'll make a video. It's officially it actually won't official. be official on draft day. That'll be whenever they make the pick. True. Then once they sign him to a contract, then and only then it'll be official. I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting tweet from Josina. I'll, I don't know what it means necessarily. but She said, I'm currently drinking a macchiato with Gerard Mayo as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Bobby Wagner back in, uh, back with, back with Dan Quinn. Kind of nuts. Ronnie Smith, Peyton Wilson reminds me of Tanner Muse. He shouldn't. Shouldn't remind you anything of him. Uh, if that's the case, run. I mean, here's the thing. Tanner Muse was a safety that they tried to convert to a linebacker. Roly, Patriots going after Marvin Harrison. Patriots are going after Marvin Harrison jo Jr. Josie said Patriots going wide receiver in the draft. You don't know that. No, 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 no. She meant first. She meant first. If you read it, she actually says Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, it's like you look at the first letter of each <laughs> word and it spells out Marvin Harrison. <laughs> that would be funny. As hell. I don't know how that sentence would even look. Think of a sentence that begins with an M followed by an H. Followed by a J. No, it would be like M-A-R-V-I-N. Oh, I see what you're saying now. I see what you're saying. 
Many are really invested. <laughs> that, that'd be kind of funny. Um, all right, so Ronnie, the other thing is this. Peyton Wilson's a linebacker that's more athletic than Tanner Muse when he was a safety. Like, they're, they're not even close to the same prospect in my, in my book. I've been wrong before. John, Mitch, you need to call your contacts and find out if the Raiders are going to do any signings. You guys rock. For seven hours. Seven hours you've been rocking today. I, uh, here's the thing. I have put out multiple text messages, uh, and I have not heard back from anyone. So I, when I get stuff, I let you guys know. When I don't, I let you guys know. So I have not gotten anything from anyone today. My phone has been crickets. It's, it's been crickets. All right, Jeremy. One more super chat coming in here, which I think is from we Darian. Have, we have a couple more. We have a few more. I say, I, I'm going to say my deal, though. Big trade coming. Mitch and Chugs are killing it. I would, I, I would see a big trade. I think he's talking about draft. Oh. I mean, that would be... I mean, if it came out right now, the Raiders are trading up for a top three pick. Dude, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. We'd be we'd be here a lot longer than twenty nine minutes. I know that. <laughs> that would be that would be legendary. I I do have to leave by six, so it would have to end by then. I mean, I <laughs> I feel like it'd just be one of those things. We're just hanging out here, chilling, dude. All these hats now with the upside down city name. Too many people are doing it now. I I'm, like I I told you I'm not a Dallas fan, but I feel like that's kind of lame. I mean, am I the only one that thinks just the name upside down is lame? I thought the Dallas one was cool because it was like you hadn't seen it before. Now, now that it's there, I just I think it's weird. Let's just take this name and put it upside down. Unless there's like a meaning behind it. I don't know. Unless there's a meaning behind it. But shout out to the Nooch. All right, here's my deal, Jeremy. <sighs> let me uh let me let me loosen up here a little bit. Every hundo. Every single hundo that we get extends the show by 10 minutes. We get a hundo, you put an extra 10 minutes on the clock, and I do a beer bong. Okay. Every hundo that we get extends the show by 10, and... They're saying that we do a beer bong. hondo is alluding to a big trade coming. That's what they said. Again, I think, look at it as an opinion. I'm not saying... I know hondo is connected to certain people... I know Graf is connected to certain people. I know Tashawn, Vincent, all these guys all have, you listen know, we, we all talk to people. Listen but to this. You hear that? That sounds like a pink sock. <laughs> <laughs> the real ones might know. I don't know. Okay, I mean, if, if Hondo's alluding to a big trade, cool. Like I said, I, I would say anything that Hondo says, he probably hears things, but just take it as an opinion. Don't take it as, like, he's reporting anything. Once it gets but reported, I, but I mean, also, it could be like, it could be kind of like the stuff that you heard last week from Jacob's agent. You know, like, sure. oh, we're not expecting a four-year deal. It's a four-year deal. From the time he talked to you to the time that that happened, yeah. obviously something changed. So from what he's hearing now to what actually happens could be vastly different. Sure, I mean that's things change in the NFL. Like, I mean, that's your, that's your, you love that move. What? Quick. It's like a you're like a first base coach. I, I'm not gonna. That's where it's from. Yeah, I, I mean that. That's what I assumed. Sack bunt. That's that was the sign. Sack bunt. <laughs> Get it out there. Um, if if a big deal were to happen though, like a trade, I will tell you this though. Also, like alluding to a big trade. The biggest trade I think the Raiders could do right now. Would be, yeah, we got this guy's got to go. We've tried, he's got to go. Just block him on the channel at this point. Okay. Um, All right. I would say Justin Fields is probably what he's alluding to. And the only reason why that I say that is because, based off of, I'll just call it ah. messages that I've seen from other people, I think that's kind of what Hondo has been alluding to is a Justin Fields trade, if I had to put my money on it. I'll also say. Like, I don't think the Raiders are trading up. Like, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Can, can you do it? My, my computer's yeah, I got acting you. a little funky. I got gotcha. you. Hang on a second. Honestly, my YouTube has been super glitchy. Okay. I don't know if it was just me, but it was like 
glitching no, up and my, down. My YouTube has been super, super glitchy today. I mean, another trade. I mean, I, you, you might decide to move on from one of your old players. I mean, like I said, I've done a, I've done a video on some trade targets that the Raiders could have. Another name I'll just continue to throw out there is James Bradbury. I don't know. I, I do have to say, for those who were watching earlier, it has been impressive. The tweet that you gave, uh, that you put out for me, I have not seen anything more universally disliked by both sides in a while. <laughs> yeah. Cowboys fans are like, you're smoking crack. That's crazy. I've seen Dak is nowhere near the quarterback as Derek Carr. I mean, that's insane. But, <laughs> I mean, let me see this. What do we got here? Dude, even like, dude, I just feel like my phone is just glitching. I want to see, how many comments do you have on this? It's a good little bit. Yeah, that's that's pretty good interaction here. <laughs> this see what is, Tom said? No. Did he quote tweet you? No, he just commented. Oh. Come on, man. It's been a long few days. <laughs> Poor Tom. Did you see what I replied? So <laughs> you're saying there's a chance. Nathan. I mean, imagine Tom. He's been live for three days, and all they have done is re-sign imagine Ken Seag. Imagine if we had been live all three days and the Raiders had not made – how mad would you be if they had not made a single move? If they were the only team in the NFL to not make a move, it would not be good. I'd be like, did we bring back McDaniels and Ziegler? <laughs> um, playing with the jelly beans with my family. Just did liver and onions. My two-year-old eating like none phasing him. That is – that's, I mean, I guess if you're a wolf. <laughs> Wolves do like liver and onions. That's what I mean. Chuck, Chuck's got treats that are liver. Liver treats. He does. It's, it's a cold, hard fact. All right, Jeremy, since we got about 24 minutes left here, uh, Ravens re-signing Brent Urban. I, uh, I got one person in right now for a duck race, Okay. The next person that sends in a $20 Venmo, I'm going to give you two entries into our duck race. Okay. So right now, the person that is in is Brian Avilia. Thug the door. What's up, my guy? Brian, you're the, I don't want to call you the leftover from our last race, but Brian is in for our race. So the next person that sends in a $20 Venmo, I'm going to give you an extra spot here in this race. So if you want a chance to get in... 50-50 raffle, $20 Venmo at Mitchell Renz 365. We're going to do this race here in about 15 to 20 minutes or so if you want a chance to get in. 15 or 20 minutes from now. Also, we're about 150 likes away from a good Dude, wheel spin. I, I want Tad to quote tweet this so bad. Actually, we, uh, did we wheel spin when we hit 2,000 likes? I don't think so. I actually don't think that we did. I don't think that we did. I, if Tad, I don't, I don't want to get into it with Tad. He just seems so soft, man. I don't know. There are certain people who I would honestly get into an interaction with. There's other people that I would not. Spin it again. Chocolates are out there. I'm not going to get them. Spin it again. Spin it again. It just lands on chocolates again. If it lands on chocolates again, I think that's just a sign that I need to go. Oh, no. I mean, I'm in trouble either way. You had the spicy one last time, too. Spicy one last time. <sighs> Jelly bean for Mitch. Spin it again. All right. I'm going to do something that I know I'm going to regret. You ready? Give me 60 seconds on the clock. Uh, starting in five, four, three, two, one. Jelly bean clock. Every 20 that we get in the next 60 seconds, I'll eat a gross jelly bean. Jelly bean clock. The question is, do I eat them all at once? I can't do that. Yes. Oh, I don't think I can do that. Yes. You have to swallow. I don't think I can eat them all at once, though. Bro, I don't think I'll actually be able to do that. I think you will. I think I'd have to do it one at a time. $20 is a nasty jelly bean. Or do we mix them in? Imagine a Carolina Reaper in vomit. I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm actually nervous about this. All right, so the flavors that we got. How many left do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I got 13 left. Honestly, I'm going to get out scot-free here. This is clutch. 
This is clutch. Speaking of Scott, and Shane Gamble. What up, Shane? All right, we got what are free agent top DBs left? I would say, well, if you're talking all DBs, I guess that also includes the safeties as well. Let's go with, I mean, I'm just going to keep throwing out names like, all right, let me actually pull up a list because there's names that I want personally for the Raiders that some people might not say are the, the top guys left. I'll say if we're looking at all the DBs here, Kendall Fuller, Cameron Curl, Stephon Gilmore, Steven Nelson, Julian Blackman, I believe, hasn't been signed yet. Jordan Fuller, Adoree Jackson, Deshaun Elliott, Deshaun Gibson. Some people have Mike Edwards up there. So those are just some names to at least keep in mind. I also think Xavier Howard needs to be on that list. All right, Jeremy, I got off, so we're going to do one. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some in my hand here. Yeah, let's do this one. I already have that one. I can have this one. Okay. So I'm just going to show you the flavors. I'm going to reorganize them. Is that a fair is that a fair list? Fair group? Yep. It's a fair group. Okay. Somebody right. said they would much rather have Minshew than Dak. Minshew than Dak? Okay. I have ordered these jelly beans, Jeremy. Okay, it's one, two, three, four, five. Pick a number. What would you guys pick? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. There's there's one on here that I know. There's two, three on here that I know I don't want. There's one on here that I don't know what it is. If I'm being honest. Roman Sanchez, keep one. it up, fellas. I got to hear a Raiders. The first one I saw is one. All right, so the flavors that I have here are, I'm pretty sure there's a rotten egg, which that would not be good at all. Um, I also see, oh, the other one's earwax. That's devastating. And then blueberry, I want to say vomit. Vomit, and then soap. I got soap. I'm telling you right now, it's not as bad as the dishwater. However, this literally tastes like the way soap smells. Mm. Steve-O, Raiders! Thoughts on giving either Mike Thomas or Mike Williams an incentive-filled contract on a one-year flyer? They said, how much, for, how much for you to eat all four of the jelly beans in your hand right now? Well, you just missed that deal. Dude, all four right now. If, if somebody sent in 100, would you eat all four? Oh, dude. I don't know if I'd want to. They're so gross, man. All four. Uh, quick, Mike Thomas, Mike Williams, thoughts on a one-year flyer deal. I think, I don't, I don't know if. He was drafted by Telesco. But the other problem is lots and lots of injury concerns, right? Would you rather give $15 million to Mike, Mike Williams or would you rather give $15 million to Kendall Fuller? Because to me, Williams is going to get. What about, what about Mike Thomas? Slank God. No. Stay away from Michael Thomas. I, he's 31 years old. He's not been good for probably about five years now. I, I mean, if there's a, the team that I think he goes to, though, I think he's a Bronco. Mike Thomas? If I'm Sean Michael Payton? Thomas, I take a potential cheap deal to go back with Sean Payton. And he's, Sean Payton might be the only guy willing to take a chance on him because of all the injuries and all the other... We'll call it shenanigans that he's done. He's shenanigans again. Raymond wants to know, is Derrick Henry available? No. Signed a two-year, $16 million deal with... The, the Ravens. The Ravens. The right. Ravens. I see a few people are in this duck race here, so let me, uh, let me get some names in here for this duck race. 
Let me get some names in here for the duck race here. We got... Rolly. Oh, Rolly dropped something. Yes, he did. Uh, Cameron Abbott was the first person. So, Cameron, you're going to get two names in here. Ryan Campbell. Ryan, I'm going to put you in twice. Though, Campbell sent in a 50. So, what? Right. Two and a wheel spin? That sounds good. Two and a wheel spin for Campbell. Today's MVP. I might be rocking the jersey again tomorrow here, Campbell. Remember, whoever the MVP is, I'll rock your jersey on the show. If you don't have a jersey and you become MVP, I'll order you one. That's a disaster. And now's a good time to end the live stream. <laughs> Give me the phone. Right, hang on a second. Rob Fravor, you in? I got Martin, Eli in. Kellen Milken, you in? Eric Mitchell, in. Philip Bogert, you in. Amy, in. Adrian Rodriguez, in. Jason EB, Jason EB. So $20 Venmo right now for a chance to win $150 here on the Raiders Report. Hang on, i got to confirm some friend requests here. Mm. I'm also going to tweet out, I'm not feeling well. I should, I should tweet out, my phone's been hacked. <laughs> <laughs> my phone has been hacked. Ah. Son of a gun, man. There's a part of me that just wants to do, like, tomorrow, every, like, 50 is a mean tweet. Or every 50 is a tweet. Somebody sends in a 50, we let them pick it. Would you guys do it? If we set tomorrow's deal at $50 Super Chat, you get to pick Jeremy and I's tweet. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do one that's like, the Raiders are trading for Justin Fields if it's not true. It's got to be something that's like, no harm, no foul. Jeremy putting out like that I love Gardner Minshew, where everybody that's watched this show for the last week's like, yeah, um, don't do that. Nico says he likes it. Mm. It's on. Oh, you don't want me to pick tweets. <laughs> That's, you know what? You're probably not wrong, Zon. You're probably not wrong. Mm. What do I, do I quote tweet somebody else? What do I, no, nah, don't quote tweet. Because then I don't want somebody to think that I'm talking bad about them. Uh, okay. I'd say just send out a tweet. What about? Uh, I, I, I want to. Oh, you're going you're gonna to come up with it? Fair enough. All right, how about this then? Just put the, just put the Super Chats up then, not the Venmo, because I can't keep checking. Ah. Uh, all right, here we go. We actually have another Super Chat. We do have another one rolling in here. From, from Steve-O. It says, with Wilkins' versatility, should we look at adding a three-tech or a nose guard? I think this one actually has nothing to do with Wilkins and has everything to do with Tyree Wilson. I think if you're the Raiders, I would consider bringing back John Jenkins. I mean, he was really solid for the Raiders last season, would be a cheap contract, one-year prove-it vet, probably give him like $3 million, see what he can do. Um, it really comes down, though, how much you believe in Tyree Wilson. How much do you believe in Tyree Wilson and how much... Do you believe in your other tackles, right? How much do you believe in a Byron Young, a Matthew Butler, a Marquan McCall, a Nesta Jade Silvera? Do you believe in those players? Because right now the market for defensive tackles is pretty high. Yep. Dude, Calvin Ridley just tweeted chess, not checkers. So he was doing some of the shady shit. Calvin Ridley, chess, not checkers. He literally just tweeted that out. I, I think that's something that he shouldn't tweet out. Because, I mean, that almost makes me wonder if he was, I guess, I don't know. I think teams might be a little bit afraid to um, mess with him in the future. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. All right, for the record, I'm not. Dude. 
So the tweet says, if the Raiders don't win a Super Bowl in the next 10 years, I'm getting a face tat. What else? Hashtag real talk. Hashtag belief. I feel like you got to add a picture of like somebody with a face tat. Like Takashi. No, not Takashi 6'9". Who's got like a like Mike Tyson? Put like a picture of Mike Tyson up there. This is nuts. This is nuts. Somebody's Nico said that's not that bad. That's pretty bad. I do think the most no, like most famous face tat has got to be Mike Tyson, right? Oh yeah. Okay. It's got to be the most famous of all time. Girl dad says, lower the number of years. 10 is extensive. <laughs> a Super Bowl? I mean, you could just say, if the Raiders don't win a Super Bowl this year, I'm getting a face tat. All right, Jeremy put it down to five years. All right, this is just... I'm going to get a message from Alex. All right, it's out. Ah! Oh, no. <laughs> this is not oh. going to go over well. This is, uh, what's funny is if the Raiders don't win a Super Bowl in five years, five years from now, we're going to be sitting here and somebody's going to send this tweet to us and be like, I wonder if we'll remember. Yeah, I don't know if we'll remember. I will say, though, that would be one of those really cool things where it's like five years later, you're like, oh, shit, we did do that. Like, that would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. It's already been bookmarked. <laughs> By who? I don't know. Uh-oh. Yeah, there's a few bookmarks on that one. Um, Miller Marley, what number one RB can we get for the 2024 season? One love, Rasta. Um, I would say <laughs> it's Zeus. Zeus is rolling in as your RB1, and you're going to get somebody in the draft more than likely to see if they pan out yeah. and maybe have a running back by committee. But I mean, you're definitely going to have a committee. There's no like slam dunk RB1 that you can do right now. What, what's up? Uh, who, who said that? Who said what? <laughs> That's funny. Oh, the face tat? I mean, I that can't. That was him. He just honestly, that out. I'm excited to be on. I'm Mitchell Renz. Welcome to the Raiders Blitz here with just a Mike Tyson face <laughs> tattoo. I'm sure Amazon won't mind. Uh, biggest, yeah, big, mind. biggest need for the, for the Raiders right now is safety. <laughs> Ooh, I hope. James said we're getting a sweep, so I'm really pumped to watch. Wow, I didn't know that. I'm in. It, where's the fight at? He said it in chit chat, so it's official. Where is it? Oh, really? Yeah. It's in Dallas. Oh. <laughs> uh, he did say it in chit chat. He deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be there. Ryan Campbell. To today's MVP, Mr. Campbell. Hey, Mitch, do me a solid with someone else's jersey. I want someone else to have a chance to bang. Just choose whoever is in the second. Uh, Dolphins are expected to sign Neville Gallimore. It's a pretty good oh, move there. Cowboys legend. So you're saying tomorrow I'll wear somebody else's jersey? I'll wear somebody else's jersey tomorrow then. Shout out Ryan Campbell for being a legend. I um, respect it. I, I respect it. There was somebody else who banged a couple times earlier. Uh, I would say right now. I, I specifically remember them banging multiple times. So we got Lord Cameron Abbott. Yes. Which I don't have his jersey yet. So the problem is the reason why I got a backload on a bunch of jerseys. I think even OC Raider banged. I could wear OCs tomorrow. Um, I think the problem is I put in an order for all the jerseys. They don't have any more black jerseys available. So I have to. I'm getting like a slew of white jerseys. This, this is hilarious. Adrian, Mitch, Josina Anderson just reported the Patriots are now. Out on drafting a quarterback at number three, and we'll take a receiver. <laughs> Have you heard anything? So she didn't necessarily say that. Um, and I think she worded her tweet perfectly into where you could definitely read it as that. Correct. But what she said is they will be taking a receiver in the draft, which yeah. was kind of a duh. I think it was they missed on Calvin Ridley. 
and now they're going to be looking at receiver heavily in the draft, which literally what you said here, Adrian, is exactly what we jokingly said to our Patriots guy here. We were like, they're not taking a quarterback. They're going to take Marvin hey, Harrison Patriots Jr. Patriots are taking Marvin Harrison at three. It's a lock. <laughs> he, he didn't like it. He doesn't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. And I don't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Ruben, do you think the Raiders still trade up for a quarterback? And then this, and is his name JJ McCarthy? Uh, Jamari, you were in the race. Just so you know, you were in that one. I see Finesse Lounge is going to be in here for our next duck race. The Finesse Lounge. All right, y'all. We got five minutes left. It's the final time I'll say the deal. Every hundo that we get from here on out, I'll do a beer bong, and we extend the show by 10 minutes. Um, by 10 minutes. So do you, do you believe the Raiders still trade up for a quarterback? I'm going to still hold out hope. I'm, I'm, right? I mean, we've been live today for seven hours in hope that the Raiders sign someone. At this point, I am just going to continuously hold out hope that the Raiders can figure out a way that they can just figure out a way to get the quarterback that they want. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but I hope. I hope. I don't know what this is. Oh, yeah, I don't know what that is. Finesse Lounge is in. Jamari, yeah, Jamari, you were in. Jamari with the new pick also. I appreciate it. Got, See, got, hashtag got the pick. He's got some swag. Got a little bit of swag there for the for Mr. Murray. Quick question for you folks at, at home. Are you going to any Raiders games next season? Ooh, boy. I mean, we the answer for us is no. We will be live for every Raiders game next season. That I can guarantee you. We'll be live for every single time. Every time. Can you read Mo's comment? Mo? The bang is way better than the boom. <laughs> well, the reason why they do that, though, that's what the Bears do, which I actually didn't know. Like, the Bears do something with boom. It's like their stadium. Like, they scream it. They do. I'm serious. Ask Petey. He would know. Petey, do the Bears yell boom at their stadium? <laughs> he just said no. <laughs> I know. I made it up. I made it up. It sounded good at the time. It sounded good at the I time. I couldn't imagine. First down, Bears. Everybody. Boom. Boom. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, I'm going to refresh my phone. Final call to get in for the duck race. I am going to send this list over here to Monsieur uh, Jeremy Chugs. Mm. To the Monsieur. And we have right now 16 people, which means winner gets. One hundred and sixty dollars mm -hmm. here on mm -hmm. the Raiders mm -hmm. report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here on mm -hmm. the Raiders report. Oh man, Texans Joe Mixon. What do you over under thousand yards total? Is it yards. Official. It's officially official. Okay. More or less. More or less a thousand yards for Mixon this year. More. More or less 1,200 yards for Mixon. Less. Okay. I think they're going to air it out still. Fair enough. I mean, you need a good I would check say he's, down. I, th I think he's, uh, I mean, obviously, he's in between that range. Aaron, you in. Now, I could see him getting 10 touchdowns. David Zahn, you in. Ryan Bass, you in. $20 Venmo at Mitchell Renz 365. Last chance to get in. It's your last chance to get in. So now we're up to a winner gets what, 190? Well, now that there's a minute and a half left, I'm going to take this down. It'll just be yeah, the fine. end of this race will be the end of the show. Sounds good. All right, so how many we got in? We need three more names. I sent you three more. Aaron, oh. Aaron Winnick, David Zahn, Ryan Bass. Those are the names I need. Aaron, Zaun, and Mr. Bayas. Cool. All right. Wait a minute. Jose Delgado. 
Now we're at an even 20. All right, no more. No more. No more. Uh, well, I got to let Scheffler in. All right, Chef, Chef gets in. Chef gets in. Chef gets in. 21. Can you do something for me? Winner gets $210. You ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? You ready? Let's run it. Here we go. Winner gets 200 and 10 doll hairs. That's a lot of doll hairs. We got Martin Eli out by a nose. Then Jose Delgado, the late entry, just snuck that one in. Followed by Ryan Campbell. Followed by Ryan Campbell. Coming down the north end, Pretty Princess. Then comes Cinnamon Toast. And oh my goodness, they're coming. Uh, Cameron Abbott down there in the back. <laughs> Watch out for Scheffler in a really good spot there. Oh, Jamari Murray starting to fall back. Here Brian comes Avilia. Lucky Day. Lucky Day on the outside. Ryan Campbell up the middle. And now Avilia takes the lead. Winner gets $210 here on uh, the Raiders Report. Of course, just got shot. I'm actually concerned about Jamari. I think Jamari's about to hit the NOS, though. Philip Bogert with the lead. Eight seconds to go. Is it going to be Chef? Coming down to it. I mean, this has always been Brian Avilia's race, and he's going to come away with a big-time dub. I actually think Zahn, Zahn, if you're coming in last, you're not going to get a butthole pick, but you will get Arch Madness. I'll send you some arches, Zahn. Wait. Oh. Oh, it's so close. Zahn really wanted a foot pick. I know he did. I know he did. He was telling me all day how he wanted it. He's like, if I all I want for Christmas next year is a good foot pick. That's all I need. That's all I need. All right. We got... Wait, can you go back to that list for me? All right, no, I got... I thought I missed the name. I got that name. Brian... Also, Brian was the first person to get in, so shout out to Brian. Congrats, good sir. Now, every time I see the Limu Emu commercials, all I can think of is that Shane Gillis skit. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen it yet. I, I probably did. I don't Dude, know. you got to look up Shane Gillis. Saturday Night Live. Limu Emu. All right, I'll have to. Jameson Crowder going back to the Commanders. Brian Avilia, can you please confirm down below that you just received two hundred and ten dollars? Because that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. All right, y'all. It is, as Steven said, the last call for alcohol. So finish your whiskey or beer. Uh, I'll be real. I thought today was going to be a lot more of an entertaining day in the NFL in general. Might have been a little bit slow. Obviously, if any moves happen from the moment from now until we leave. We will come back here and do our best to keep you guys up to date. The only move that the Raiders made today was they signed Harrison Bryant, tight end previously with the Cleveland Browns, to a one-year $3.2 million deal. He can make up to $4 million. I think that's a good move, honestly, for the Raiders. Not a sexy move, but a good move, finding a good blocking tight end. And uh, I will see all of you all tomorrow. We'll probably go live tomorrow at around a, probably noon Eastern time is probably the safe bet. If anything else does end up going down, big time breaking news. Chugs and I will be back here in the studio. If it's just like the Raiders re-sign Greg Van Roten, then that would just be a video that I would make at home. If they tr do a massive trade like some people are alluding to, then yes, we will be back. But I do appreciate, again, I think Ryan Campbell and Cameron Abbott, probably the top two MVPs today. So uh, I don't know which jersey I'm probably going to wear. I might wear OC Raiders since he at least banged on today's show. But I uh, had a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of wheel spins. We'll come out with some good deals. I also remember that I said I'd have some Mezcal. However, I was kind of rushing out of the house today because of all the Hunter Renfro news, so I'll do a better job of remembering that. But uh, we'll, we'll have some good deals going on tomorrow, maybe some. I want to do the tweets thing. I'd, I'd like to be able to figure out a way how we can do the tweets thing. I think that would be pretty fun. So, Okay, sounds good. From me... From Jeremy Chuggs, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you guys tomorrow somewhere around noon Eastern time here on the Raiders Port. Hopefully, Antonio Pierce and Tom Telesco make some stuff happen because this show is a lot more fun when they do. Enjoy the rest of your night. I'll see you guys. Wait a minute. Harrison Smith? 
restructured his contract with the Vikings. Sorry, I just saw a big name. I was like, oh, man, that would be electric. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow here on the Raiders Report.